Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, August 7th, 2023. This sports program starts right now. Football! It's kind of happening, isn't it? Uh, little bit, little we got bit. training camps all around the NFL that are open for business. We got hard knocks coming tomorrow night. Yes. We got mic'd up segments happening all around the country that are electrifying and allowing us to remind ourselves that we are just 31 days away from oh. NFL football. Come on. Now, 31 days is one month. Now, it's one of those months that's up here. Uh -huh. Whenever you're talking 28 days, what? 31 days, what? 29 days, what? 30 days, what? or whatever. 31 is a long month. The longest month we have. Unless there's like uh, one of those leap years. I assume yeah. that there's right. a... Yeah, I, I think, think 31. Up, 31 is the most? 30, 31 yeah. is oh, yeah. max, depending on how you count the days. Leap year 29 instead of 28, so yep. they add on to the smallest is what I was just told in my ear. Anyways, longest month we know since what? The Mayans? Is yeah, that what yeah, yep, yep. probably. Since it, away from football happening, the Detroit Lions, Jared Goff looks un- Believable right now. Look yeah. He's throwing out some Monroe St. Brown and Jamo Williams right in a dot, a spot that nobody else can touch. Here's one clip ah, yeah. ah, to a Monroe St. Brown. Oh, is this the same clip? It's not. Different wide receiver, what? Same outcome. Oh. Bang. They need to just run that play 15 times yep. every single drive. Nobody's stopping that particular Hell throw. Hell yeah. Unless you got somebody out there and then they're taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs mm. are the Kansas City Chiefs. They got El Travador right now with his mustache right. being mm. the greatest tight end in history. History, Patrick Mahomes, fresh off a star-making quarterback series that just launched about a month ago. We are in for greatness 31 days from now. Until then, we'll talk about all the shit happening off the field. We'll talk about all the shit happening around sports world. This was a massive weekend. Yeah, yeah. huge. Massive weekend. Just post 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday, like a thousand things happened yep. before you're able to wake up on Sunday. We'll cover it all today. Now, we have Pete Thamel, the authority on college football, joining us in about 15 minutes. That is the news of the day. What's happening in college football with the new conference realignment with teams saying, hey, to the Pac-12 and going to the Big Ten, into the Big 12. The Big Ten now has 18 teams in it, mm -hmm. at least. That is where they're at right now. Damn. The Big 12 has 16 teams in it, or 17 teams in it. 16. 16 teams in it. Teams are moving now. We got new conferences. We still have some rivalries. We yep. still have a lot of rivalries. There's a couple that have been kind of mismanaged and moved, but right now college football is in a transition era that I don't think we've ever seen before. Mm. We obviously have the expanded playoff coming in a couple years as well, which is certainly looming over the head of all of these chancellors and presidents that are trying to make the decision on where their schools should go, but most of it all comes down to the TV money. That's right. right. Oh, yes. Yep. Where's the money at? Now we're blaming faulting college football athletes, at least, and I'm assuming college basketball players are getting the same thing, for going into the transfer portal and chasing the dollar. Mm -hmm. Hey, where's the NIL money at the best? Well, boom. I played great here. If I go into the portal, somebody might have even more money for me to go somewhere else. You know, it's real capitalism taking place in the middle of college football, and the players had a lot of shit talked about them. A lot of them. Oh, whenever times are tough, you just go into the transfer portal. Mm. You're not going to be able to build up any mental toughness, any grit. Not going to have any mm. perspective of what life is actually like. When you're not necessarily the star, you have to work a little bit. You don't just transfer out of there, go somewhere else, take another payday. You're going to need these lessons whenever you go. But now what are the colleges doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. same thing. Time gets tough. The Pac-12, George Klyakov. Yeah. Klyakov. Mm -hmm. I yeah. met the guy, had dinner with him. Good guy. Seemingly good guy. Terrible negotiator, though. Pac-12's <laughs> yeah. commissioner is really the one that all uh -huh. fingers are being pointed at at this exact moment. Because although he was promising a new television deal to all the Pac-12 members, it wasn't until he met with Apple here in like the last week or so that all the teams and schools found out it's like $22 million a, t a school and also Roche Share. 
Yeah. Uh, not too yeah. bad. Get people to download, yeah, just like right. Methy's doing, yeah, like just like huh. podcasters do. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, here's a link. Have them, have them subscribe, buy in, and then you'll uh -huh. get a piece of it. And all the schools in the back are like, motherfucker, that's not a good deal. No. Everywhere else is getting like 40, 50 million guaranteed. Yep. No signups included. They're lucky they're getting live football yep. on their particular platform. And the Pac-12 is like, well, 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 you're able to get, you're able to get however much money you want. He's a uh, flood, flood timeline with downloads, send yeah. emails, yeah. Yeah. get these links out here, do your whole thing. Working. And all the Pac-12 schools that are worth a fuck were like, Bye -bye. see ya. Yeah. And now the Big Ten's right. reaping a benefit, Big 12's reaping a benefit. What is the ACC going to do? The right. ACC's in one of the worst deals of all time. Yeah. We're talking about a terrible, terrible, terrible deal that is taking place. So the Big Ten has deals with NBC and CBS. Yep. Okay. Damn. So the amount of money they're getting per year right there, boom, huge. That is massive. Congrats to them all the way until the year's 2030. Yeah. Big Ten navigated the TV rights Jeez. deal Did in beautiful fashion. Now, did NBC get what they thought they were getting? Mm -mm. I don't know if they're ever going to say that. The SEC, 811. That's through ESPN. Yeah. Okay. And the SEC network. Deal. Big 12 with Fox, 380 million per year. ACC, 240 million per year through 2036. Long time. Jeez. Seven schools in the ACC have allegedly got their lawyers to look into the deal to see if they can get the fuck out yep. of this particular deal. Ooh. As they're seeing a billion dollars here, 800 here, <laughs> and these deals are ending before this deal ends. Yeah. They locked in a long-term deal. They're like, we're going to be able to get $240 yeah. million dollars for the next 15 years. We oh, take yeah. this deal? Sign me up. $240 million? That's a lot of, that's a lot of money. You guys are going to sneeze at $240 million? And then here we are in 2023, and the Big Ten's like, you should start sneezing. Yeah. The SEC's like, ha ha, bless you. The Big 12, same thing. The ACC, allegedly in a little turmoil. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to the authority, Pete Thamel, in about 12 minutes on all of this, and Pac-12 being dead, dead uh, for the foreseeable future, which is a shame. We don't like that. Yeah. Now, Grant, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I live in Indiana. Yeah. We're on the East Coast time zone. So I do appreciate Pac-12 late night. Oh, yeah. After oh, dark. Yeah. Really appreciate Pac-12 after dark. But now there's a chance that we're going to see some, maybe some Big Ten schools having the after dark games. Yeah, for sure. exactly. A little bit more prominent names probably going in there. A lot of travel for Big 12, Big Ten schools. But I believe, you know, this is just the beginning of yeah, this yeah. entire thing. We'll talk to Pete to see what that is. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor, at Boston Connor's Mullet, and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Dad. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here, fresh out of a Zach Brown band. Yeah, wow. baby. Good. Don't like that Zach came to Indiana on a Sunday. Don't yeah. love that. Yeah, I didn't love that either. Didn't love it, but you had to go represent had to. Had to the go show. We appreciate you and Mitt were there. Mitt was on 150 milligrams, he said. Okay. You were there having a good time yep. as a DD. I appreciate yep. that. How was the show? How was the program? You look good. It was awesome. You know, They put on a great show every single time. Well, there's, what, like 20 musicians in that band, and they, yep. they all are awesome. Uh, he played the hits, which I always respect uh, every single time. Every hit off of every album he played. Two-hour show was perfect. Is that why you're wearing that particular cap right there? You you feel like Zach <laughs> I did. Brown this morning? I did. I couldn't CD, have yeah. the Zach Brown sweatshirt on with a cowboy hat. It didn't feel right. He doesn't wear cowboy hats. No, he wears super cool hats yeah, like yeah. you do. It That's was cool of you to dress up like him today. Yeah, hey. Yeah, well, you know, I see this guy play last, last night. night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be him tomorrow. How yeah. feel like him. I said, Tony, anybody recognize you there last night? You know, I like to ask the boys whenever they're out and about, you know, how you feeling? Yeah. What's it like? A lot of people taking photos. And Tony said, a lot of people say I look like Zach Brown. I'm oh, like, whoa. Okay. Okay. Let's go, Tony. Yeah, Tony's pretty pumped look, about it. He's pretty jocked. Very jocked. One woman walked by me and said, Are you just obsessed with him or are you related to him? I said, well, Fucking easy. Okay. Related. That's better than, hey, it's better your people are saying you look like Zach than what people are saying you look like before. Yeah, a couple years yeah, ago. Very, exactly. very much so, yeah. You were very upset about who, something. Who was yeah. it before again? Uh, a local who, who, comedian here named Chris Bowers. Oh, that's yep. right. Yeah, Chris Bowers <laughs> yep. is. Uh, <laughs> Is who his yeah. tone was said to yeah. be spitting image, spitting True, image of. Yeah. And there was a time there where Bowers, everything he said to Tone was, you know, how many people say we look exactly like, and Tone was not happy about. No, it. why? He wasn't. I don't know. I, I don't know. Tone, every time this guy just said we look alike again. We don't. It's we, nice. You need to tell me I don't. Look yeah. I'm like you guys kind of. Kind of. I can see it. Yeah, you know, like got brothers, those beautiful cheeks. Yeah, I yep. get it. Great yep. look, good personality. Yeah, exactly. Good. Anyways, Bowers got a lot of time on this morning. We hope that Bowers is good. <laughs> sure. uh, but this college football shit's a real deal. We'll dive into it in about nine minutes. Let's talk about everything else that happened around the sports world this weekend. We'll try to do it as quickly as possible. Baseball is awesome. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Awesome. Hell yeah. Hey, listen, Tim Anderson wanted it. Mm, He's the one that threw the glove down first yep. and actually got into a full rock 'em, yeah. sock 'em. We are fist to cuffing yeah. right here at second base in the middle of this MLB game. And to Ramirez's credit, he's the one that kind of started. You know, he kind of pushed him, did a yep. little disrespect. But then Tim Anderson was like, Is it 
this is what we're doing then. Mm -hmm. We're not doing a little push and shovey. No. Mm -hmm. We're not doing a little disagreement here on whether or not I tagged you too hard and you didn't appreciate it. If you want to do that, we're going sticks, gloves, and then we're going sweaters. Yep. That was, hey, we're fighting. Ramirez. Man. I've seen some photos of him with some boxing gloves on his mm -hmm. hands and some other things like that. I have never seen a no-look slap punch. <laughs> okay? Inside a palm. Yeah. Inside a palm, slap punch. Hit a button more clean. Yeah. You know, whenever you're like a kid and you go to like a uh, a carnival or something, they have that dunk tank. Yep. Yep. And you know that I feel like the button's the same way as that dunk tank thing. Mm -hmm. Where if you hit it off the edge, it, it kind of goes, but not enough. Right. No. But if you hit that right in the middle, whoever <laughs> right in. Yeah. Right away. That that feels like it was just a gr a glancing blow yep. of a slap punch. Tim Harrison had to wobble off the fucking field. Big time. This dude got knocked the fuck. Out yeah. by a slap punch. And boy, I don't think anything better could have happened for all of baseball. Nope. Everybody on earth was talking about it, including the managers. Uh, old buddy's yeah, manager. Terry Franco. Terry Franco yeah. was like, I, I, you're not supposed to laugh, but I mean, that guy <laughs> yeah. is falling. No look. Hey, boys will be boys. Knocked the guy out. Yeah. Good for baseball. What is baseball's reaction to this entire thing? Incredible. Like, I mean, you know, every once in a while you'll get something sweet in baseball, like a, a pitcher will hit somebody and the guy will charge the mound. And so, every once in a while it's a pitcher who you don't fuck with and that guy will accept the invitation right away and kind of charge the batter like we've seen in years like Nolan Ryan used to he'd, he'd throw inside on guys or hit guys they'd charge at him and he'd fucking go and spear him and you know like yes. just go, yeah. go right after him there's been a couple guys like that but Sean Casey yeah Sean yeah, Casey Joe exactly Valley. I don't think he got in any fights he's Kyle Farnsworth yeah Farnsworth Sa same deal like the big pitchers who basically like would challenge guys and then wouldn't take shit from the bat rocket but ex yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Throw, throwing broken bats at you know Mike Piazza's head and stuff like that but I've never seen something like that before. Like, I, I've seen a couple years ago, uh, Jose Bautista who played for the Blue Jays. Him and Rugnet Odor, like, got into it. And, like, same deal. Like, actual swing, like, legit fight. Hit him on the button. But then they kind of split it up. Like, you see the umpire, like, gets out of the way and basically Love says, that. like, hey. It was I, like hockey. It was. Yeah. It, was a legit, right, it was a legitimate hockey fight. He's like, hey, I'm going to let you guys handle this. I don't want to get in the way of this. And at first, Tim Anderson's, like, throwing some – some good kind of glancing blows in there, but you never expect to see a guy get knocked on his ass like that. And especially after where he's stumbling around. I mean, it was like, it was like he was in the octagon. It was yep. like, I, I don't know. I didn't see after that. I don't know if he continued playing in the game. I don't know how no, he, he didn't play the next day either. He yeah. was out of the lineup the next day. I assume concussion protocol. Yeah, pr yeah. probably. Which is the thing, I guess, unless you're the Yankees and you make, you know, your players play with a concussion for a two. Oh, yeah, yeah, good players too, right? Yeah, yeah just let them strike. Well, that's on, I mean, that's neither here nor there. That's on Riz, okay? You don't feel good, you fucking say something, all right? You don't need to go up there and strike out four he's times every player. single day. Yeah, well, uh, guess, guess what? Guy. He's hurting the team big time when he's batting in Yeah, the well, sometimes the team needs to help the boys. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes you need to be able to say, eh! Take and, the home away. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I guess, but, you know. Hold that, him back. But that's neither here nor there. But I was surprised because <laughs> I figured a lot of people, like baseball peers, would be like, there's just no, there's no room in the game for this kind of stuff. Literally everyone I saw was like, this is fucking awesome. This is the sweetest thing I've Hell seen yeah. on a baseball diamond this and year. And we got the steroid Olympics coming. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sick. Which we've been talking about for baseball. We're not the only ones. We understand that. But we're just saying our particular stance is if we have gotten to a point where steroids are super healthy – and, you know, not any steroids, I guess, you're really. Well, you get it. A lot better than I think it was. I would assume it's advanced yeah, since what it was sure. at one point. But, like, baseball's finest. Ace Wayne Narrow is big, juiced up, meaty man. What? Yes. Taking wood and hitting baseballs into the other town. Yeah. Okay? That is when baseball was at its actual peak. Stats documented. Go look it up. No mm -hmm. question. So I understand the MLB has to look out for their guys, you know, and say, hey, you guys can't just be taking every single horse steroid right. that exists so that you can hit balls further, although we do appreciate it. I understand their stance. But this steroid Olympics they got coming around here, yeah. performance drug Olympics launch in 2020, need to have a home run derby in here. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Need to have a home run derby in this yeah. thing. Absolutely. I, and if it's like a recently retired player, mm -hmm. and he – Hey, listen, sure. for the last six months, I, I've been allowed to take this thing's the best. This is the best sporting event I've ever had. They've allowed me to take every steroid available. Mm -hmm. Now watch me hit this ball mm -hmm. 600 feet or whatever the case is. And let is. them use metal bats, too. Oh. Yep. Obviously, this is not a safe thing to do. Kids should not be doing any of this stuff. Right, no. Oh, that being said, 
So many pulled muscles happening at this thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's going to be muscles getting ripped off of bones yeah, in this a thing. Tears. But, boy, there should be some wait. electrifying stuff. The athletes stuff. are getting paid, too. And baseball with these guys fighting and everything, I think it's electrifying as well. Joining us now is a man who has all the information about the top story of the day in the sport that is football. Obviously, the NFL is going to have 6.3 million viewers on a Hall of Fame game. Yeah. Yep. Damn. Damn. They're going to have 6.3 million people, myself included, watching a game with a bunch of players playing a sport in a, on a team that they're probably not going to be on. That's right. But we'll do it because the highest watched Hall of Fame game since 2018 pre-COVID, 6.3 million viewers, good for them. But in college right now, there's a transition era mm -hmm. taking place that I don't think any college football purist is necessarily thrilled about, but it is certainly just the tip of the iceberg, I do believe. Joining us now is a man who wa worked for the Wall Street Journal, I do believe. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Wow. Now he's at ESPN, senior insider for college football and college game day electric factory, mm -hmm. the authority, Pete Thamel. Yeah. Quiet week, Pat. Quiet week. <laughs> yeah, dude, I sent you a text. What was that on Friday? I think I sent Pete a text like, hey, need you for like five minutes today. Got a text back at like 7 p.m. I was like, brother, sorry. It, is <laughs> yeah. been, it has been a pretty wild time here. Let's dive into this. So all of this movement out of the Pac-12 to the Big Ten and to the Big 12 is mm -hmm. all because the Apple deal was nowhere near what the Pac-12 schools thought it was going to be? Or can you take us back to why the Pac-12 now only sure. has four schools and what we should look for next? Yeah, well, in the, in the micro, Pat, the, uh, the most important trigger here was that the Pac-12 schools wanted to stay out west. Like, it was sensible. So a year ago, USC and UCLA leave. They basically can double their TV revenue every, every year. I think roughly $70 million, um, to uh, roughly $35 million. Uh, That's They could not say no to that. So those two go. You have, you have 10 schools left. And those 10 schools generally thought, okay, we can, we can function as a West Coast conference. We can, we can still, Oregon and Washington are the bell cows. And we will just continue to roll on here out west. But the problem was that the first real trigger that sent this down the, the, the spiral where we are now is that the, the Pac-12 has one year left on its television contract. The Big 12 had two, has two. The Big 12 commissioner, Brett Yormark, basically jumped in line and said, boom, I'm going to renegotiate early with ESPN and Fox and push out for seven more years. So all of a sudden, there was not a lot of money and then not a lot of television windows left for the Pac-12. So they had to go. They were scrambling for about a year to find a TV deal. And they found one with Apple, and it just wasn't enough. It wasn't good enough. The exposure was uncertain. The money was fluid. It was going to be somewhere in the 20s. But if you had this many subscribers, it would go up. That scares college presidents, remember, making these decisions, guys. So, like, college presidents are the, the most risk-averse they, they they can they they would just they would prefer the inertia students. over risk for, for the students yes. you mean right for the students yes. yeah for the good of the, yes presidents of universities care about the students first and foremost correct is what you're talking about here a little bit of that they they oh, really care first oh, and foremost you're talking about, about the money job oh yes. the money yes. is what you're talking about so it's a fascinating kind of situation because like in our world podcasting and digital media there's a lot of companies that you do a deal with where they'll say we'll give you 500 bucks but also you get four bucks for every sign up that you get through this link here it's called an affiliate deal rev share deal they try they try to sell it to like early podcasters that don't really have a brand as a chance to prove it and then our next deal will be something different so like our company I will not agree to those deals at this stage of where we are, just because like sure. we might introduce somebody to a company, but then they forget our promo code or they don't use our link. And then two weeks later they do it. It's like, well, we certainly still sent it, but we don't do it. Part of the process though, gotta, gotta get through yep. that. Every digital company has to do that. Mm -hmm. If I'm the president of a university and I'm being pitched an affiliate deal, I would be fucking offended too. You know? yeah. Like I, I, I would be, I would be pretty offended by it. like that's just bad business. Because how do you know they're going to sign up through your link, and how will they be able to? Then the transparency that has to happen between Apple and the link, and also you and your accounting department and their accounting department, it all just gets really sticky in there. And I think this is a digital deal, which is what Apple was trying to present there. So I could see, but did George, uh, George? Uh, 
What's Klyovkov. Klyovkov. Did he think that George was... George K, for did, future reference. George K. All right, shout out. Commissioner of Pac-12, which might no longer be a, yeah. a conference God, anymore. Yeah. Good run. He thought that was going to be more? He thought that these schools would be cool with the affiliate deal? What did he think? Well, George K basically got a bad hand and managed to make it work. Uh, he, he's been the commissioner. Now, he took over for a bad commissioner, Larry Scott, who lasted way too long. The Pac-12's problem, Pat, is rooted in apathy of the fan bases that didn't care enough to rally around their network. And then the, then the former commissioner, Larry Scott, had a horrible network plan that never got distribution. And through the life of their last TV deal that expires this year, 12 years, they were actually the highest paid league when it started for a couple weeks before the SEC did a deal. But this that deal started with such promise. There was Then network didn't take off. Larry Scott turned into a dud. The presidents didn't realize it, never fired him because they were paying him too much money. And six, eight years in his tenure, when it was an abject disaster, they just sort of rode with him as long as they could. They, they finally parted ways. They brought in George K. He had worked at MGM and been in business, and he just did not adapt well to college athletics. There, there's really no other way to put it. He, he worked there about two years, and I, I wrote this last week. Like, he actually, when, when his final words are written, like, he never actually accomplished anything. Like, he never had, like, oh, we did this great deal, or we did this with our conference championship game, or we did, like, he's been there two years, and essentially nothing has happened. It's, it's been a, a Seinfeld tenure, for lack of, lack of a better way to put it. And so, now, again, you could have Winston Churchill trying to negotiate these deals. You have a, the Pac-12, which isn't the sexiest product. You have a lot of the money taken up. We're not in a bull market right now, uh, economically. The media companies, especially six months ago, were really regressing. And, mm. like, there's only so many television windows left. Right. Like, you know, when you look at ABC, ESPN, ESPN2, Fox, FS1, like there's literally only so many three hour blocks to put these games. And and that was one thing that really got in the way of the Pac-12 was like there was nowhere for them to go. And that's why streaming ended up becoming, uh, you know, becoming a mainstream thing for them. I think it's interesting because allegedly Amazon was in on the Big Ten and NBC ended up winning. And NBC ended up winning even though they didn't bid as much as Amazon did, but because Mm -hmm. they still have the traditional network as well. And it was kind of like, um, I don't want to say my speech at Upfronts, but kind of like my speech at Upfronts. We're at this very interesting time right now where like linear television is obviously still a thing, still very powerful. Numbers are huge, 6.3 million yeah. for the Hall of Fame game on Thursday. Yes. Numbers for everything are up. But digital has the infrastructure now to really be able to compete. The banks behind it, the amount of money behind it, the reach, the access, the convenience on how to get there. Where like maybe five years ago, the Amazon Thursday night thing with the NFL would have been just a no way. That is way too difficult. Now it feels like society's getting more used to the streaming platforms. So everybody wants to get in on live sports you would have thought that george k for this conversation who i've met I th- were you at the dinner you're at the dinner that i was at right with him i think i don't know if i was at the dinner you're at but i, I know george yeah so was I, that in eugene maybe pat yeah it was yeah yeah okay. yeah you were there <laughs> yeah so that was when i met him or whatever seemed like a good guy seemed like a nice guy yeah, good guy so yeah, i don't really wanna, nice guy bright guy i don't yeah. want to judge him as a human but there's definitely deals to get done now, don't you think? You, you got to sell it, I guess. But like, live sports is all anybody wants right now. Apple wants it, obviously. Yep, yep. They not as much as I guess all those schools thought they would want it. But I wonder if that's because there wasn't any competition because you need another bidder to kind of run yeah. that thing up. I don't know how you're not able to get a deal done, especially whenever you have two LA schools in there. Now, granted, they're gone, but you get yeah. them out of there. Oregon has Nike, right? Like Nike. Yeah. Mm-hmm is Oregon and like Washington's getting real good. I don't, I'm fascinated by it, bro. I'm really, really oh, yeah. fascinated about how they weren't able to get a deal. Now that turns to another conference. Let's talk about it. The ACC. Mm-hmm. I guess seven schools in the ACC have had their lawyers look at their TV deal. They can't get out of it unless they all pay $120 million or something like that. But their deal's until 2036. That is a long time. What do they look like with all this movement with the Big Ten, the Big 12? And obviously the SEC has teams going in. The ACC has no teams jumping into the ACC. The Pac-12 is everybody bailing. What's the ACC look like going forward, do you think? Yeah, it's a little bit Lord of the Flies there right now, Pat. There, there, there's no other way to say it. There is a, a segment led by Florida State. I mean, Florida State's president came out and basically said, we need to be paid more money than everyone else in the ACC, or we're going to have to think about leaving. Uh, the problem with leaving, and again, some of this stuff is, is way over my head legally, 
Um, they'd have to pay, like you said, 120, 130 million. But the, the rub there that's really interesting is there's this thing in college deals called grants of rights, right? It's a phrase you only hear when talking about college media deals. And essentially, Florida State, Boston College, Syracuse Pitt, pick one. They have all granted their rights. So if you wanted a uh, North Carolina field hockey game in 2035, the ACC actually owns those games. They've granted all the rights of all their home games, that entire league, through 2036. So the, the legal ambiguity here, and why, quite frankly, Florida State, Clemson, Miami, some of these unhappy schools haven't left yet, is that even if they pay that exit fee, they don't know if they can take their games with them. So they would have to battle out legally, and there's only, the only thing we know about legal battles is they don't happen quickly, right? So they would have to battle legally to get their games back to then sell them to someone else. And that's sort of the standoff that's been going on for almost two years in, in the ACC. So some of it has come to head more publicly here in the, in the last few months, but there's, there's a thought too that this is gonna hint a little bit about where we're going in college athletics. Like right now, Alabama and Vanderbilt get the exact same amount of money every year from the SEC, right? In Indiana and Ohio State, and, and I'm not picking on those schools, but fill in the blank, right? Wow. So. Yeah. As we are now in an era where everybody needs bigger stadiums, better facilities, and, you know, quite frankly, you have to pay the players indirectly through NIL. Like, are we in the next set of TV deals in the 2030s going to see Alabama get a more proportional share? And that's what Florida State and Clemson and others are asking for now is we want to get paid our value. So part of the harmony of these leagues for years was we're in lockstep. You know, it's like they're they're, they're marching together because they all make the same amount of money and, and that. You know, and that works in the NFL, but it does not work currently in colleges. And then if you want to go even further down the road, which is a great talk radio topic, when do these leagues start to get smaller? When do you start saying, you know what, Trim the Maryland, yeah. yeah, you're not you're not pulling the weight. So we're going to, uh, you know, and I'm not picking on Maryland there, but y you know the drill. Like there's always there's there's high performers and low performers, right? Every every league has has tops and bottoms. So when do you start trimming to to help your bell cows who are clearly earning you all the money? So there's there's all these issues that are really going to shape how the next generation looks like. And you know, Florida there's a deadline for Florida State Pat August fifteenth. If they want to leave and join a new league next year in 2024, they would have to notify the ACC in writing. Uh, my sources say it is highly, highly unlikely that they would do that. Very expensive. But we have, we, we have a lot more August 15th before 2036. So we'd be naive to say in two weeks it's, it's you know probably not going to happen. That's not naive. But in two years, are they still going to sit here the same way? Like, yeah, there, there's a fascinating scene people have talked about where there's like seven different private planes at the at the airstrip in Greensboro, um, and everybody goes to look at the documents. They don't give anyone a copy of this grant of rights. You have to like go. It's like a movie. Like you got to go see the see the stone in the uh, in the library of ACC headquarters, uh, which are now in Charlotte, but they were in Greensboro. Scanner so. Eye. It's uh, yeah, it's it's so everybody's basically looking for a legal loophole, but there, there's no assurance that uh, that it's going to happen. So it's, it's really a fascinating moment in time that we're in right now. Friday, Pat, there'll be documentaries about Friday. There'll be movies about Friday. Friday was the single most pivotal day in my 20 years covering college athletics. Hey, well, that's awesome. Congrats on uh, Massive Friday. Yeah. Also, quick follow-up. You're going to be a pretty big part of that documentary, yeah. pal. We yeah. were following along as it was all yeah. unfolding, and I think a lot of people were looking like, no way. Really, really, really? This is what it's going to be like when? 2024. That's real soon. Oh, shit. You know what's not real soon? 2036. Jeez. That long ACC way. deal is a long time, bro. That's a long time. Long time. So they got people traveling to Charlotte to come look at a deal that says, yeah, you're fucked for another 12 years. <laughs> Sorry. That's crazy. That's hey, you. pay for the I gas. I think that's the legal term. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I do. But, I mean, I don't know which judge would say it, but one of them that looked at it would say that because did they just sign that deal because they thought $240 million. Yeah, this is a lot of money. So much. remarkable. We are going to take this. And then now the money that's been, which once again goes back to George not being able to get a deal done. Look at the money that's being spent on live sports, bro. Right. That's what this is. Live sports are the only yeah. thing that carries ratings anymore. So, like, the ACC being – I would see how they would be, we got to get out of here. This yeah. is bullshit. Now, good negotiators, though, you know, you actually yeah. negotiate in their windows Ooh. of, okay. hey, if things aren't – if one side's doing and the other isn't, 
you can actually... A little divorce. Yeah, you just going in, you have to know that yeah. that's potentially going to happen. But I guess if you're thinking $240 million is the most you're ever going to get, it's like, yeah, bro, fuck it. Lock it in. Yeah. 2036, lock it in. How many billion is that? Start to, <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. We got $4 billion coming? Yeah, lock it in, yeah. dude. We will definitely take that. And then all of a sudden, a new regime comes in. They're like, these motherfuckers. Put us in a situation we're never going to be able to get out of. I hope they're able to figure it out. Tony has a question for you, Pete. All right, Pete. So what's going on with the the Pac-4 now? Is is Washington State, Oregon State going to the Big 12? I mean, Stanford and Cal, those are institutions like with research, so they could go to the Big 10. Or are they going to try to save the Pac-4 and bring in some Mountain West teams? Where do we go with the Final Four? Is the Pac-12 dead? What's going on there? Great question. And... I I don't think there's an easy answer to that, which is why I think it's going to take a couple weeks for that to, to resolve itself. Uh, there's been some Stanford ACC smoke that has uh, that has emerged. I mean, think about this, guy. Stanford has been like the farm system for the U.S. Olympics. I believe they've won 26 of the last 29 Directors' Cups Whoa. for the best athletic departments top to bottom in, uh, you know, in college athletics. So, I mean, Stanford is this vibrant you know, just teeming athletic department filled with all these world-class people and they have great facilities and they have like nowhere to go right uh -huh. now. And could they, maybe Cal end up in some sort of hybrid ACC or some sort of ACC West Coast wing? I don't know. Like those are the types of things like that's not a no-brainer for either side. So it's like, okay, let's run that ground ball out. Let's see. At, the, the key to keeping a conference together is you keep your NCAA tournament bid and for at least the next two years – um, when the playoff goes to 12, you would, in theory, potentially keep your playoff access from there. So that there is like some motivation to stay together and to stay a little bit sensible and to stay on the West Coast. You also keep all the NC tournament units, which ends up being tens of millions of dollars, which are the, the, the things you get when you advance in the NCAA tournament. And that, I won't explain all the math to you on that, but they have basically had a war chest coming to them from the NCA for all the teams that have played in the NCA tournament for the past six or seven years. Mm -hmm. COVID messed up the math on that a little bit, but there are like all these tenants, like these temples or these conferences to, uh, to, to deal with. So I think go somewhere else, like all four are together until they're not, they're all together independently exploring other options. As somebody told me today, um, the together option is interesting, but it's not easy. The, the basic math of, okay, we'll just invite, Boise, San Diego State, Fresno, et cetera, doesn't really work because they would owe $34 million each in exit fees for all those schools. So they would have to subsidize that. So if you're just going to say, hey, let's add five schools, that's $150 million. And the Mountain West, AAC, are basically making 7 or $8 million a year per school, somewhere in that neighborhood. It might be six for the Mountain West, seven for the AAC. So that's the tier of money. You're probably going to be above that if you have Stanford and Cal in your league, but not really far above that, like if you're guessing it out. So how do you pay $150 million bucks for these schools? The, the other thing that's really fascinating about this is after this season, all those schools scoot. And so there's like no more schedule. Like you don't have a schedule moving forward after this year. Now, college football is scheduled out in an obnoxious way to like 2037. It's like Toledo announces a home and home with Michigan State in 2036. Like all of a sudden you don't have a schedule if you're those four schools for next season. Like I've talked to a couple coaches at some of those spots and they're like, we don't know only where we're going to go, but we don't know who we're going to play. Uh, so there is some Mountain West synergy that could happen. I, I think they, they will try to bolt, first of all, for their own good. They will try to stay together, option two, and then they will try some sort of Mountain West merger or just uh, or just head there. And Stanford potentially could go independent in football path. Welcome to the Pack Mountain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that. Everybody starts at the bottom trying to get to the top of the Pack Mountain. We're all the exact same. Now, with that being said, probably not as many talented schools football wise uh whatever would they get an automatic bid to the playoffs still like are they going to realign who the power five are because allegedly it's all the champions of the power five get an automatic playoff bid and then the rankings right are the ones that are going to fill in the blanks for everybody else so that's close pat um right now Sweet. the way they have it which is a bone to to the non-power schools it's the Conference champ, top six conference champions. So you would think the Power Five get one, and then they let oh. somebody from the AAC or they let someone from Conference USA or the Sun Belt or the MAC jump up and get bid number twelve for the honor of going and get annihilated by you know fill in the blank. Whoa! Bid, Come on. Right. 
Whoa. Well, that Cincinnati I mean, <laughs> team would have been. You don't think Sauce Gardner would have done all right? Been yeah. Fine, yeah. Sauce yeah. was good, man. Sauce, yeah. was, sauce was good. Still is. There's, there's, Still there's, is, by the way. They say yeah. That. Oh, yeah. No. Nope. But every once in a while, there's, there's one of those teams from one of yes. those. Obviously, UCF yeah. was the one before mm -hmm. Cincinnati. Yes. And I think it is good news that they'll get an opportunity to get out there and prove it. Because to Pete's point, yes. if this new 16 team format just becomes, you know, a spotlight on the haves and the mm -hmm. have nots. Mm -hmm. Like, then I'll be excited to see how we all feel about it. But I think we're all pumped up about it. This whole realignment, though, throws quite a wrench in the entire system because if that's the new setup to get into playoffs, you would think some teams would strategically be like, all right, we're going to stay in a weaker yeah. conference yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. to become a champion to kind of run through it so then we get an automatic bid, hopefully. Has that type of gamesmanship been played at all, or is everybody just trying to get to the consistent money, you think? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things. So we're top six definitively, Pat, for the two years that are remaining on the contract. So we're entering year 10 of a 12-year contract. And then years 11 and years 12 are the 12 team. So right now, that top six threshold, conference champions, is for those two years. I can't imagine that staying through going forward from there, Pat. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. And there is an idea if you're Oregon State, you're like, okay, maybe we can stay in the Mountain West and dominate that league and win, which sounds great. But then if you're making 23 million less than you were expecting to make, it's not great. Yeah, right? but if so you're it's like a that's playoff. the choice. Like Oregon and Washington could have stuck it out on Apple and probably had pretty good playoff access from winning that league and you know being competitive in that league, maybe getting an at-large bid. But they weren't going to have the the visibility on Apple. I mean, that 6.8 number really resonated with me. I don't call the NFL that close. That's mind-boggling yeah. that an NFL preseason game would get. You might not have 6.8 million Apple subscribers well, messy. So, like, yeah. that could watch that game. Never mind actually people like flipping on their TV and watching it. So it became an exposure issue at the core for some of those. But the playoff going forward, it's it's going to be really interesting. But I, I can't – that top six isn't – you have to follow the money, right? And the money's going to want the big names and big brands. In. So I have a feeling that's going to become top five conference champions, still still obviously having the carrot for some of those smaller schools. And I'm not being dismissive of those schools. Guys. I love, like, my first year covering this Indiana. was Urban Meyer's yeah. Utah team. Uh, Alex Smith, at quarterback, one of the great teams, um, most fun teams. You know, the spread offense was new. Like, those are uh, – Colt Brennan at Hawaii. Um, you mentioned UCF. Those are the teams that make college football great. Kellen Moore at Boise. Like, that's, to me – the soul of college football. That's what makes it different is you have somebody in this, you know, it, the, the smaller school or different environment and, uh, and, and then they roll out and, you know, they make a difference. And that's like the, the thing that NFL can't replicate. You know what I mean? If Jacksonville pops up or whatever, there's only 32 of them. Whereas if we got 133 cats in all these different corners of the country and it makes it fun when all of a sudden they can really chase things. Agreed completely. And to your point about, uh, so I didn't even think about that pack four deal still happening with Apple. Yeah. So that's still mm -hmm. taking place? That's where they're going to live? No. No, no, no. They don't have a deal right now. Like, that's the problem going forward is they can't pay buyout or exit fees or anything like that because they have no television deal. You, I mean, look, you need a league to have a deal to put on TV, right? Like, that. Like they don't have a league right now. You, you need six teams at, at a minimum so to have a league right now. All right. Last question here for you from Tosh <laughs> Meat. Yeah, Pete, I think the way everything's trending, I know you mentioned, like, you know, the Big Ten potentially trimming the fat, but I think a lot of Big Ten fans just assume, like, okay, well, just in a matter of time here, they're going to get up to 20. Um, and I think the golden goose for everyone who is in, you know, went to a Big Ten school or is a Big Ten fan is, like, do whatever you have to do to make sure Notre Dame gets into the Big Ten. And I understand, like, they have their own TV deal that's worth a lot of money, and maybe that goes into it, too. If they stay independent, it's easier for them to kind of play a little bit softer of a schedule and have a chance to make the playoff um, every single year. But they already have that NBC TV deal in place. The Big Ten has an NBC TV deal. It kind of makes sense. Do you see a situation where Notre Dame eventually is, you know, in the Big Ten? And if not Notre Dame, like, who do you think two other teams – um, the Big Ten would kind of circle and go after if they do decide to expand a little bit more? So I'll start with Notre Dame, Ty. It's a really good question. And my understanding of the way Notre Dame is going to operate going forward, again, they have a new athletic director coming in who's going to be sort of a, a, a sidecar AD this year and then start full-time next year. Pete Vakwa from uh, NBC is coming hey, over. that guy they're, can they're spin gonna... a football. I just want to let everybody know. Mm -hmm. Pete Vakwa 
can spin a football. Oh, yeah. I don't know if everybody knows this. He was a walk-on punter at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Then he went on to the Golf Network. Then he became, I think, president of NBC Sports. Mm-hmm. And then now he's the athletic director for Notre Dame. I had a chance to chat with him and his team whenever we were thinking about exploring our options and everything. He came in here, spin a football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and seeds. He was throw. I mean... It was impressive. Yeah, very it was. much so. In a suit, like kind of a, what do you have? He had like a sweater on. Yeah. Business yep. casual. With a, a button down yep. underneath. Mm-hmm. Looks super cool. Hey, what's this thing? <laughs> Started spinning it. So I got faith in him figuring it out. Yeah. But anyway, sorry about that. Just wanted to say that. This <laughs> nope. is our first time getting to say that. Yeah. Pete Bavakwa nope. has the best arm I've ever seen out of any suit. <laughs> yeah. It's a dog. That is what I would like yeah. to say. All right. Anyways. Well, he also has a good hand to play with Notre Dame football. Um, the one thing we've learned is that the biggest brands are going to command the most money and a vibrant, relevant Notre Dame people are going to want. So the conventional thought is they'd stick with NBC, I believe. And I haven't looked at this lately. Their deal is up 24, 25 ish. The thought is they could end up getting in the same range that 65, 70 million, whatever it is that you would get in one of these big leagues. But they keep independence. They keep being unique. The only thing that's going to force Notre Dame from independence, and, and it's very basic, is like when they run out of teams to play. If everybody colluded and said, we're going to get so big and there's going to be so much consolidation that Notre Dame can't put together a schedule. So these leagues have to get bigger, and then they say, we're going to play 10 conference games. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, like everyone's like, well, I can't play Notre Dame on my two non-conference games. I want to play, you know, uh, Stephen F. Austin. Hey, you uh, just buried uh, these schools. West Virginia. How many schools have – whoa. We're just throwing one out there. West Virginia is about to win a natty. We haven't even talked about them. Welcome to our Big 12, <laughs> oh. by the way. But to your point, like at West Virginia, there for a bit, it was tough for us to schedule people. Not a lot of people wanted to schedule us sure. with their non-conference yep. games. Mm-hmm. So we were getting like very terrible teams. And everybody's like, well, then at the end of the year, we're getting judged on the teams that we beat. And it was like, well, nobody would fucking schedule us. What do you – so that's – if they get exclusivity there with the conference exclusivity – that would be Notre Dame kind of getting pushed out mm-hmm. to the side, right? So shouldn't they start actively making deals almost with each conference almost? Yeah. So that's the that's the intersection in the graph that they have to determine, right? Like when USC says to them, we can't play you anymore because the Big Ten's too rigorous, that becomes a problem for Notre Dame. Um, they play Stanford every year. The conventional thought has been, and I've reported this the last two years, is that if Notre Dame does go to the Big Ten, they would want Stanford to go with them. They would like to keep that partnership. Uh, mm. They obviously play on the West Coast happen. every year, either at LA or 50 or Olympians area. falling. Uh, he, you just mentioned this yeah. about Stanford. Could you imagine the Big Ten being like, yeah, we also have a school that's over there and beautiful. So beautiful. Beautiful Northern California that has, I don't know, 150 Olympians just stumbling out of <laughs> classrooms. Over there. Isn't Stanford a hot commodity, I'd assume, right? Well, Stanford isn't a hot commodity. The, the Big Ten had a chance to examine them and, di- and didn't take them in uh, in football. this. Stanford football yeah. not doesn't not, rate. No. Now, remember, Stanford has an unbelievable brand, Pat. I would never argue that. You played with a bunch of Stanford guys, I know, a- at the Colts. I mean, I watched Stanford football be as good as any program in the country at times over from, you know, whatever it was, 08 to 15. I mean, Stanford had as good of a run as ever. They had elite offensive linemen. Obviously, they had elite quarterback and quarterbacks. They had the best tailback in the country who should have won the Heisman. Like, they've had really good football. Stanford football, though, doesn't rate and it doesn't resonate. It doesn't have the brand resonance that Notre Dame does, which is a national following and has a religious undertone and has a century of great football behind it. Stanford has just been very good, but it doesn't really have the the same mass appeal. If it did, quite frankly, the Big Ten would have taken them. You think the Big Ten presidents wouldn't be fighting each other in the in the boardroom for for, for Stanford? Uh, so, well, the last uh, the last it, Big Ten commissioner who's now up there with the Bears. I mean, I don't know if he was making as sound decisions all the time as I think Big Ten people would have expected. But it is funny to think of all oh, the Big Ten. Yeah, Kevin like, Warren's how's their tenure football? actually part of the reason it went <laughs> sideways was. Oh. Um, you, you, one of the things Kevin Warren tried to do was jam four more schools and cancel down the Big Ten. Yeah. After, um, after he added USC and UCLA, and they couldn't find the TV deal for it, and it ended up being a turnoff to some of the ADs and the presidents there. And they so canceled did football. Just, did I just lose my uh, internet, Pat? Did no, we didn't see you there for a second, but we heard you. The words okay. were good. They were gospel. You know okay. what you were saying about Kevin uh, Warren with the teams. I think when it, it all turned south for old Kevin, he canceled football. Remember? Yep. He canceled football. Oh yeah. He was the first oh, yeah. one from one of the Power Five schools to be like, you know what? 
or heroes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We ain't yeah. doing it. And Pac-12 jumped in. Well, they were together, I think, right? Oh, yeah. was it unified? Well, and right. like, immediately, like, eight teams in the Big Ten were like, no, we're now, playing football. This well, year. then the SEC, Sankey comes <laughs> yeah. out, and he's like, yep. uh, we're, we're playing football. <laughs> yeah. We're playing football down here. Mm -hmm. No matter what. Oh, they're saying the Ivy League isn't playing? Okay. Okay. Way to go. They need to be figuring out how to stop this whole thing anyways. Right. With their big brains. Shout out. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ivy. Thank mm -hmm. you. And then Sankey was like, the Big Ten isn't playing. Ooh, mm. they might play some games with us. Yeah. Oh, we'll call. Remember who was it? It was Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah, Iowa. Iowa, yep. Ohio State. Yep. I forget how many schools. Illinois. They're like, well, if you're not going to play, we're going to certainly go play yep. down the SEC. <laughs> Could you imagine if that would have happened? I think that was when that everybody was looking at. That's when the general Bob Carpenter yep. started rallying people to go to Chicago yep. to go sit outside of his. That was when I think it all kind of turned south. But then, yeah, trying to kick other people out, I, I could imagine didn't win them over. No. What a time. What a t all you need is one person yep. in a position that can't operate, and all of a sudden you're seeing the the ripple effects throughout yeah. the rest of it. And we're just going to follow along with your Twitter account as you keep us all updated. Appreciate the hell out of you, Pete. Yeah, Pat. We'll see you soon on the trail here. Thanks, bud. Yeah, can't Good wait to, to you get, guys. Hey, can't wait to get on the road with you again, man. The authority, ladies Let's and gentlemen, go. Pete Thamel. Yeah, Pete. Yeah, I traveled with Pete last year. You know this man yeah. right here. Yeah, great guy. Look at him on game day. First time he popped up on the screen when I was on there, I was so happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bro, he just, he is like the, hey. Boom. Yep. yep. All business. Authority. We don't have time. That's nope. Thamel. We do not have, they had me uh, muted a couple weeks and my mic was on a couple different weeks. Yeah. And every once in a while I try to give a good pop for Pete. <laughs> ha ha! Good yeah. joke. <laughs> yep, yep. You know, because I, I do. I love, I enjoy this man a lot. You know what I mean? I really, and he seems to never sleep. Yep. And you, insiders for the NFL, they're always on their phone. You think about it. Yeah. You know, when you think about rap, think about Shefty, think Absolutely. about what their lives are. We always talk about, like, your life. Who, it's 32 teams. Yeah. Thamel is on the horn mm -hmm. at all times. 132. Texting, talking, <sighs> networking with everybody. having to know, And then the team turns over, too. Coaches turn oh, yeah. over. Yeah. So Big he's got to re-hit the phones to kind of, what a life. Crazy. How do you expect that guy to be on TV and act normal when he's, he's literally a machine? <laughs> yeah. The guy's a fucking machine out there. Uh, college football is in a wild time. Yep. We will continue uh, to kind of, you know, follow along, keep everybody updated. Feels like there's going to be a lot of changes over the next year, though, before the big playoff push. College football is going to look different, but we need to remember that college football is always going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what we need to remember. College football will always be awesome because – you know, and they just got to hope that this doesn't happen. And, you know, McGee kind of talked about it. Yeah. yeah. McGee said, you guys are going to change some things and people are going to stop going. You know what I mean? Ooh. These people aren't scared to stop going now. Yeah. You know, that's basically what he said. The traditions of college football. Mm -hmm. Right. The spec. Spectacle. Spectacle yeah. mm -hmm. of college football is what makes college football. The crowd, the vibes, the environment, that is college football. That's why I learned last year while I was traveling yeah. around. Like, the football is the football. Yes. Okay, football is good. Football is great. Some of these teams are unbelievable. Some of these players, obviously, we're going to see on Sundays forever, and they're going to have traditions and legacies made after them in their colleges, towns, forever, and they're going to be heroes forever. That's that's certainly the case. But that crowd is – the crowd is the show. Yeah, backbone. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as long as you still have that, I think you always have college football, and I think enough rivalries are staying. Like, I think enough rivalries yeah. are keeping around. I guess Bedlam it will not happen, right? No. This particular year or whatever? No, it'll happen this year. This is the last year because yeah. Texas and Oklahoma are leaving. After it changes. So West Virginia pit stopped for a while, and yeah. then it came back. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm hoping any of the rivalries that isn't a lot that kind of got uh, realigned here or reshaped can somehow make their way back in the future in negotiation. But if you look at most of these places, the rivalries are traveling together. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? UCLA, USC for LA. Okay, they're staying. Washington, Oregon. Yep. Okay, they're staying. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Texas. Okay, they're staying. Yep. Everybody, Michigan, Ohio State, still together. Mm -hmm. yes. You can go down the line. Duke, UNC, still together. Mm -hmm. Like all the rivalries are still kind of pieced together, mm -hmm. which not all of them. Most of the rivalries still piece together, which I think is gigantic for the future of the sport when everybody thinks that the sport is about to die. I think if we keep those together, we'll still have those moments. We'll still have the tradition. We'll still have the mm -hmm. expectation. And hopefully we'll be able to build more as the college football yeah, world. The only continues. really ones that you lose here is the – Oregon State, Oregon, Washington State, Washington, because they're left behind. Those are the only ones that you've, like, the interstate rivalries, like, those, those big ones. Those are the ones where you're really losing with these. So, with this real life. that Oregon, Oregon State one, if you talk to the people at Oregon, 
you know. Not really. Right. The no. Washington is the. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oregon yeah. State yeah. is it still matters, it matters, but Washington is the one that we're really the big one in there. So once I saw them kind of paired together, I was like, wow, that's that mm -hmm. seems to be on purpose. When you saw Oklahoma and Texas together, it's like yep. that seems to be on purpose. USC, UCLA, even though there's many other rivalries between those two schools and traditions, it's like that feels like that's on purpose. It's really I enjoy. I enjoy what they got going on. And for people who like, you know, really want like the old rivalries and are pissed about that, like I understand that. But then there's also the opportunity for like, hey, there's a good chance you're gonna get to see like USC and Ohio State play every single year yeah. or Oregon and Michigan. Like there's there's a good chance that like massive new rivalries kind of come of this uh like rejumbling of the conferences and we're and we're gonna get a lot better games because of it all right let's start chatting about i'm sure we'll talk about this in the next hour with aj we should try to call the general see how he yeah. feels Ooh, yeah. the general bob carpenter about it because this is big news bro huge big news Change. not as big not as big as the win that jake paul had on saturday oh yeah. <laughs> that's right Amen. it is awesome like the i watched his documentary mm -hmm. uh on the untold series oh, yeah. on netflix yeah. johnny manzels comes out tomorrow johnny yep. football we talked to him on friday great conversation feels like he's in a good spot he's opening a bar which was kind of an interesting yeah yeah a shop bar too yeah i didn't expect that to come out of there especially with the way he was talking but it feels like he's in a much better place mentally than he's ever been. Yeah. So I'm excited he's letting us into his story. The Jake Paul story, very fascinating. Him and his brother Logan, how they kind of went through it. And then his big fight down there at the American Airlines Center that was sold out the fucking arena against Thank Nate you. Diaz. Yeah. And obviously the undercard spotlighting other fighters, trying to make more money for everybody, which is a big part of his mission. Him and Conor McGregor got into it last night about that whole thing. Conor said a couple of things you, I don't believe you're supposed to say on the internet anymore. Yeah, no way. Nobody yeah, yeah. told Conor McGregor that. Yeah. <laughs> Jake mm -hmm. Paul responded in there. Some Others got in. It was uh, the fight game was always seemingly active, but what Jake Paul has done for boxing, great. And him beating Nate Diaz, I'm, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. He was a minus 600 favorite. Yep. Okay, to win that fight. Yes, he was. The books knew that Nate Diaz's boxing might not be what makes Nate Diaz Nate Diaz. Yes. There's a couple rounds Nate Diaz won. That first round, Jake Paul comes out throwing haymakers. Mm -hmm. That was an entertaining fight, seemingly, from start to finish. And Jake gets the big win. They're going to have a rematch now. Who knows if it'll be MMA or another boxing match. More money's in there. And then Jake is just continuing to carve his way through this fight world with not a lot of fights, not a lot of experience. Oh. The entire He's still profiting off these fights that most oh, yeah. fighters normally don't profit off. Mm -hmm. right. First eight fights, first six fights of boxers' careers, normally they're making no money. Money. They're getting a hot dog at the bottom of a card. Mm -hmm. They're lucky to be there. Then once you start stacking and becoming undefeated, you're good. He's profiting mightily off of these fights where he's still learning his road. He says world champion by 2026. I mean, good luck. Yeah. I have no idea how that'll happen, but I hope it'll happen just for the sake of us getting right along for the story. Congrats to him. Congrats to Nate getting broken off. I assume yeah, he got paid very sure. well. Yeah. He's for an entertaining sure. fighter. Always he is an will entertaining be. fighter. Always will be. No matter where you put him in a fight, he's going to be entertaining. Yep. Even if it's in a stare down, shit talk fest, he's going to be entertaining. Yep. So that was a win win. I think good for Jake Paul out there. Yeah, it was awesome, the whole thing. When you mentioned the undercard, we, I, we got to watch Amanda Serrano just absolutely tag somebody. Cook. Right before uh, Jake Paul versus Diaz. Entire crowd was on Diaz's side, which isn't new for these Jake Paul boxing matches, but I enjoyed it. You, you mentioned the first round. I thought there was a chance right away, like, oh, okay, Jake Paul might actually knock him out. And it was just another one of those times where you're watching it and – you don't you don't realize because I feel like this happened a few fights ago. But Jake Paul is an actual boxer now. Like like Nate Diaz, I'm sure he does. No, he lost to Tommy Fury. Tyson Fury's old yeah, brother started boxing right. when he was like five years old. Yeah, and he probably falls into that category. Who might you know start a little lower on the fights or for normal boxing for Tommy Fury. But like the way he was moving and he he did tag Nate Diaz a few times. But I mean. Nate Diaz, what he said on the show, com holds true completely. He had a black eye in like a minute, and then but but was fine. My skin, he's in my yeah. skin. It just gets mm -hmm. and it did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's awesome, bro. Him turning his back at one point, looking out, yeah. looking out to the crowd. Who knows what he was doing? And the thing that I was most impressed with that, Jake Paul's cardio. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Especially with how that first round went. So he came out, uh -huh. we're ending this thing. Mm -hmm. So normally after that takes place. Okay, that was a big dump of energy. Yeah. That was a big dump of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. That was a lot. Normally, your body can get tired. And he tweeted, like, he got cardio kinged by the cardio king is what he said to Nate Diaz or whatever. He was very proud. He should be. Hey, yes. 
This fucking guy should be very proud. After watching this documentary, Jake Paul should be very proud of himself. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact that we're getting to watch it all. He is certainly fucked up. Absolutely. Certainly. Yeah. Self-admittedly. And will again, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess. He's an Ohio fuck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So is Logan. They're just two Ohio fuck. Yes. Yeah. That are just out there doing it. But he should be very proud. So should Logan. Big win. Now, brass knuckles. I uh, love uh, cheap. Come on. Because I love Ricochet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ricochet is probably the most athletic human being I've ever seen with these eyes. Yeah. Say, hey, need you to do, uh, and by athletic, I mean um, acrobatic. Acrobatic. There it is. The most acrobatic. Most at Shout out to Simone is back. Yeah. Let's go, Simone. Yeah. Simone's all the way back. Just beat the fuck out of everybody. Yeah, exactly. Everyone. Kind of took some time off. I think she got married to an NFL guy. Yep. Yes. They're living their life. She's going to come back because the Olympics for next year. Yeah, let's see what we got. Pfft, she's back. Still got it. Beat everybody. And a lot of people, well, she's a quitter. It's like, well, she seemingly went through some real stuff. You don't think the people that are at the top like her don't have an axe to grind? Like that whole thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to watch her because whenever you're watching the Olympics, the women's gymnastics is one of the ones where we're going to win. Absolutely. So we are going to cheer for it. The you best. know, that's what we got to do. Just like, yeah, like well, normally. Like it was oh, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if. Uh, Not come anymore. on. I don't know if that's going to happen. That Earliest did. exit in the history. That chapter's closed. Stayed up for the entire thing too. We weren't even able to say our teams, our country's burning. You're sorry about suck it. No. Nope. This year. That's all we want to do. That's all we want to do. All we can we love do Olympics. It. We love World Cups. Mm -hmm. We love when our country is playing your country yep. because you're outright allowed to say your country stinks. Yeah. And people just take it in the competitive sphere. Exactly. Because whenever you say that outside of there, oh, you don't know about the people of France. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm talking about yeah. us dominating you at a sport that your people have worked hard for. Yep. Our people have worked harder. Mm -hmm. right. Shout out to America. This is what greatness looks like. You guys suck. We're allowed to say that. Yeah. Speed walkers. If we had one, if the Americans had a speed walker, mm -hmm. the amount of shit I would talk about the other country speed walking, like everybody's walking. Our guy's walking better than your guy. That's Sorry bad. about it. Best. It is America. I love these types of events. Now, the women's national team has been very steady for us yeah. oh, for yeah. a long time yeah. Yeah. that we can be as ignorant and as arrogant as possible. Yep. We're going to beat you. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Sorry. And when I say ignorant, I'm truly meaning ignorant. We don't know who they're playing, how the, nope. how the competition is. We don't have a clue what world's women's soccer is like. Mm -hmm. We don't know what leagues they're playing nope. in. We have no idea who the best is in the world. We just assume we have her and we're going to beat you. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. It's been a great run. Yeah. Two great. straight World Cups. Yep. Love it. That's eight years straight of talking shit on yep. people for their sport. Us beating the hell out of you. Killing yeah. them. Now, earliest exit in history. I guess water was going to find its level. I guess there was going to come a time where we were no longer going to be the most arrogant group on earth. And I think it's potentially because... Foxy. Whoa, Foxy. Foxy. Fox. What are you doing? What the hell was that, Foxy? Foxy. What Foxy. are we looking for? What the hell was that? Foxy, I was just going to talk about the team. I wasn't going to necessarily blame anybody. Yes, VAR was certainly <laughs> yeah. a nightmare. Right. Because the goalie said we lost by a millimeter. Because the whole ball has to be past the line. That's the soccer rules. And I'm sure if you're watching a whole ball. So even if a tiny little bit was still on the line, no goal. Mm -hmm. Whole ball has to go in there. Somehow these lasers were this accurate. Okay, of I'm course. sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but nonetheless, we had a couple other penalties missed. One was by, yes, Foxy. Megan Rapino, yeah, who yes. has won two World Cups, that should be remembered. Let's go. But there's been a lot of things said about Megan Rapino, and that's just the reality of the matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, Megan Rapino asked for a lot of things to be said about her whenever she wanted to change the world in a way in which she thought it was going to be made better. Now, those ways certainly were not always the ways of how other people felt who were potentially watching the United States, pulling for the United States, only wanting us to win and our absolute best to be shown on the field. And this is sports. I don't want to talk about politics. Mm -hmm. I came to watch sports. There's a lot of people out there that are like that. A lot of people, that sports are their escape. So whenever the star of the team immediately starts making a lot of politics stuff, you can see how some people immediately go, I don't want this. You're playing for the country 
that you want to change so bad, you hate it so bad. Mm -hmm. That's how people started viewing Megan Rapinoe, which I think oozed into the rest of the team and how people felt about the U.S. women's national team. Then Messi comes in yeah. and Messi scoring like six goals. And a lot of people had a lot of excuses not to watch or care about this women's national team. And a lot of people were very excited for the earliest exit in the history of the women's team because of how they view the women's national team. I would like to let us know. I'll let the world know. I want us to win. I want us to win the next World Cup. Oh, yeah. I want us to win the next World Cup. What? I want us to win every single World Cup so that we can continue to be these arrogant, stupid Yankees mm -hmm. about everybody else's sport. And for one reason or another, whether they lost focus on sport, whether they lost focus on pride of the team that you're playing for, whether you lost focus on anything, I hope this makes them better. And I hope the next generation of the women's national team understands that that crest on their chest that Julie Ertz was talking about wearing for the last time as she got emotional means a lot to a lot of people out here who just want to see us win over another country. And I think that is what I take away from it all. And I hope the ladies win in four years from right now. Now, let's get to a break. A.J. Hawk will be joining us on the other side. Cannot wait to chat with him. Hell yeah. Rapino pissing people off, though, bro. Oh, big Yeah, a lot of big people time. don't like her. A lot. lot not, so, there's what, a lot of people that like her. Yeah, no, I just mean, yeah, like I saw a lot of the negativity being loud. We live here in Indiana, in the middle of the country, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a lot of military friends, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people that love fucking love America. Love America, yeah. You know what I mean? So whenever somebody comes out and says that they don't necessarily like some things, you, you, those people see that as a, oh, against me. Yeah, mm -hmm. shot. Is how that feels. Mm -hmm. Not that that's right. I'm just saying that's reality of the situation. And there was a lot of people that felt that way. Yeah. About mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people that felt that way. A lot, way. Of, a lot of people very jacked up. She was the one that missed the PK. Yeah, apparently Foxy as well. Yeah, yeah Foxy. Was I mean, that was kind of, well, I was going to blame VAR. I will say the sports center the next morning conveniently didn't show. I didn't even know. No, I just oh, saw it really? for the first time this morning. It was cool. No, no, no. No, no, no I'm no, talking no, about Rapino. Rapino. Missing. Oh, yeah. oh, gotcha. When yeah. I woke up in the morning with the baby, wife and I, turned on sports center. What happened last night? Give me a whole rundown. They gave me a rundown, early sex in history. Then they did a full, like, Megan Rapino montage. Goodbye. And then they did an interview with her where she said, like, she was laughing and smiling about the dark comedy, about oh, missing yeah, one. Yeah. And she never misses that. And I was like, miss one. And then I went back. So they, they didn't, you know, so now people are like, and look at that. Yeah. ESPN's hiding. European. So it's just a no-win situation because she has become such a trigger for yes. people both ways. She also missed so bad that uh, she hit a uh, buy in the head. Yeah. I don't know if she was able to kick it back in time, like tenet or whatever, mm -hmm. but I did see Biden get hit in the back yeah. of the head with a soccer ball. I yep. also saw the lady that got hit on the house 700 yards away from Happy Gilmore. Yep, yep. that's right. That one was there. A lot of good ones. The internet. The internet this weekend was great. Alexi Lawless got murdered. Yes, yeah, he, he did. did. Not he, as bad as those white guys on the dock, but oh, still murdered. There was a race fight in Alabama. Fuck yeah, God! Man. I'll tell you what. That one had some real passion. Yeah, it <laughs> did. There was a kid swimming across a river. Yeah. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. This okay. ain't happening here. This morning, Black Twitter had a <laughs> field day. Not yep. just yesterday, no. but this morning. This morning, I saw somebody tweet, Going to the gym this morning to work on one thing and one thing alone. That's overhead chair shots. Yep. Yeah. And I just started dying laughing because uh -huh. that motherfucker taking that thing, it was like the rock on Kurt Angle's head. Yeah. Boom. Nuts. Boom. Boom. Ken Everybody got a little taste. Oh, Ken Shamrock. Yeah. Sorry, not Kurt Angle. Ken Shamrock. All of them. Boom. Mankind. Those are old school chair shots. Boom. That guy swimming across the dock, he, he didn't even know anybody who was in the fight, too. <laughs> he was just jumping in. Just unofficially scoring it, the Whites lost. Yeah. They had him in the first quarter. Yep. The Whites had it in the first quarter. But boy, oh boy. That shot of them not being able to get the boat out of there. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> There's not one person that feels bad. No. No. At all. That's just good internet, baby. That's right. Good internet. Mm -hmm. Be better people to everybody. I hope everybody down there. Not all white people are like that. And on the flip side, not all black people are like that. But if you're going to be a white person that is just openly racist in public, there's a chance you're going to get yeah. your fucking there's ass a chance That's You're going to get your head split <laughs> open with <laughs> a steel chair. <laughs> That's going to happen. Yeah. That was good internet. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Bro, what, what X did to that video, too. Yeah. I saw that video... 
<laughs> 7,000 times yesterday. Mm -hmm. Edited, remixed. Oh, yeah. Just, I was just waiting, okay? I get it. I've seen this a bunch of times. Give me the one with fucking Jim Ross over the top. <laughs> sure enough, about five minutes later, there it was. Was it the chair shot or which one was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, about, don't hit her with that chair. How about when the old white who hates this show mm -hmm. is actually the avatar of all the tweets about <laughs> me being the reason <laughs> yep. why everything's going to... Him trying to sneak attack, buddy... Oh, and then Cuz catching him last second, and yep. boom, and then oh, it was on. He's the one that ends up getting the chair shot. Oh yeah, yeah. yep, yeah. yeah. All right, let's oh. get to a break. AJ Hawk will be on the other side. Did you just see it? Yep. Him trying to cheap shot the guy? No, the chair shot. Yeah. So yeah. right before chair that, shot. Mm -hmm. he thinks he's gonna clean somebody up, like full cheap shot. You see him get excited, his yep. body, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, last second, uh -uh. Boom. Boom! Yeah. What a time. So good. All right, AJ Hawk will be on the other side. Uh, we'll also take some phone calls. 1 3632 3663. 1 Can't wait to chat with you. Also, a lot to talk about. Jared Goff is phenomenal. Right Man. Falling. SummerSlam was huge. Yep. Messi's absurd. Mm -hmm. Judon's rich again. Here we go. The Penguins are winning the Hell yeah. Lord Stanley Cup next year. Be a friend, Whoa. tell a friend something nice. Take five. Five. Joining us now is a man who might be the largest celebrity in the history of Earth. And I'm not just talking about his size. Obviously, everybody does that. But could you imagine a time when this man walks in public that a bunch of motherfuckers don't say, holy shit, that's Shaquille O'Neal? Mm. That has been his life for probably the last 30, 35 years. He's handled it perfectly. This man is a mastermind whenever it comes to business. Obviously, on the court, he's the most dominant player of all time in the history of basketball. Four-time champion of the world, Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah! Hello, is Pac-Man there? Hell yeah. <laughs> What's up? Pac-Man, you know the uh, statue of uh, limitations is up. I can tell the story now. Can I tell it? Yeah, you can tell the story now. Hell yeah, Shaq. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Pac. This is great news. Okay, so remember when uh, Pac-Man had that altercation in the uh, airport? <laughs> He was really sticking up for me. Pat, I just want to say thank you for always being my bodyguard. And you whooped that dude ass because he was disrespecting me. And nobody knows this story, but I, I appreciate you very much. I appreciate you. you. I, I, I've been keeping this secret. I ain't want everybody to know our business. Yeah, Hold on, this is Atlanta Airport chicken in hand. Motherfucker, that fight that we Popeyes. both... Popeyes, yes. That, yes. That was the stick up for Shaq? Yes. Yes. What do you say, Shaq? Guy said something to you? What happened? I don't know, Pat, man. Just say, hey, man, you don't talk to Shaq like that. And I just had to get on my plane. And the next thing I know, Pac Man put them paws on me. <laughs> <laughs> You've sold printers, what? pizza, what? Icy Hot, what? insurance with a cartoon. Yep. What? yep. I mean, you're you have a prolific Rolodex of business. When did you know that was going to be the case? Because it's inspiring to all of us. I want to let you know that. I didn't hear what you say. Could you repeat all the all the stuff that I sell for? <laughs> I think there's like 10 more, too. I don't think I listed off all of them. No, no, just uh, go ahead one more time. I think it was printers. What? what? Pizza. What? I think there's insurance with a cartoon. What? <laughs> <laughs> now there's Novex Biotech GF9. You are a business savant, though. The shoes, obviously, we've all heard all the stories of, oh, your shoes are too expensive, then you buy in the company and say, fuck it, we're going short. When was that, like, a focus for you, and how did you know that was a gift? 18 years old, I meet Magic Johnson, and he tells me, it's okay to be famous, but at some point, you want to start learning about business. First thing I bought was the dummy's guide to starting your own business. It intrigued me a little bit, and I said to myself, okay, I want to I be the only big man that's doing that. But in order to you know, be, be successful in that world, I had to be successful in the other world. So I really had to dominate and really had to win. Are you a supermodel? Because you have the sexiest <laughs> jaw. Like Hell yeah. That's real, Shaq. He, he, he's on his GF9, but the other stuff, I think. <laughs> you had a quote uh, you said in an interview years ago. You said, like, my thought process begins where normal humans apexes. And I just want to say, did you come up with that on the spot? Do you still say it? Because I actually steal it and use it in real life still sometimes. I always give you credit, though. Atta baby, Andrew. Another confession is I wasn't really born. I was found on the train. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think I'm an alien. And a lot of times these thoughts just come to me. I'll just go outside and these thoughts just come to me. I realized that in order to be the best or to be perceived as the best, you have to have forward thinking. So I just, you know, growing up in a drill sergeant environment, my dad wasn't satisfied with good enough. We had to be damn near perfect. So whenever I score 
30 points and, you know, somebody said, oh, he had a dominant game. I said, no, you missed 12 free throws. You should have 42 points. You should have did this. You should have did that. I was always trying to, you know, better myself. When did you that, know Kobe that, was yeah. a dude? Was it like immediately upon seeing him? You're like, oh, this is a guy? Right away. I knew that uh, he wanted to be great. I knew that he was very passionate about the game. And I knew that if something was done he didn't like, he would voice his opinion. Kind of reminds me of Pac-Man. Pac-Man and I have the same relationship. We haven't always seen eye to eye, but the respect is there. Like, hey, Pac-Man, you shouldn't do that. Motherfucker, don't call me that. You're right. So, you know, Pac Pac-Man is my little brother. I'm his older brother. You know, I think the respect factor is way more important than the I like you, I love you factor. You know, we've had many conversations. I love Pac-Man. He loves me. And I love Kobe. You know, we had a lot of disagreements, but if I had it all over to do again, I'd probably do it the same way because he pushed me and I pushed him and, and the respect was there. You know, people always say, oh, well, you didn't like each other. We didn't like each other. If you go back to the first championship, 15,000 people in the arena, about 100 people on the floor. I put my hand up. Who's the first person jumping my arm? Look at it. Look it up. You don't have to be all lovey-dovey all the time. You just have to have, have, you know, have respect. Your last question here is you get back to your rehab. Connor has it for you. Yeah, Shaq, speaking of that, a lot of times... No, no, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the dude in the fucking cowboy hat. He ain't such a dog. <laughs> Tone Diggs. He, he has a gambling yeah, yeah. show every day he's preparing for right now. Tone loves you, too. Shaq, I appreciate uh -huh. that. You guys are on the set, we just talked about the show. You ever say anything just to see if you get Ernie off of his game? I don't like that question. Back to the other guy. Uh, cool. Connor is uh, this awesome. guy in the uh, other hat. Awesome. No, I, actually, I, actually, you know what? You guys may think Charles and I are the funniest. Ernie Johnson is the funniest guy on the set. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Monday, August 7th, 2023. Hour two of the sports program starts right now. Football! It's happening. Training camps are open everywhere. College football looks a little bit different than it did last Wednesday, and there is a lot to chat about. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor, at Boston Connor's Mullet, at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And joining us live from an attic in Ohio is a father of 10, a COVID survivor, a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, and a man that is so good at his job. Mm. He wins so many awards. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hall. Yeah. Oh, 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 what happened? walk what in happened? the barbershop, give me the A.J. Hawk, hey. please, Who's that you model? look good, bud, jeez, you're glowing, Whoa. oh my god, yep. okay, what's up, how's it going, you keep fucking around, Tom Brady's gonna be trying to date you, yeah. that's yeah. right, you look yeah. like a supermodel right now, bro, why, what's he doing, is Tom, Tom bouncing around with other gals, uh, supermodels only, cuz, he's the greatest of all time, is yeah. what he says, but like, you are starting to look like it, you, have you seen yourself today? Wow. I'm Whoa. just seeing myself for the first time, but I mean, honestly, hey, I didn't think Foxy had it in and put up Rapino up there when you were talking about the U.S. <laughs> Dude, how bold. <laughs> bold. She Dude, was smiling. Foxy's I thought she usually, made it. He's the voice of reason, usually. He's like yeah. the control. Is he? Know? I don't like know if that's the case. Uh, Not after hanging out with his booze bag dad this weekend. <laughs> that's true. He did go back to Michigan, yeah. celebrated the five year old booze with his dad. There could have changed a little bit. Dad, yeah. good guy, family, good people. But yeah, I, I didn't expect what he did there either. No. Mm -hmm. I was just as surprised as everybody else actually had a. <laughs> yeah. Holy hell, Fox. Oh, so you were looking for this. Not. Yeah. Obviously. Not this. Bingo. Okay. Yeah, that's on me. That'll happen. It's funny and, that your brain did that, though. Hey, Alexi Lawless. He's getting it on the shins. And I assume we're going to, too. And that's why we all had to make it very clear. Hey, that was a kid from Michigan State. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's a kid rock guy. Wasn't it? That's that right. was me. It was Michigan State that did that. Yep. You know what I mean? No. Uh, what did Alexi say? So he basically just said, like, when you start taking political stances and then it doesn't go well, like, there's going to be blowback. Like, once you get into politics world, there's a lot of people that are going to hate you immediately. Yeah. Like, that's just what the politics world is. Megan had to know that. So then whenever she misses, like, if that's, um, if that's LeBron, okay? Yeah. If that's LeBron James, which is what Megan Rapino is, two World Cups. Mm -hmm. You know, she's going to be a conversation about one of the greatest women's soccer players of all time, everything like that. So if that was LeBron... And LeBron misses a free throw shooting shootout, okay? Yeah. And they end up losing. 
LeBron is getting cooked. Killed. Killed by everybody. Everybody. Just absolutely slaughtered. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying, you know, it wouldn't be well warranted, but it would be ruthless. Loud. Yes. So we kind of saw a similar thing happening with Megan Rapinoe whenever this U.S. Women's National Team World Cup kind of kind of kicked off. And then all of a sudden it doesn't go well. And in her first couple minutes, she misses like two sitters when she gets subbed in. And everybody's like, oh, oh, mm. oh, oh. Right. And then for it to end that way, the people that don't like Rapino, they must have woke up and just splurged all over the place. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> that, that, that had to be dream Well, she bailed true. out. Didn't they have two or three girls miss PKs? So, like, she bailed them out, basically. We're not talking about them. Well, that's the thing, though. Like, we are the... Uh, the other side. There was yeah some, the the yeah okay I got gotcha. you. There was some you know like Alexi Lawless was one of the only one. Carly Lloyd was one of the only ones. Everybody before the game though. Before that game, Carly came out right and was talking about it. First game or, yeah. or the second no, game. Second game yeah. Yeah. after the tie when Group they got player. in, she was not happy. I'm by sick of it, Carly yeah, Lloyd. Dancing, taking pictures. Yeah, we didn't win anything. What are we talking? About? <laughs> we just got the round of 16. No shit. Carly's like, if we lose the next game, it'll be the earliest exit. Yeah, that's what she was thinking yes. in her head there. But everybody else, you know, because Megan Rapino has accomplished a lot in the women's soccer world. Right now, granted, she didn't mention any of those things whenever she was asked what her most favorite or whatever accomplished feat, fulfilling feat, and she just said equal pay as opposed to like. Okay, being one of the greatest U.S. women's soccer team players of all time, mm -hmm. two World Cups, girls around the country are looking up to our team, still wanting to do this and everything like that. She said equal pay, so that's how she views herself. She's a political activist. Like, that is literally who she is. So whenever things go wrong in the sports world, you get cooked. And whenever you're in a political world, you're going to get cooked. So that's two things kind of going to kind of cook you. So for Foxy to just bury her, yeah, yeah. Wow. that was kind of crazy. crazy. I mean, unexpected but expected, I guess, in the same See, yeah, I didn't even thing. know about all that. I just knew she's the leader of the team, and she missed her kick, so that's who has to take sure. the blame. When you're the leader, sure. you got to take the blame. Are you talking about sports? Yeah, sports, not politics well, here. Well, that's not what we're talking about. Well, we're kind of talking about the intersection of both, which mm -hmm. has been happening way too much, I think, in a lot of people's lives. Sports politics. A couple right. years. Now, that is something that I appreciate, though, like when people take a stand and want to make a change and everything like that. So... Hopefully, time will heal all wounds. Mm -hmm. In 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we'll talk about Megan Rapino being two-time World Cup champion for the United States of America, and everybody will be able to give her her flowers. Yes. Because yeah. right now, it ain't like that. No. It's going to take some no. time. It's going to take some time. It'll major. come around. I can't believe that. Like, I, I didn't think they could be knocked out this quickly. I thought, okay, we still got some time. They can go advance still somehow. Yeah, somehow. yeah. People hadn't even start paying attention. No. Yeah. Like, hey, we're not even there yet. Like, we're like, not. This, even... this isn't technically the World Cup. This is just all the qualifying stuff for it. No, no, <laughs> no, no. This is the World Honestly, Cup, this, my friend. This is the World Cup. <laughs> this is the actual World Cup. Yeah. Yes. This is the tournament. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I apologize. You're a part I've of the been, problem. Wow. wow. You are the problem. You know you Look at this meeting. I mean, he started this. Is this the World Cup? Jesus. We're just talking about the earliest exit. Out of the World Cup. No, Ever. Just yeah, this, ain't, this ain't the... I didn't even know we well, were... Well, he said, how about Rapogno, Mr. How about Rapogno, Mr. Rapino, yeah. yeah. No. It's Rapino. <laughs> you chauvinistic pig. Wow. Jeez. Okay. okay. Has it like, has anything to do with, with, with their male or female team? Because the male team... Was it last year? A couple years ago, they got knocked out earlier than they ever had, right? We didn't no. even make the we didn't make it. It was two. That's ago. what I'm saying. I uh, thought that's where we were with that the was female. Cutter. Yeah, remember we yeah, were Cutter. Yeah, Cutter. We were gonna win. Yeah, right. We lost in the first. The round. one before that, we weren't. But I will say this: just as we wrap up the soccer, and if you want to call Gumpy real quick to help us out with this, as we wrap up the soccer from an international standpoint here. Yeah. This men's team, they got an English kid that said, I want to play in America. After they're scoring, a lot of this with the uh, USA. Oh, yeah, kissing it. A lot of USA. Ooh, yep. yeah, a lot they, of like. They okay. It. Yeah, that's what I, I think smart. that is smart. I think that is what people would hope for with the United States of America team that is representing our country that is out there, you know, like should at least potentially act like you like what you're playing, who you're playing, how you're playing for, you sure. know. Uh, that men's team, I think, is going to be much more popular going forward, and that's good for all parties because the equal pay thing. Yeah. That's right. Uh, the equal pay thing that Megan yep. Rapino did make happen, they all kind of split the money. Everybody in the men's team and the women's team made 300000 bucks at the end of the day for their World Cup appearances. Awesome. I think the men's team brought in $10, 13, 13 million. Okay. The women's team brought in 3 point something million. That's TV rights deals, I'd assume. 
Is that right, what that yeah, is? It has to be. And merch and stuff like that? Yeah. And then they combine that, and then it is split equally amongst all the men's team and all the women's team that were on the World Cup rosters. So we'll see how that ends up balancing out going forward. Who goes where? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. now we're seeing, you know, like Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Livy Dunn. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of younger female athletes that are generating a lot of capital right now. Mm. A lot of eyes, a lot of partnerships, a lot of advertising, needle moving stuff. I think as it continues to go, it's not even get crazy about my daughter. Okay. She's going to be on that team in about 16 years. Oh, yeah. Okay, four World Cups from now. Phil's daughter is going to carry the U.S. Women's National Team here in about three World Cups. Then Kenzie's coming in at the age of 17. She's going to carry a couple. And then, obviously, Mitt's little sister, Quincy, is going to be right. here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's we got a whole team ready to go. But I will be excited to see how that number changes because you would assume that the men's team that brought in $13 million and the women's team that brought in three – and then them being put into one pile, there's going to be some disgruntled people. But we don't know what the future looks like in any form or fashion. What we do know is that the United States of America is home to the greatest player on earth. That's right. Yeah. We do know that soccer is something people talk about. Yeah. And it's not because of the World Cup. No, no. Nope. It's because the guy that won the World Cup last year mm-hmm. right. has taken over the MLS so quickly, so fantastically. Yeah. And I have no idea what his share of Apple signups are for the MLS, but it's got to be fucking huge because I'm tuning in as soon as I see his little pink shirt at wearing ass yeah. jog on a field. Last night he had two goals, one of them being a free kick with four minutes left in the game tied up to send it to penalties, and then he scores, obviously, a penalty <laughs> kick to win the whole thing. He's phenomenal. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, our footy expert, Bubba Gumpino. Yeah, Gumpy, is this just going to be forever? Is this what this guy does? This is fantastic. <laughs> Dude, he's a fucking goat, man. Everyone's like, it's rigged. Rig it all you want. Nobody's putting that free kick top bins, dude. That was absurd. Well, we watched some people from about 12 yards out, you know, the other day in the World Cup. Yep. They weren't able to put stuff in a bucket that's Mm -hmm. about this big, Mm -hmm. like old Methy is able to do from 24 yards away, 25 yards away, seemingly at will, at ease. This is how he's been everywhere. And when does he sign to become a United States citizen <laughs> exactly. so that he can play for the United States of America in the World Cup? Need it. People are going back. He wasn't happy at PSG. People are, like, finding old pictures. I clipped it last night. There's literally after they win the shootout, he's just grinning like the butcher's dog running down the field. He didn't have that happiness at PSG. Like, he's got his old lads from Barca with him there, too. Like, He seems really fucking happy in Miami, dude. I think so, too. It seems like it's all working out. They were in last place, right, in the MLS. Now he joins the team. League's Cup is over. Now we're getting back into the rankings and standings. How quickly can they move, and why are they still underdogs in these games? So the League's Cup still goes till I'm not sure how much longer, but they have 12 games left, two in hand. And they have two games on turf in Atlanta and Charlotte, last game of the season. So he won't play on the turf, but they should win every other game. They should be able to make up the 12 points. And then if they get in, I mean, if they're in, they're like bad. What's their, what's their, they're like plus 3,100 or 1,300? What was it to win? 1,200. 1,200. They're absolutely, they're going to get in. How would they not? They just got to find a way to get in, man. It's just that 12, making up for that 12 points. Come on, Gump. Let's get real, Gump. Well, they need. It. They have to get in. If if Methy is not in, whatever these playoffs may be, nobody's watching. No, no, chance. it has to happen, Goop. You know that. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So not only does he have to get in, like they're obviously going to win it all, right? This is how this goes. He's just going to win it. He's good enough alongside Busquets and Joseph Martinez and, and I, Paul Taylor. Taylor. But yeah. Robert Taylor, who's Robert nice. Taylor's been good. Jordy Alba at the back. Now you know who I think they're going to get, and it won't happen this year. They'll get Sergio Ramos, who's out of contract right now. I think he'll be their center back probably next year. I don't think they'll have time to bring him in this year, but he would be a huge difference for them at the back. Them being plus 1,200 to win the MLS seems like, right? Doesn't that seem like? He was plus 400 last night to score two goals. I got greedy and bet him for a hat trick, so I lost that one. (laughs) Close, though. Penalties. Two goals goals every game is a fucking, like, the best bet going, dude. It's absurd. They were cooked. It was over with, like, ten minutes left. He scores eight minutes in to game one, (laughs) seven minutes in to game two, six minutes in to game three. So he's got to keep going here. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> if he doesn't score Jeez. in five minutes, this guy has gotten stale. Falling yeah. off. This yep. guy has maybe got too comfortable uh -huh. in the MLS. And is the league ever going to be able to stop this dude, Gump, or uh, the MLS just sucks? Yeah, like. <laughs> uh, the sees when he plays like the top team, like Cincinnati's a top team, Columbus, Nashville, New like, England, Cincy. Unless they England make him play on team. his hands and knees, he's not. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's so I, much better than everyone else on the field. It's laughable. You it don't really, know soccer. I don't, but I love watching it, and I won't watch it if he's not. The playing. best part is the best part is all the Ronaldo marks who were all upset about it. Because not, not, nobody's covering him scoring goal, goals in Saudi. It's like, yeah, no shit, dude. Yeah, it's like fucking America, dude. Covered for Bro, sure, right? Saudi got it wrong. Yes, they, they did. did. You needed Methy. Needed mm -hmm. Methy. MLF got it right. Uh -huh. They did. Yeah. We'll sign Methy, a couple guys from Bartha. Then we'll be able to do our thing down there with Beckham looking super cool. Yeah. yeah. In his suits with his sweet tats all the time. Yep. They got it figured out. And Apple did too. You know, Apple's offering. The Pac-12 shit because the Apple's seen success here with the affiliate link. You know, the MLS did this. It's great. Like, Messi just puts up an IG story. Have Oregon put up an yeah, IG yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just have it go in there. It's like, Messi's got, what, 49 million followers? 490. Yeah, a little bit different. 490 million followers. And he is electrifying every single fucking time. How does he have the mental toughness to be awesome all the time? I don't get it. The game just slows down for him, it feels like. Like, it's just, everything just comes to him, man. It's unbelievable. Like you said, he's just fucking walking around. He just, everyone's like, how's he so open? It's like, man, he just fucking reads the game and slides in. Like, that's that's part of his greatness, dude. It's not that fucking nobody can find him. Yeah, it's not that he can jump 55 inches like Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. or super handsome, which he is, by the way. He's been taking his shirt off oh, a little yeah. bit. Oh, yeah. You know, after the that's game, Miami. A lot of let, job. Letting people know, like, Beckham's like, hey, why don't you take that, you know? The show. Mm -hmm. Let's fucking move some well, jerseys. This is America. Also, Sex no disrespect to the MLS, but they basically, it's like me and Connor out there, like, hey, you got Mark Messi today. All right. We need, we need, you, we need you to fuck him. <laughs> Shut That's him out. That's not real. Shut him out. Jesus That's not Christ, real. Dude. They're trying to mark this guy. It, well, well, that, trying. that's yeah. the other thing with Methy is that he didn't just come over here like I don't have to train. He trained the hardest he's ever trained before to play in the MLF, and we're seeing why he is the goat because he takes his game to the next level. And he had to do that with the MLF, and, and he knows he that the him. MLS was going to be tough. Yeah. Bingo. And he just yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. He knew that this was going to be a real challenge for him. Yeah. yeah. Other leagues, he's scoring four or five goals a game. He put Messi and Thaudi. They'll, they'd have to chop his head off if he wanted to stop scoring goals. All right. Oh, Jesus. That's the end of soccer talk. <laughs> That's what they'd have to do. I, That's I, the end of it. I should say, we should really kind of temper the you know enthusiasm for that. We'll see what he does when he goes up to Seattle and plays the Sounders. That'll be like the yeah. Do they have well, turf? Well, he won't play in Seattle because oh. of the turf. See? So there's the litmus test. Uh -oh. Best team in the league, best franchise in the history uh, of the Seattle league. can make the trip down to Miami and see him on, yeah. that, do on that pitch. They'll do it. There. They'll do it. He's awesome, Gumpy. Congrats to soccer for figuring that out. Um, Women's, who's going to win the Women's World Cup? Uh, England beat Nigeria today. I think England wins it, although uh, Dutch is a bit of a dark horse, I think. I think they knock off Spain in the round of 16 as a big underdog. You're the man. See you soon, ladies and gentlemen. Gumpy. Hey, Paul. AJ, you seem to be a little bit concerned that Methy might miss the playoffs. Hmm. No, no, there's no chance he's missing the playoffs. There are Zero lives. chance that they miss the playoffs. I don't care what place they're in. You think they'll do I don't know anything NBA? about I know nothing about it. You if think he misses the playoffs, it's an absolute travesty. They would not let that happen. <laughs> they'll do what the NBA did where they're like, all right, actually, we'll have teams Four more. 13 and 14 play against 15 and 16. Yep. Yeah. And then if you got to lose two, but if you win, you've earned your way, right? Mm -hmm. Zion has earned his way, yeah. right? There's no right? way. Think about it. Do you think there's any way they miss the playoffs? No. No, dude. Did you Have you watched okay. this guy fucking play? That's what I'm saying. Like, even if you're not trying to pay attention to any of it, you still it still pops up to you. It still pops up in your feed like, oh. Methy, there he goes. Another three yeah. goals or whatever he's doing. And this is one of those things where it feels like in sports, we hype everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always. Right? Mm -hmm. Like everything gets hyped so much. And then sometimes in those moments, very few and far between, the people show up. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. Methy got hyped so loud. Yes. I mean, let alone worldwide, wins the World Cup. and his They sold out an arena, right? Just to introduce him. Yeah. Didn't they? Stadium. Fucking stadium. Yeah. yeah. They sell that out. This guy's at PSG, they did the same thing. Didn't work out. Here they do it, sell out the whole stadium. They yep. fill up. They do a welcome party. He waves. He's at the Publix. He's doing the whole thing. Mm. MLS is kind of – they're basically hemorrhaging their entire league yeah. on this guy's yep. shoulders. Yep. 
Apple's deal with MLS is kind of hemorrhaging the entire mm -hmm. thing on this guy's shoulders. The entire league, Adidas in the MLS, yep. whole thing with this. And then he just shows up and is like, yeah, they made the right decision. Yeah, Everybody smart. made the right decision. Now, I, I don't know if he speaks English. Does he not? Does he speak English? I need to figure that one out. I think he so. does. Broken, yeah, I he's think. He's broken. But yeah. uh, translator, right? Yeah, I mean. Come on. I haven't seen a post game. He's ha he has to by now, right? I figure probably here and there, but I don't know if he's fluent enough to like actually, you know, or be confident enough to to give an interview and speak English the whole time. Him and LeBron. Zeno just looked up and said it, it, the internet says he does not speak English, so I assume that means he has a translator. What he is behind the scenes, who knows how good his English is? But if he gets that done, yeah, the MLS becomes real deal. Oh yeah, next well, level. And, and I, not that he need, like, I'm just talking about. From a marketing standpoint of him yeah. being here, this has got to be the the longest time that he will spend in America. So I would assume he definitely will want to pick it up. I hope so too. You see his place down in Miami. <sighs> mm -mm. Sweet is he on like that Star nice. Island or whatever? Uh, yeah, I do believe Billionaire Island or whatever. His place mm -hmm. got a, uh, you know, he's got a car. Uh, he's got an elevator thing. Yeah, for his car up to his penthouse. You see cool. Aaron's new house over there in Jersey? Have you seen that? Looks Man, pretty sweet, huh? A lot of wind does. That's going to get real oh, hot when the sun's out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Real hot. I'm sure he's. I know he's going to be worried about that air conditioning, Bill. You're right. You better get some good blinds. Yeah, dude, he's going to have to regulate that sun coming in there. I, I didn't see one drywall wall out there. No, no shade. He's, li he's living in a glass house, which is dangerous. This, he's been living <laughs> in a glass house though. <laughs> That's right. His entire life, it's almost like a fishbowl he moved uh -huh. into. Because mm -hmm. maybe this is a symbolic purchase. Oh. Could be. This is him moving into the fishbowl, <laughs> saying this is what my life has been. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about me in the darkness. I'm most comfortable in the fishbowl. Mm -hmm. All eyes on me. And I've seen with some of those windows, because the way they have the, the light to turn on, it does act like it's a magnifying glass yeah. almost. Mm -hmm. So people are looking at his every single move when he's in there. Yep. Whether he's wiping his butt, not wiping his butt, they're going to see it. I'm happy that he moved in there. With everything he's been saying and doing now, not that he won't be able to sell that house for $12 million. He just bought it for $9.5 million, probably in two years somehow. Yeah, like that's just seemingly how or it just works. Hold on to it so he can have a house to go to in 20 years when he comes to town. Yeah, just like the raw. Yeah, I think land. I still got. The, I think I still got that place out there. I'm gonna go check it out. Hey, let's have an event at. Uh, I think I got that. Uh, remember that glass house? Yeah, yeah. Put it in there. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. Got that raw land down in Nashville. You guys want to go paintball? And <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. But anyways, he buys that house, and then he's also talking about playing numerous years. He's happy as fuck. He threw a pick to Sauce Gardner this weekend, but at the same note, I assume he threw a couple touchdowns as well and called one for Zach Wilson in that Hall of Fame game. And we have that clip right now. It's actually pretty sweet. I think he actually drops into Zach Wilson's ear and tells him exactly what to do on the play, and then it, it happens exactly how yeah. he kind of said it to Zach Wilson. Great call by Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he called that one. Oh, I had to give him a little shout out there. I'm ready. To, I'm ready for a bomb. Throw it up to Malik. Touchdown. I think that's in his. He pressed the button. You saw Aaron press the button first to throw it to Malik. Yeah. Right in front of him, too. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Awesome. I knew it. Hey, hey, what I tell you. Look how fucking happy he is. That's a Hall of Fame game, dude. Hey, hey. Look how pumped he is. Shoot pumped right uh -huh. there. Yeah. Hard Knocks tomorrow is going to be awesome. Yes. I think Hard Knocks is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to get a look from, like, what's happening behind closed doors. Because outside looking in looks like a match made in heaven. Aaron Rodgers is in this New York Jets team. Is that what you're hearing? And how do you feel about it all? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Uh, I think Sala is going to be great on there as well. I would assume we'll see a lot of – don't you think Sala probably sat him down and was trying to, like, de-recruit everybody because everything, everything is so positive and everyone – Thinks they're going to win the Super Bowl, so he probably comes in and is like, "Hey guys, we haven't we haven't won one game yet this year. We got to put in the work and all that stuff." What are you hearing from Aaron? Seems pretty happy, man. Seems very happy with his place and everything. See, are you happy because you win, or do you win? That's a good question. Because you're happy. Ooh. You know that's a question. Yeah, find out. But whenever you're happy, you're probably a little bit more dialed in. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know when you're when you're well, work, working for yeah. people and with people that you enjoy and you feel appreciated in fulfillment. You're probably going to dive in a little bit more into certain things. Relationships, networking, film, Why? practice, details. Literally everything kind of comes with it. We had Shane Steichen in here, and he said, whenever we do the combine interviews, you know, Chris Ballard does his thing with GMs. All I want to know is, does this guy love ball? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, hey, if you, love, if you love ball, everything else kind of falls in place. Meetings, film, training, recovery, rehab, everything falls into place if you love what you're doing. So that's all Shane Steichen wants to know. And I found that pretty interesting because it's real. 
Whenever you're enjoying what you're doing, you're going to invest more time in what you're enjoying just naturally. So that whole refreshed, re-energized thing that we're seeing, I think that's a real, a real benefit for Aaron Rodgers and for the New York Jets. And on the flip side, I think the Packers are still going to be good. So do I. The internet doesn't, though. No. no. I didn't know really? that. Did you, did you know that, AJ? Why are they saying Jordan Love's not going to be the guy or Bingo. what? People are coming after Ty because Whoa. Ty said that I saw that nice little nice little bullet he threw in the in the family night scrimmage that Ty posted. Dark. Bro, threw two players too, finding a passing window that won't get deflected and being able to yeah. get to Aaron Jones. I mean, that's like a beautiful that looked like, you know, who that looked like nice Aaron. Ball. It yeah, looked, it looked yeah. turned his body and everything like a tough throw and threw a laser right there. It was good. Yeah, so Ty says, like, I've come around that the Packers are going to win the North again and did a whole speech. And oh. I saw, like, Packers fans and everybody being like, not this year. Yeah. Not this year. Why? Yeah. Why? I didn't know that. Why is that? I, I don't know. I mean, I think part of it is, like, all the hype that the Lions are getting, and rightfully so. Like, they are good. I mean, they're kind of reaching, you know, like, their apex, you know, of, like, how bad they were last year. And then they go on that big winning streak. They beat the Packers to keep them out of their play. Playoffs, but it's the same thing. It's like you can either watch all these clips from training camp, regardless of who your team is, and you can either be super pessimistic and be like, oh, they're going to fucking suck this year, or you can just take it in stride and be like, you you can watch any of these clips in Jordan of Jordan Love and realize like he has come a long way since they first drafted him. Like there's no two ways about it. He's picked up a bunch of shit from Rodgers. He's way more comfortable in their offense. And, like, yeah, there's still going to be growing pains. It's not like I'm out here saying, hey, the Packers are going to win 14 games this year. Like, they're still – yeah, they're not going to be as good as they were with Rodgers. Like, so, so, to that point about us reading and reacting to these training camp practices, which is all we have, mm -hmm. there was a piece this morning I was watching on uh, Get Up. It was uh, – I think Lamar Jackson's thrown seven picks in nine practices. Mm -hmm. saw that. I think Jimmy G threw four picks this weekend in a practice. Baker. I think Baker Mayfield, maybe well, he was the seven and nine. Sense. I forget. Whatever. They were talking about all these picks that are being thrown by these quarterbacks. Now, that's first year in all these offenses. Yeah. So they have no idea where things are going to be or what things are going to go. And normally the first couple of weeks of training camp, easier for the defense because see ball, get ball, as opposed to having be at the exact same point at the exact same time. We shouldn't be reading too much into this. And on the flip side, how do you feel about Jordan Love? I, honestly, I feel pretty good about Jordan Love. I, I called one of his games in college, and that dude could slang it. He really could. But I think like Ty said, he does look way more comfortable now when I just watch clips of him or just even watching him interact with his teammates. He seems to have grown a lot and be a lot more comfortable now. So, I mean, we'll see what they do as a team. I would definitely not, good or bad, I don't take a whole lot into all these clips that come out. Like, you, we see unbelievable catches being made that are crazy freak catches. It's awesome. You see, like, the one-on-ones a lot. They try to tell you who won in the one-on-ones between the O-linemen and, like, the outside rushers. I don't put too much into that, but it's never a bad thing if your team has a lot of good plays out there or your your favorite team or your favorite players has a lot of highlights out in camp, I'm like, it's not a bad thing. It never will be. Oh. No, just expectations get lifted a little bit more than what they are. Like, for instance, Anthony Richardson. Yeah. Of course. He's 255. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, still growing. That's awesome. I don't want to tackle that dude ever. That's the same size as feared running back Derrick Henry. No, it's bigger. <laughs> Than Derrick Henry. If you're going to read these incredible tweets, <laughs> read them. Yeah. Okay? I don't. Can't read them. I can't. I won't. I just read the You guys the are quotes. old guys yelling at clouds right now. No, 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 no. no I would have said that. I'm sick and tired of the fucking putting reportedly in there eight <laughs> times. Like, this guy's talking. These All of these guys are talking to every single sounds like scout. You're a little, sounds like you're a little. No. Yeah, no. you're a little envious no. of Whoa. ML football. Not at all. Because NFL rookie watch. I put one of JBA these out. JBA football. Yeah, mm. wide, 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 wide. <laughs> all of them, all the same person. I put one of these out <laughs> this morning uh, at, in the exact format. And guess what? No one, no one knew what I was doing. So it's very, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. You can reportedly see Did everything. people get mad at you for doing it? Uh, yeah, I just, I mean, a, a lot of people who do, who didn't get the joke, you know, but but that's fine. Oh, they didn't get the but joke. I'm, I hope I, that dude found his wallet. No, he's done. ML football is Ooh. currently in Israel without his wallet. Yeah. Oh, so he's never coming back. No. Okay. No, we think he'll be okay. He, ML football. He, <laughs> yeah, he, he, oh, yeah. ML football will figure it out. But with that being said, the boys have kind of turned their – Toxic negativity towards a certain style of reporting these days. NFL Rookie Watch, I think this is a great 
This is a great write-up. <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. What are, we, what, are we, what are we upset about? Bingo. Thank you, AJ. You and I are what we like to call not haters. Okay? These boys <laughs> yep. well, certainly are. Exactly we're not jaded, not, we're not we're jaded like they are. Yeah. You are to cry on crying. Yeah, we're not yeah. jaded at all. People, we are crying at them. Yeah, yeah, people are saying these are the four horsemen of the Twitter <laughs> NFL apocalypse. Did you see that? That's apocalypse what, is a good thing? No, no. No, no, no. Bad thing. That's what they're saying. <laughs> That's what they are saying. They said ML football, JPA football, NFL rookie watch, and one other guy, Dove Kleiman, are the four. Jeez. That is just a tweet that has been seen. I, I'm not also in it. I think he's also in Israel. Really? I think. What's going on over there? They're the probably location? getting sources. Big I mean, that's what these oh, boys are doing. Or yeah. girls, we appreciate them. Their source is in Lebanon. Come again? You, you'll, you'll, you'll get there. Was that like a... Uh... <laughs> that was an Epstein, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Really? Okay. That's from a that's from a blurry video yeah. uh -huh. yeah. that was on the internet three weeks ago. And it was him. And it was him. And then I heard Israel and I, it sent me right back into there. Well, Epstein's <laughs> allegedly a spy. Yeah. Remember, yeah. that's what that one documentary I don't know if that was said. an Iron Dome joke or. Interesting. Let's, anyways, thank you to NFL Rookie Watch for pointing this out. But this dude, everything coming out of camp is great. Everything, in his nose, you see there, he had a nasal septum. Oh, deviated yeah. septum. Deviated septum so surgery. He, drilled out. He, he must have got it drilled out. Yeah, that's painful. Did it, I think he missed one practice, and then he was right back out with the ones Dog. the next day or whatever. Jeez. Like, everything coming out of camp is how incredible he is. And I would just like to let everybody know I'm buying all the hype. Mm -hmm. All of it. Yeah. Seeing him live was awesome. And I think whenever people get to see him, you know, when Cam Newton came into the league, we all had uh, similar thoughts. You know, Cam Newton... Uh, in college, it was able to work, but will he be able to do what he? I mean, that's just an unbelievable play, throw, and catch. Yep. Unbelievable catch, Crazy. too. Yeah. Alec Pierce, yeah, out of Cincinnati, who kind of quiet last year, got injured a little bit. They say if it's in his area, the motherfucker's catching it. Like, that's what he's kind of known for around the building. It's like there's a lot of hype coming out of the Colts' practices. Now, first year offense, so there's going to be days that he struggles in practice, but all the hype's coming out. I'm buying into it, AJ. You know what I mean? Like, I'm buying there's into hope. it. They have hope. I mean, at this, think of. Think like the last five, six, seven weeks of the season for the Indianapolis Colts last oh, year. There wasn't a whole lot of hope oh, going on. I don't want that. Now there's, hey. now there's plenty of hope, though, for real. I don't know about Jonathan Taylor, what the hope is there. Whoa. But I feel like as far He's as the quarterback gone. situation, we feel pretty good. Well, spaceships don't come equipped with rear view mirrors. They dip, okay? That's right. That's, we're not thinking about the last five, six games last year with Jeff Saturday's Ooh. coach. <laughs> no. Jeff Saturday had to come in there and try to change the culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was the one that said, hey, Wear your shin guards like your Stephon Diggs at Fashion Week. Yep. Go in there and let these people know, you know, you can't be late to treatment, to meetings, to practice. What? Boom, bang, a little accountability. And then Shane Steichen comes in with an offense and a, I think, accountability call with Anthony Richardson being alongside of him. I think we got a culture change. I'm pumped about it. But it is the time to be super pumped for your team to potentially go on and win it all. I was watching some stuff about – the Detroit Lions this year, and you mentioned them about the NFC North, about why people don't think the Packers could maybe win the North because there's so much hype around the Lions. The Lions being picked to play on opening day, okay, by the NFL, yeah. is like when sports books give an odds on something and none of us were like, whoa, sports books have a lot of respect oh, yeah. for this team. Mm -hmm. So it's not just hype, like sports books. Like the NFL has a lot of respect for the Detroit Lions. Big time. It's not just their fans. It's not just us hyping up how much everybody loves Dan Campbell, who has this added to his repertoire of quotes about the weight of the pressure of expectations. They're all coming. No, I don't feel weight. I feel wind underneath my freaking wings, man. <laughs> That's what I feel. Truthfully? Truthfully. It uplifts you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love this, man. This is outstanding. I love our fans. I love that, man, they feel it like we feel it. And uh, no, this is not a burden. This is not pressure. This is not weight. This is, man, this gives me inspiration is what it does for me and our guys. Some people are supposed to be coaches, you know? So whenever they say weight on your shoulders that you got to deliver for this first time ever or first time since when sellout season tickets? First time in Ford Field history. Ford Field was built in 2002. Okay, first time in 20-plus years. So it could be a lot longer. That, it, that it's yeah. a full yes. sellout, at least. And he's like, do you feel the pressure? The fans like wanting you to win? He's like, pressure, man. No, the other way, dude. Yeah. Wind underneath my wings, man. You know how they say, man, that like planes, mm -hmm. right? You need to wind on top and the wind on bottom get lift, man. These fucking Lions fans are lifting me, man. Yep. <laughs> it was a fucking tailwind, man. This isn't a headwind. No oh, way, man. faster going in the season, man. This is what we want, man. This is inspirational, man. What a fucking answer. First of all, yeah. and also the NFL is bought in 
on Dan Campbell yeah. for them to be good. And with these throws I'm seeing out of golf, uh-huh. did you see these two outs? Look out. Yeah, and I, I feel like the overwhelming – I feel like golf, obviously, this was on mm. throw and catch. Hold but on. The great, Different great play. There too. Not, not repeat. Different play. Mm. Boom. Just it's run that play ten times. In the spot. Every single drive. I mean, jeez. Go ahead, AJ. Sorry about that. Don't you think, like, golf, I feel like – I don't. I mean, I don't know him personally, but I feel like golf looks like he's much more confident. Mm-hmm. He had a great year last year. He played well, and the, the lines are on the map. And like, here we go. I think that's a great answer by Dan Campbell. It's true. Like, no, nah, I mean, they know. He he knows that his players see and hear everything, especially now. Players know what's going on. So yeah, like, don't try to run from it. Don't try to hide. And and it's a good thing. Hey, people think we they're taking us seriously now. That's a positive. That's a good thing. We should use that for our for ourselves. You earn this pressure. Is what people started describing pressure it started being the mindset like yeah you earn this type of pressure because of all your hard work all your success if you stunk and nothing happened you wouldn't be feeling this right now so this is a celebration as opposed to a burden Mm -hmm. i appreciate coach dan campbell former teammate of his uh and also absolute legend in our world ladies and gentlemen the general bob carpenter talk to me bob hey listen i want to let you know (laughs) I am so pumped to be chatting with you today. And also, I think we can make an announcement right now. Let's do it. (laughs) The general, Bob Carpenter, will be joining us every single week this college football season for the general's top five every single Wednesday. What? Yeah, we can't wait. Can't wait. (laughs) Can't wait for that. We appreciate you doing that. The boys are obviously saluting their general who saved Big Ten football. And that's kind of what we brought you in here to chat about is college football. And we do – hey, we appreciate you, Bob, for doing that. (laughs) Um, But – College football is looking a little bit different, it seems like, about a year from now. Transitions are happening all over the place. What are your thoughts on where the Big Ten sits currently, and where do you think everything ends up with college football, Bob? Man, it's wild. I mean, if you look at this, Pat, I don't think a year ago anybody would have anticipated getting here. And this seemed like it was going to be the year that was much more laid back. You know, we had U.S. or uh, Texas, we had Oklahoma two years ago, USC and UCLA, the announcement last year. In this season, like, all right, you know, maybe Buffalo or the Colorado Buffaloes are flirting with maybe going back to the Big 12, but that would potentially be it. Everybody acknowledge, hey, the Pac-12, they're probably going to slide off into the Pacific Ocean eventually. But, hey, you know what? It's going to be fine for this last year. And then, lo and behold, I go up to Canton this weekend, and the world falls apart. I'm trying to keep track of what's going on with college football, Oregon, Washington, hopping in the Big 10, the Arizona schools in Utah, they're jumping to the Big 12. Now you have four teams just sitting out there left on the West Coast trying to figure out where the heck they belong and who they fit with. And the problem is geography. I don't know if there's enough teams out there then that are big enough that would worthy like a a major style conference that would be equal to what the Pac-12 was. Got it, AJ. Bob, so ultimately, let's say five years from now, how many conferences do you think there are in college football? And, like, is there any chance, like, let's say the Big Ten, they're going to keep adding teams. Are they going to start booting teams, too? Can they kick people out? Well, that's that's the question right there. I think a lot of people would, wouldn't would probably mind if there was a couple teams that exited the Big Ten <laughs> uh, and the chances of possibly bringing in maybe, like, a Notre Dame, West maybe Virginia. a North Carolina Ooh, or West, whoever. I mean, if you can get those schools, you like that. But <laughs> the reality is I don't think you're going to boot anybody. It, we haven't seen that happen. That would be unprecedented. I think they probably end up going to probably a three-team conference format. You're talking the Big Ten, you're talking the SEC, and then probably some compilation over the next 10 years of the Big 12 and ACC kind of getting poached around and you know, a couple teams join the Big Ten, a couple teams join the ACC or SEC, and then all, all of a sudden you know, whatever's left kind of merges together, and that, that's kind of it. And It was a remarkable age. I talked to – I remember having a conversation with Jim Trestle, our head coach, probably like 2008. And he told me, he's like, in 20 years, there'll be, you know, four major conferences, like 16 to 18 teams apiece. And I thought it was crazy because thinking, no way that these conferences are going to merge. They're going to fall apart like that. And then lo and behold, it might not even be four. It maybe looks more like three and it's happened way faster. Yeah. That Pac-12 fell apart overnight with that Apple deal being announced or presented at least to the teams. Like, Hey, mm-hmm. you'll get 23 million and a chance, huh? Get subscribers, a little bit more money. Ooh, okay. So, like, wait a minute. Everybody else is getting like 30, 40 million everywhere else. Yeah. You guys could get 60, 70. Think yeah. about it. How many people click on the link? You know, you'll do that. And yeah. they're all like, peace. We are out of here. That seemingly took place 
overnight. Excited to watch what happens this year. This is the last year of all these people and these yep. things. It's like the we're taking a tractor or another round. Yeah, we are. Right. Last time. But last time, yeah. Yeah, only cool. one more round yeah. we're taking this whole thing. Let's enjoy it. I think the good thing, though, Bob, if you start looking around, seemingly all the big rivals were going together. So we're still keeping the rivalries, I think, which is probably a massive piece of it for the presidents and also for the overall state of college football. Do you agree with that? Well, we are keeping some. I mean, you look at the Big Ten, most of those are held intact. You know, Oklahoma and Texas, they're moving together. USC and UCLA are moving together. But, man, like, I grew up, you know, we're all about the same age. I didn't watch a whole lot of Washington, Washington State football, but I'd watch the Apple Cup. You know, I'd go watch the Civil War with Oregon and Oregon State. You, know, you go watch Bedlam with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Like those are all fractured now, and that that does hurt me a little bit. I mean, I'm a fan of nostalgia. I love what college football represents. I understand we're in a different era now, and like I'm not the old man just hammering on my hammering on my wall, yelling it's clouds and drinking beers on the front lawn. You are. I understand what it means, but in reality, too, that doesn't mean I can't be sad because I like to wake up a little hungover on the Friday after Thanksgiving. You know, I'd flip on Washington, Washington State and feel better about myself. Yeah, well, listen, some other game will step in there, hopefully. I went Nebraska, baby. Still but got to it. your point, though, like Oregon-Washington's a big rivalry, though. So, like, that survives, I guess, with the move to Big Ten. But those interstate battles are definitely getting left by the wayside. What's this Arizona State guy saying he's not coming to Morgantown? Hey, pal, you fucking stink worse than us. <laughs> we don't care you're not coming. To, just to finish the college football conversation. <laughs> I don't like that guy talking the way he – we get it. Scottsdale is awesome. Sure. Yeah. George, love it. Okay, it is beautiful. We love it as well. But, pal, you go to Morgantown, maybe it'll teach you to have a little bit of something you clearly don't have, which is a little bit of gut sack, pal. Uh-huh. Well done. Mm-hmm. Okay, go bring hey. some West Virginia air out He's there. He's building the rivalry. Be a little bit Listen, tougher. I'll tell you this, Pat. Not, I mean, not to slurp up your alma mater, but I will say for game day experience – Game day experience. West Virginia Mountaineers, they're bringing it. They are coming. Thank you. Wow. It is a strong, strong environment. The folks there, it's an event. They look forward to it. And if you go there, buddy, you better bring your work boots and lunch pail because it's going to be a full day of libations and party times. And your hard hat because there's Mm -hmm. something – uh-huh. Someone come. You know, there's a potential. Some things flying out there, you know. And oh, yeah. Like, I've been to a couple other uh, colleges, and they have their big event or whatever. Like, here in Indiana, it's a little five. At these other schools, they have, like, these kind of school things where the alumni come. It's a big party or whatever. That's every single home game in West Virginia. The entire state comes to every single home game in West Virginia. So, obviously, the stadium can only hold 60, 70,000, whatever it is. The motherfucker's out in the parking lot still. It is – the whole place is shut down. It's hard to get to. It's difficult to get to. But you're coming to our fucking conference, pal. Okay? Uh-huh. We run the Big 12 now. All right? West Virginia run- – we're beating Penn State week one. Of course. <laughs> oh. Prime time. Sorry about it, Big Ten. You didn't want us either. Yeah. <laughs> So this is what you got to deal with. Then we're going to beat Duquesne by a thousand. Maybe. Then we're playing against Pitt, beating them by a hundred. Sure. And then we're just off and running. And this whole Arizona State guy can pipe down. Now there's a chance we lose those games. Sure. All of them. Every single one of them. Yep. And then when Rich Rod comes back to town, he will fight that. <laughs> yeah. That athletic director from Arizona State, and I can't wait for that. Let's pivot away from college football. Let's talk about the nostalgia you said that you love. We all love. You went to the Hall of Fame this weekend. How was it? Obviously, you were celebrating former teammates, numerous friends. What was it for you this past weekend? Yeah, so I, got, I mean, you, you play with some great players, Pat. You know, AJ as well. And I mean, you go there, and I'd never – I'd been to Canton when I was younger. We went one time when I was playing with Detroit. We stopped by in a preseason game to play Cleveland. But to go there and you see there's 160 – or 106 gold jacket members that came through, and you see all your former teammates, and everybody's aging, and you realize one thing. Time is undefeated because these are the greatest players, some of the greatest athletes the world has ever seen. And to watch them you know, go through their 50s, 60s, 70s, it's a sobering reminder that each and every one of us <laughs> will slowly fade and decay. So that was disappointing. But these parties, man, they are legendary. My teammate Zach Thomas, DeMarcus Ware, invited me up. And hell, I couldn't have had, you know, played with seven or eight Hall of Famers. I get invited by two in one year, my first time there. So I got a split time back and forth. Uh, but it was remarkable. You know, getting to see Jimmy Johnson, Dan the Man Marino, you know, all these legends that are there. And they're there to have a good time. And they're there to enjoy it. And then, you know, Joe Thomas, I never played with him, but getting a chance to you know, meet him and talk. And there's a rumor, Pat. I mean, at his party, 
what what's better? You're going to go there. You're going to drink or need some food. What? You know, they got uh, they brought in a, uh, a guy from Florida Georgia Line. I can't think of his name off the top. Of my Tyler. Head. Uh, yeah, bringing Tyler Hubbard. Wow, awesome. Yeah. Twenty minutes fireworks show. That's a talented the be- one. Well, the best part about it is when you get in that state of mind, you're definitely going to make some good decisions. So what Joe provided people was a couple of tattoo artists that were going to be there to help facilitate some of those great decisions that would be made late in the evening. <laughs> Let's remember this forever. Come on, guys. Yeah. Free tattoos on your old friend Joe. Yeah. I love that Joe went in. I thought his speech was great. I thought his speech was great. I thought Zach's speech was good. I listened to Darrell Revis's speech. I enjoyed yeah. that. Mm-hmm. There's a couple I had to check out of. No offense. I don't know if we should be allowing kids of Hall of Famers yes. to give full speeches. Spouse, you know? maybe. Yeah, no. Joe Thomas so, was doing that, too? No, he should have. Should have. <laughs> yeah, that would have been cool. Should have. But, like, I have a lot of respect for these kids of the, the thing, but they're taking, like, full 15, 20-minute yeah. speeches. It's yes. like, can we do a video package for this whole thing and, like, kind of honor the fa- I appreciate what you're doing, but also, like, you know. Come on. Your dad, kind of, what we're, nonetheless, love honoring the past. Love experiencing the past. My big takeaway from Hall of Fame weekend is that it takes a lot of work. You got to be a badass to be successful. You got to commit your entire being. You got to have a good network behind you. And you got to be able to have thick skin. Like Tone Diggs was trying to build on Joe Thomas's kid this weekend, yep. where he tweeted <laughs> that Joe's son, Jack Thomas, was doing this to Steelers fans around the Hall of Fame parade. Tone Diggs quote tweeted that tweet <laughs> and then called him a loser. Whoa. This kid's like, what, eight years old? Yep. Tony. Se- oh, seven years old. He's a child. Tone called him a loser. And I was being told that I need to fire you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, Tony. I want to let you know that I was being told. Oh, sorry. You're lucky you didn't get suspended. Like, oh, what? Can't condition it out. He can't take it. Yeah, we're not allowed to have a rivalry anymore. No. no. You do you do a thumbs down to the Steelers fans, you're a fucking loser. Okay. No matter how old you are, huh? No matter how old you are. Wow. Starting young. Wow. Unbelievable. You said that. That's despicable. That's right, though. Uh, well, you're here's, uh, the don't, beauty, here's the beauty don't of the rivalry. I'm trying to get canceled. With, I'm not. Uh, right? Here's the beauty of the rivalry, about. though. Joe Thomas. For his gold jacket ceremony, they have a new thing now where you pick one former player who's in the Hall of Fame to put your gold jacket on. Do you know who Joe Thomas selected? Was it Joe Hayden, maybe? Mr. Jerome Bettis. The so, bus. There's a lot of respect going back and forth. Well, Joe, I think everybody respects the hell out of Joe. Yeah. 10,363 consecutive snaps, and then said unofficial NFL record. Like, we haven't <laughs> kept track, but we're assuming. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be. <laughs> Never winning either. 10,363 snaps consecutively, all losses. So this is an unofficial <laughs> record, but we think it is. What a tough guy. What a perfect depiction of football. Yeah. And what a guy who I assume saw your tweet about loser and then said, all right, Jack, we're hitting the gym. We're fighting this guy <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. in about two, three years like any good blue-collar dad would. We appreciate you, Bob. We can't wait for the season with you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, Dan Campbell's that dude, huh? Oh, Dan is the, they call him Dan the man for a reason. That dude will Rhymes. smoke and chew at the same time while he's hitting the fifth of Jack. Then go coach a football game with a live lion that he's going to ride out onto the stadium. I can't wait to see it. He's been thinking about that since day one. Yeah. He was thinking about bringing the lion out there. Obviously, that is something that has been voted down, which is a real <laughs> yeah. shame. Yep. I don't Bullshit. know what we're trying to do, if we're trying to create an atmosphere as a moment or not. But he, he just gave this speech about the pressure of – the success and expectations on his shoulders. And he said, no, no, it's not on top. No, no, it's wind beneath my wings. Like he flipped it so quick in the coach speak. Has he always been that way? Here's the thing. Dan is brutally honest. And like he pressure means that people have expectations. Expectations are a great thing in this world. When no one gives a crap about you, Pat, then what the heck are you out there working for? Amen. Like you said, Joe Thomas labored 10,000 plus snaps. You know, he's joked that his last 32 games, he won one of them. You know, and the reality is Dan knows Detroit, I mean, I was up there, you get beat up a lot. And the fact that now people are picking them to win and they're like, they have the underdog culture, dude, just pile it on. That's all good. We're going to embrace the love and they're going to go out there, man. Listen, it's going to be tough to stop because Dan is a tough guy and we know they'll be ready to play. And this is who he has always been. Bob, you're pretty jocked right now, Bob. Bob, you're pretty jocked. <laughs> you're pretty jocked right now. You still running sprints with the boys? Did a couple last Tuesday on my birthday, man. I had to make sure I could still uh, get it. Because one day, I, I'm, it, it's going to fade and it'll be gone. So I got to hang on. I tied a, a knot in the end of that rope, and I'm hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Are you still making the times, or do you have like a 40-plus-year-old time? 
listen, if I'm going to do it, Pat, we're doing it the only way possible. We're doing it the legit times of what it was 20 years ago. And the day I can't make them anymore, well, that's the day I can't do it. I'll crack open a beer and I'll say thank Wyatt, you. Yeah, why you'll salute yourself for yep. the run. How long? How long are we doing? <laughs> I did 20 half gassers, 17 second run time, 30 second rest. You're an idiot. Jesus. It's awesome, but you're an idiot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the General Bob Carpenter. Yeah! Yeah! 17. I t- yeah, that was our test. I told him like that was impossible for me four straight years in college to do, and he he didn't even do any like training for it. He I asked him if you've been doing a bunch of like you've been doing half gassers to get ready. He said no, I did some one tens. I haven't cut it all yet. I saw this one here. I saw this one here. <laughs> oh, he's the, Bobby's yeah. Bobby will look like he's completely dead in between each rep, and then he'll go win each rep. I love that. He's trying to get as much energy as possible because when you look completely dead, that's when you're using as little energy as possible. Yeah. So it's like, get all of it back in here, and then, how old am I? 40, all right, I need to. Well, Bob's the best, too, because when everyone else is struggling, you know, guys are, you're, you run almost as a team in college. Guys are struggling. Bob's not scared to walk up and down the line and let people know that they shouldn't be struggling. Oh, oh really? Let's hey, we need go. to pick it up. Oh, yeah. We need to pick Hell it up. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, because, I mean, yeah, he's yeah, he's an absolute monster. You know, he's jocked. Look at this dude. Fucking. Look, he's got, I... he's got this, uh, like, assistant strength guy timing him and everything. Yeah, he's got a stopwatch. Ready, go. All right, and he's saying, "That's so many half gassers, so terrible. Twenty, God. ten in seventeen seconds. Yep. Right? Yeah, hearing that strength coach call out the numbers that gives 13, you like PTSD. 14, Fourteen, yep. fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, close, yep. Bob. Yeah. Close, yeah, that Bob. Was, that was number. That was number twenty. There, he posted. That's legitimately what. What I just said. You said it's giving you PTSD. There. Yep. That's pretty much exactly how it goes. You ever run into that fucking strength coach that doesn't do it though? Uh, I know every strength coach I see does it. Doesn't announce it or does. So do we it had thing? yeah. No, get no time. They wouldn't tell you the time, bro. This was a little standing guy. Okay, we had to make up our cardio tonight because we had to go do something. I forget what it was, and I think Bar was had a uh, had to do a lift with. I forget who else. So there was like a f- group of us that were running. It wasn't because of punishment. It was just our morning yeah. cardio yeah. that we weren't able to make. And this GA wasn't given times, like wasn't shouting times. I don't know if he wasn't confident or not. There's like a science to it. You, especially when you're running half gassers, all that. There's, you know, exactly on the field where you're supposed to be when those numbers are called out. Yeah. So I just asked, I'm like, hey, hey, we're going to need the, hey, I'm going to need those, I'm going to need those numbers. And he goes, you got six more or whatever. I'm like, no, like when we're running. And then he like, like kind of big dog me a little bit. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What a Ian Barros had a great moment after that. Because I guess what I was saying was out of line. And I was like, well, what I think he was doing, <laughs> pretty out of line. Out of line. I, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. We're kind of in a little bit of a disagreement here. But Barwis was like, yeah, he was actually. Like, Barwis was like on my side. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm like, dude, this guy, I'm, you know, I'm dying out here. You know what I do on, yeah. you know what I do on Tuesdays? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm trying my best here. I, I just need to know that I got four seconds to get. 30 yards. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's what I need to know. I need to know that in my head. That I, or I'm not, we're running all night if that's not the case. So that is something that is scary, but I like that Bob is still doing it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Bob Carpenter. Yeah. Let's go. Beast. So every week he'll be doing his top five. Hell yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited to see how, <laughs> yes. how that goes. It's gonna be he great. will be prepped. He will be ready and he will be excited. It'll be awesome. I'm going to use it as the top five that I refer to, like on game day mm-hmm. and for college football. It's gospel. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, general's top five. The general, yeah, the general had this team at three. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, general I'm gonna, told me because he loves it, doesn't he? He fucking loves college football. Yes, he he loves everything about all football at all levels too. I also love that with top fives, there's a lot of times the joust. Oh yeah. So we'll be able to get Bob. If it's not us, it's people on Twitter. Uh-huh. Yep. There's gonna be. It's gonna be loud. You know what I mean, the Bob. I like that. He's not. He's not, Bob's not scared. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. That's yeah. why I feel like we have created. Like you know that. Perfect. You realize that. Bob's not. But like if you. Yeah, Bob's great because if you're like, hey, man, I don't know. You might get some backlash for that. Or if you put, if you say that, like it wouldn't even register in his brain. What? That, I like, welcome it. What? I'm telling the truth. What are you truth. talking about? Backlash I'm right. Who? I mean, yeah, I'd love to debate the person. I'd love to debate any of them. So we're going to have that opportunity because yep. I assume each week we'll start <laughs> with tweets from the prior week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Bob, just want to let you know, this is what the SEC people are thinking. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Hey, that's fair. They can yeah. Think. Yeah. Uh, I cannot wait. All right. Let's go. Oh, yeah. We can take Zito just so we can get some people on the phones so they can tell oh, Bob yeah, yeah, yeah. straight oh, up. Oh, yeah. oh, even more. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Yeah. Oh. Some things are for us. 
That's right. Yep. And yep. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're allowed to take five to seven minutes of 17 and a half hours yep. of a live show each week. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're allowed to take five to seven minutes for us. I think yes. that's reasonable. Yeah. Could even push that yeah. higher. He's going to give us a bunch of great college football info yeah. at the same time. Oh, 50, yeah. yeah. And I'm hoping by the end of the year, it is the standard. It mm -hmm. will be. I'm hoping it is the standard in college football rankings. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be like the Dan Zeus of college football. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> that picture's the best. That's so yes. good. It's behind what, Pat the whole time. What if Ohio State only wins by, you know, seven some week or ten some uh -huh. week? Mm -hmm. A lot of explaining to do. And he has them at one, or even worse, drops them to like four. Oh, oh. boy. You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. is? How's he going to handle that? House how's he going to handle that, AJ? You think? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, honestly. Like the the roller coaster that is a season. I can't wait to see how he responds. He he will though. He will always does. Battle oh, yeah. tested. All right, let's get to a break. Hour three will be on the other side. We'll take some phone calls. Speaking of phone calls, we'll also chit chat about all the other big news. Tristan Wirfs talking about his mental health, moving from one side of the offensive line to the other. Interesting. I'm happy he came out and said this, letting people know that you're allowed to have anxieties and worries, and even the people at the top of the world have the same potential negative thoughts in moments in which they shouldn't have them. So if you need to get help, go ahead and get help. Some people are scared, though, because mm -hmm. offensive line is a super mentally tough position. Tristan Wirfs, who was supposed to be potentially the next greatest of all time, is now having negative thoughts. There's people going, whoa, whoa, whoa. But I think Tristan Wirfs is like, I'm a human. Mm -hmm. He's handling Get off my fucking ass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I appreciate. I respect it a lot, but it has caused major, major conversations on the internet. The mental health thing, and th I say that, I understand it's very serious. Let's not get crazy. But the mental health words, vastly different between generations. You know, oh, this generation was living when mental health didn't exist. Yeah. Like, wasn't even nope. a thing. <laughs> oh, was that crazy? Throw him in a fucking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm about sick of it. Just fuck. Yeah. You're being real negative right now. Okay. I'm about sick of the negativity. Mm -hmm. It's like then we, as we grow older, we're like, yeah, people actually have negative thoughts about themselves, and mm. some people go through it a little bit about life and everything, especially when everything's happened. So as mental health is kind of developed as a thing that we know about, I think that has also been the way generations have handled it. Because there's a lot of older folks that are saying, Tristan Wirfs, he's fucking soft ass. Yeah. Yeah. Shut Bingo. up, boy. Oh, it's hard. Sorry about it. It's like, Jesus. There is, these people are relentless out Wild. there. Tristan Wirfs is just like, I'm just trying to let people know that this happens. Yep. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Trying to play well, too. And what triggered it was the move from right to left tackle, correct? Yeah, yeah. pressure, anxiety. I assume not just having to switch his feet, but also like left tackle, what that position means yeah. as opposed to right tackle. You know, that's a lot. Yeah. It's a big, it's a big, I mean, talk to talk to a guard, going from left guard to right guard. Like, it's a it's a big deal. Especially to tackle. Like, hey, you're one of the pillars now. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. You're on an island. Here you go, buddy. You're that's our bell cow here. You're, you're responsible for our quarterback, basically. Hey, you like everything around here? Yeah, this building, all these billions of dollars. Yeah, like pretty... You're going to have to... It's on you to protect. It's on you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're going to need you to play well. You don't play good. Guess what? We suck. We're fucked. That's a tough position for some people. Other people love it exactly in the moment, which I assume Tristan will as he grows older. Young guy. Dog got out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to figure it out. I think so. a lot more at left tackle than right tackle, so that's a good little positive. All right. We have Adam Thielen joining us on the other side of the Carolina Panthers. Cannot wait to chat with him. He's launching a golf barrel company. Really? Ooh. Yeah, with Unreal, U-N-R-L. Oh, nice. I think I saw him wearing some of it at Tahoe. He, he was. looked very clean. Yep. Yep. People are also saying he's faster than he's ever been. Wow. Like, had a surgery. After last season, because he got a late injury, people were saying, don't got anymore. He's old. He's obviously a Caucasian. What? He's, he just can't do it. Nope. 20 plus miles an hour every single day, I guess, training. Oh, okay. Is that he's, good? Is that good? I don't know. You tell me. Dude. He'll be joining us on the other side. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take five. Five. In an abandoned warehouse, Arthur Isaac Fischel. The world's AI authority has summoned the Earth's most influential doofuses for an emergency meeting about the terrifying powers of artificial intelligence. Antonio Margarita, influencer from Italy. Vladimir Borobershnikovsky. Chad Speed. Jim. 
We catch up with them mid-dinner as Artie Fish tries his damnedest to get the influencer's attention. Yes, uh, that'll work. Thank you. Scram. Let's get down to brass tacks, boys. The real reason we're here. AI is uh, it's a problem. It's going to kill us all. It's hard to take you serious with the way your face looks right now. I mean, you look like a fucking asshole. What are, we, what are we talking about? Oh, the only thing artificial is those fucking balls you call balls. You look absolutely absurd. You guys don't understand. You're not listening to me, okay? I'm wearing this because AI can hear your thoughts. It can get into your brain, guys. You ain't got no fucking brain. Once again, struggling to take anything you say serious. My team told me I should come to this. You look like a joke. You look like a joke. Like an absolute jerk off. Does this look like a joke? Huh? That's a nuclear bomb. Nah, that's fake. Just Fucking like bad man puts marbles in plastic you need case. A, you need a goo mom, I think. You guys aren't listening. This right here, AI gave to me a nuclear freaking bomb. It's so good. Told me the only way to save this screwed up world is to blow it up. This guy awake? Idiot. Wake up, that's asshole. Really, you wouldn't hit somebody with a No, yeah, fuck No, you. don't you worry. This one is foolproof. I doubt it. I it's brought fun. it here, boys. Not just for show. What? But because I'm gonna blow up the world right now! Holy shit! That's, That's Jack that Carr! Turns out, that was an actual nuclear bomb. Arthur Isaac Fischel was gonna blow the entire world up, and Jack Carr saved us all. It was his actual first shot, and Artie Fish is actually dead. Forever. Thank the Lord that Jack Carr sensed trouble. His new book, which is the sixth installment of the Terminalist series, Only the Dead, is currently available at all bookstores. You should buy it. As you just watched, he saved the world. Hell yeah, Jack Carr. Hell yeah. Punt return to win the game. Hell yeah. I don't know if they were trying to kick that ball out of bounds or they were saying, hey, just got to cover a kick. Let's cover a kick. We are a team that practices. We have a good punter. Sure. We got to do our thing. They're on the 32-yard line. He hits a bomb end over end right down the middle of the field. Not high enough. Certainly far enough. A lot of field to have to defend. One cut. Hit the wall. Boom. Punter misses. And all of a sudden, the New England <laughs> Patriots in a game that was three to three all the way until there was eight seconds left in the fucking game. Oh, yeah. Win with a punt return, and obviously that's Belichick. Belichick talking about it afterwards, knowing that this is how this game is gonna be. The Jets are always a tough team. We're prepared, we're ready. They get a win, they're still in the playoffs. The Jets are almost dead now, with Zach Wilson saying after the game that he does not feel like he's let down mm -hmm. the defense. No. Have you feel like uh, you let down anybody? No, it moves on. As an offense though, I mean, when you guys are only able to score three points, the defense only lets up three points. I mean, do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. Well, he had two yards of offense in the second half. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver for the Jets rookie, said, hey, that's not, that's horseshit. This shit's not okay. I mean, straight up, it's not okay. We had, how many, how many total yards we had? A little over 100. Yeah, that shit's not, not, not gonna fly, so. Bob Sala asked about it. He says, that's dog shit. Um, no, it's dog shit. Zach Wilson says, no, 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 we'll move cool. on. We'll gritty right through this whole thing. I feel like there's a chance that Zach's about to get packed and move on for the other team, not only because the defense probably heard that and is not happy about it, not only because Bob Sala has openly said that the offense that he's running is dog shit, but because there's a veteran sitting in that building. God damn right. right. He's ready to take over those young uh -huh. bucks and maybe get, get them on a run, but nonetheless, the Patriots get a win. A couple weeks ago, we are talking about how the Jets were awesome. You know, they're going to go on and be a good team. They're not. They're terrible. They're six and four but they're terrible possibly the worst six and four team in the history of the nfl Jeez, now on the patriots so... side of things yeah sure we only scored 10 points and seven of them came with 10 seconds left in the game but that was the game plan the entire time 
Bill, no. Get it to the fourth. Get it to the fourth. Be in the game. And then let's just make sure they punt the ball with less than a minute left. And then we'll go down and score and, you know, walk this thing off. And that's exactly what we did. I've sent some text messages to the Jets building to try to get a heads up on what they were trying to do. Were they trying to have him kick this out of bounds? It doesn't appear as if that was the case. I think it was a, hey, we need to go cover a kick. Let's go cover a kick. Let's get to overtime here as much as we can because he can't get into field goal range, even though Folk had missed a couple already on the day. We have to be able to flip the field with how much time was left and the Patriots having one time out and Matt Patricia doing his thing. It's easy to say just kick it out of bounds, but if he kicks it out of bounds at the 35 or the 40 and then they have one time out and they get in a field goal range and they lose 6-3, to three, there's still going to be a conversation. So until I know what exactly they were thinking and why they were thinking it, that late block. And I appreciate them not calling that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, good I, no call. I agree because he no matter, he wasn't going to make the tackle before he scored, so I agree it was a good no call. I definitely – I see that they tried to claim it was not a block in the back. Right. I believe it was. Yeah, yeah I, certainly a block in the back, but the sure. NFL has come out and said, oh, it was from the side or whatever, and I think the NFL has come in to say on the side, like, come on, that guy wasn't going to make the play. None of that really matters. But by the rule book, if we're going to start doing that, let's start making some more common sense calls in games in important fashion. Also, must remember, they're in field goal range there. Yeah. Blocking the back, they're still in field goal range. Yes. Nick Fo probably still lose the game. Hey, why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking cock! Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Overreaction Monday, August 7th, 2023. Hour three of this program starts right now. Football! Football. Yes. Nice. Let's yes. go. We're here. That's like wind. What a memory. That's wind underneath my wings, man. <laughs> you doing that. You know, I feel like I can fucking fly. Like I'm right over top of the city right here. That was amazing. Hell yeah. Great work. Team on me, team on three, one, two, three. Team. team. That's team. AJ Hawk right there on the big screen. That's the Toxic Table at Boston Connor, at Boston Connor's Mullet, and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Dad. Cowboys, Tanner Diggs is here. And joining us live, I assume from Carolina, down there in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, a man who is launching a golf collection alongside Unreal, UN. RL tomorrow online at unrl.co. We don't spell out unreal no, no. and we don't spell out calm. No. no. It's unrl.co. That sounds really cool. Wait till you see the shit that they're selling. Yeah. He looks so cool out of Tahoe. I'm excited to chat with him about that and about how it's going in Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Thielen. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. You look so cool. <laughs> just trying to be like you man no 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 so unreal golf am i pronouncing it right or is it unreal the golf it's it's <laughs> unreal golf and your partnership started how and how hands-on were you with the designs because you look so cool at tahoe and the logo is so sweet pal no it's been it's been cool uh it's actually how we got started together really is is the founder um the the guy who started unreal um, clothing. It, it went to school with me at Mankato. Uh, he's a couple years younger than me, and uh, and then that's how we got connected. Uh, and then I just started wearing the stuff, and obviously, unbelievably comfortable. And 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 then they started making golf stuff. And obviously, you guys know I'm a big golfer. Good. Um, Good golf. And so, kind of it, that's kind of how it all started. But um, I, my wife and I both kind of believe that we don't represent anything that we don't love. So any product, any anything that we represent, uh, we it's something that we would wear, um, you know, on our own or, or something we would buy and, and represent that way. So um, that's that's no different here with Unreal. All right. That is an incredible, like, I think that's why people like you so much. All proceeds from the apparel line benefit the Thielen Foundation and its programming around helping youth reach their full potential by providing educational scholarships and support through athletics. Hey, that's good shit, Bob. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good swing. That's fantastic. That's been something that's been really cool too. Is is they've been extremely supportive of the Thielen Foundation and and kind of just came right alongside us and and everything that we're doing with that and helping these youth um, reach their full potential through sport. A lot of it is, um, you know, 
redoing weight rooms and, and, you know, underprivileged areas where these kids don't have any resources. They don't have, you go into some of these schools and their weight rooms and they have like, you know, a 40 pound dumbbell here and a 10 pound dumbbell there. And, and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not anything exciting for these kids. So to be able to make them have something that they're excited about to go to work and, and go play a sport and eventually, you know, finish school and maybe go on to, to play a sport in, in the future is pretty cool. Hell yeah. Opportunity is what you're setting up. And also people will feel a little bit more invested if they know that they are on the same playing field as others, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And who knows what can come from a little bit of hope in somebody's mind. Are you telling people how to get this swing to AJ's point? What a beautiful follow through here. Gorgeous. You're a real player. Seven birdies on Sunday at Tahoe. Yeah. Jeez. Seven birdies on Sunday. Now, we don't have to talk about what happened before then. No. But you have the capability to do seven birdies in one day. You're going to be a pro golfer when you're done. Are you doing the Tony Romo thing, you think? Hey, I, I tell you what, when I'm done playing, then I'm going to give uh, all the time that I give to football right now uh, in the off season and all that will will be dedicated solely Family? to golf. Oh, golf. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to try to get as good as I possibly can. I'm joking. I just made you look terrible. That's on me. That's not. Uh, uh, you're you're what you're a guy that can do it though. So like that's why I'm excited to see you pull it off. Let's talk about your current job here at football. All reports out of your camp are that you look fast. Um, that you're getting sep. He's getting separation. Yeah. yeah. And he's charming. charming. Funny. And he's funny. All these things. So you feel good? They. I, it just got reported. I don't think we knew about this. There was an injury late last year. You got that fixed. Are you feeling 100% again? Do you feel like your younger self? Uh, how is it all going for you as a Carolina Panther? Seemingly great. Yeah, I can I can honestly say this. And a lot of times, you know, guys just say stuff just because it's a new year and all that. But uh, this is the best I've felt since I was, I was a young player. I mean, I can't. Someone asked me, uh, one of my teammates the other day asked me about, you know, what do you do now that you're older to be able to show up and play every day? And, and I really, I really kind of told them like, hey, honestly, I feel better right now today than I did when I was 25 or 24. Honestly, I remember uh, my last year of college being like, man, I feel old. So um, I feel great. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work to do between now and the season. Um, but feel really good right now and just got to stay on top of it. Proud of you, buddy. Yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Theo, did you know last year, or first off, have you watched the show Quarterback on Netflix, the series where they followed Kirk Cousins, your quarterback, last year? Did you know they were filming that all uh, during last season? And I know you pop up there all the time in a lot of the game footage. And do you like the show if you watch it? Yeah, I like the show. I, I, I love that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I love the game of football, obviously. So any insight into what other teams are doing, you know, what individual players are doing, I thought I thought they did a great job of, of you know, showing – what it takes to be a quarterback in the NFL. I don't think even a lot of players really know uh, that play alongside these guys that really know what it takes to be a quarterback. So I thought that was good. I mean, I think they could have gone a little bit more in depth, uh, but I think a lot of these teams probably didn't want to show um, too much detail of, of what goes into it. But, um, but yeah, I thought it was great. And, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to season two. Hey, Kirk was awesome in there, mm -hmm. you know, and I assume that that's what Kirk is like in real life because we got to see him in numerous yep. different settings, and he was the exact same nerd, yeah, nerdy motherfucker in all of them. Mm -hmm. Awesomely lovable, though. Yes. I think Kirk Cousins and Patrick, I think. Now, Marcus Mariota went through a lot, so it's going to be tough to be super babyface through that whole thing. But, like, Kirk gained a bunch of fans. Mm -hmm. Patrick gained a bunch of respect and fans from people because of how he acted. It was cool to see that. Now we're getting reports out of your new team that this quarterback is given protection breakdowns to offensive linemen on his fifth day in the NFL in a training camp. Bryce Young is allegedly the super genius when it comes to football. What has he been like from your standpoint? Because all sounds are that this dude is a guy. I mean, that's what people are saying about Bryce Young. What is your experience with him? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you can just tell that he loves the game of football. You know, I think a lot of times guys get drafted early on and they might not love it. They might be really good at it or, you know, have a lot of experience and played at a high level. Um, but but he loves the game of football. Like he truly does. And like you said, he's he's talking about protections like he's been playing the league for 15 years. Um, and I know nothing about protection, so I'm not going <laughs> to pretend like I do. But, uh, but no, it's been it's been really cool to work with him. Um, really just the whole team, though. I mean, obviously adding a, a piece like him to this team is, has been huge, but just been fo so fun for me and really refreshing for me to be able to show up to work every day and, and work alongside not only the players, but the coaches, this, this coaching staff. 
um, it's it's been really cool. A lot of former players, a lot of coaches that have a ton of experience, whether it be playing um, and coaching or coaching, and just uh, just to be able to kind of take in all that and just to show up every day and and the positivity, um, the kind of mix of I I said this to someone the other day. It's the mix of of being positive but also being real. Uh, you don't always get that in this in this league. Um, and so that's been really cool. Okay. I'm excited to hear, you know, how this whole thing pans out for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Both behind the scenes and in front of us. Because the NFC South, hey, NFC South, wide open in everybody's eyes. You also got a guy from the Colts that came over with Frank, Jeff Brown. He's a director of ops, bald-headed guy, played college baseball. He's a weapon. You need to utilize him. You know, he, uh, behind the scenes, absolute Dog. dog you guys got a good one i went to colts camp i heard he wasn't there anymore i'm like where where's brown they're like uh went to carolina i'm like this treasonous turncoat mother <laughs> he started as equipment manager for the colts we're talking equipment manager intern as the colts all the way through now he's down there you guys got a great staff including him i assume everything else is top notch as well good for you and you got a golf sim in the locker room oh yeah remember Sweet. that was uh that was the thing so you can rock the hat connor has a question for you Thielen. yeah adam last year in minnesota was o'connell's first year so obviously you had to learn a new system and a new offense they are now going to carolina first year coach frank reich learning another new system there what's that process like and is it almost easier in carolina because that is a completely Complete start from scratch. You're going there. You know you're new to the building as well, or is it similar at all? Yeah. Anytime you learn a new system, it's like it's it's almost like you're learning another language. Sometimes, um, thankfully, this year learning this system, a part of this staff, I think they did a really good job of making things make sense. Like there's a lot of times, you know, as an offensive staff, they try to put together an offense that that can kind of you know you can. You can ring stuff together to make it make sense. You can, um, you know, formations make sense. The things just hit your brain in the easiest way possible. They try to do it that way. And they did an unbelievable job of doing that here. So it hasn't been that difficult to really learn the system. Now, the biggest thing is when you're, when you're with a new staff and, and you're learning a new system is you might have run the same exact route, uh, concept or route, individual route um, for now going on my 11th year, but every single offense and every single offense coordinator wants that same route run differently. And there's little details of how that quarterback and offensive coordinator and offensive staff wants you to run that particular route. So that's something that yeah, but you're old every day. Yeah. Yeah. But you're old. That's true. I am old, but you feel young, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) 24. Absolutely. I feel great. You like this offense for your, particular style of football yeah absolutely i think they did a great job of mixing some uh different systems together um i think when they got together as the offensive staff they kind of said hey this is what i've done in my past um and it's been successful and then you know maybe someone else raises their hand and says hey this is what i've done and this is really successful and the way that they've meshed it together it just makes sense to me it hits my brain um and mm-hmm. and it's things that i've i've had experience with and in actually a lot of different systems and um, being able to put it all together has been really cool. Uh, so the, your eye, you got a good eye for this hole. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You see that, you see this offense well. Oh, I, I mean, I'm not a big fantasy football player. I am in a league this year with a bunch of guys from uh, West Virginia. Oh, nice. You? Yeah. So that just made me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go. Put I, dealing on the short list. Sounds like it, right? Yeah. I don't know when I'm supposed to draft who, but first I'm going to be, I, this is my first time ever doing this. This is my first time doing this. I've signed up for leagues in the past in here. Yep. Never participated. I was teammates with Phil. He ran the whole team. Mm-hmm. Thank God. We ended up not being last, which is great news. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's all that matters. I've never done the, this year. I'm doing it though. Welcome to my team, Bob. Happy Hell to get yeah. you on my team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm gonna send a text or two. Like, hey, Bob. Need you today. I need like a motivational speech before games. Yeah, maybe we take Bryce Young to dinner on a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. So he starts looking your way a little bit, you know. <laughs> They want to start doing this whole thing. No, it sounds like you guys are going to be good, though. No growing pains, you don't think? You know, I think Coach does a great job in team meetings uh, talking about it. Like, we're going to have ups and downs. Um, it's how, how we weather the storm, obviously. But there's a ton of excitement, right? Uh, you walk through that locker room, guys are excited. And, and every team is, right? It's Everybody's zero and zero. No one's had any wins and no one's had any losses. Everybody thinks they're Super Bowl potential right now. But 
I think there's just a different feeling of confidence in this locker room. And uh, we're going to have to start off strong so we continue to kind of build the momentum in the right way. This league is a momentum league, and you, you never know what happens when you start catching a little fire. So uh, we got we to gotta make sure that there's a little sense of urgency in that locker room, and I think there is. Go ahead, AJ. What was it like uh, being the new guy coming in and, you know, you have such ties to Minnesota and everything, and now you come in obviously with your resume, so you have that instant respect. But what was it like? A lot of times that can be exciting kind of going into a new environment and learning everything over again. Yeah, it's 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 completely refreshing. It, it feels like uh, like the first day of school or the first day of training camp in in college. Like you just uh, you're just kind of figuring everything out on the fly, and you can just it really kind of allowed me to just go out there and play football because that's the only thing that was constant for me is going and running a choice route or going and running a post route. Like I've been doing that my whole life, so um, it, it it just allowed me to just go be myself and go out there and play free. Um, it gave me a little extra motivation because I got a lot to prove. Um, these coaches, these players, they've never seen me play in person. And so um, every day I'm going out there with a mission to prove who I am as a player and who I am as a teammate. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that we need to, to use as a team is, is I don't care what people are saying about us or what we think we are as a team, but we got to go out there and prove it every single day. And that's been my mindset have you been taking that gps tracker on like an atv or a side by side or something like that is that how it's getting over 20 miles an hour mm. <laughs> uh no that's 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 the greatest thing about um you know when when analytics fall on your side it's a good feeling when analytics fall on the other side it's 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 not great but right now i'm i'm happy with the old uh gps because it's proven that um i can still play at a high level and that i haven't fallen off like a lot of people um feel i have how old are you? I'll be 33 in a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. okay. Well, happy birthday in case we don't miss you. Uh -huh. 32 years old, still flying around at over uh, 20 miles an hour. No big deal. Wow. Yeah. What's the top? Have they told you? Do they tell you every day? Like, tell you what, today, 21.7 miles an hour. Moving. 21.7. Maybe we crack 22, and then the next day it's like 20 and a half. They're like, ooh, see, here, yeah. okay. Yeah. Maybe getting a little cold tub, boy. <laughs> Do they tell you the numbers, or do you learn about it through the media? Well, I think it's I think it's funny because I I don't think they really knew what they were getting when they got me because <laughs> I think it was actually is and then and then now the first couple of days of training camp you know there's random people come up to me like wow did you did you know you could run that fast like it, like they there's were a white here <laughs> yeah. there is an older white here okay if our we thought the first day glitch no chance had to be side by side or something. There's a Minnesota older white here. 22 miles an hour. It's boy, you move. Is that real? Are we seeing the same? Are you pull up on the jumbo? <laughs> Are you seeing the same thing? I'm saying this is every day. This isn't just one day. Let's keep eyes on that son of a bitch. Make sure he is, you know, only wearing this to run and isn't in his car or something mm -hmm. like that before this whole thing starts happening. That's funny to think about. Like, I assume Frank GM knew. But some of the coaches probably had no idea what, what the Adam Thielen experience was. And then they're hearing in his team. I heard last night you ran 21. Is that normal? Holy you're a shit. possession guy. What are we talking about? <laughs> you run little outs across the middle. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thielen's like, oh, how you all forget. Uh -huh. Justin Jefferson, unbelievable. Football. Yeah. yeah. Un hey, listen, that is something now. And, I mean, you're a wide receiver at heart. So, you know, all selfish prima donnas. Yep. You know, that's that's what they say There's about wide world. receivers. You handled the Justin Jefferson situation with really great self-awareness, I think, personally, as a great wide receiver in your own right, pro bowler, all pro, and then, like, maybe greatest of all time, when it's all said and done, comes in to the Vikings, and all of a sudden the offense is like, hey, this is where we're going, and you just have to take, like, backseat to that entire thing and kind of play your role, and you did that. Obviously, you had to pay for a workout to even get in front of NFL scouts. So, like, you'll be the team guy. How excited are you to potentially, you know, maybe get a, a little bit more priority in an offense now again like you did a few years ago? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you guys, um, and this is not this is not just uh, uh, the political correct answer. But, oh, this is going to uh, suck. This answer is going to suck. <laughs> yep. Isn't it? But, uh, but to be honest, I mean, I, I just – I love being – a part of a tandem or a group. I mean, we had it with Diggs and I. We had it with Justin and I when he was an early uh, young player. And I think there's something to say when guys feed off each other that you take away what a defense is trying to take away, right? Like, if they're going to try to take away Justin, then 
then I, there's going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage on the other side, right? It's, it's pretty simple math, right? And so I, I love that part of the game. And I love, uh, you know, playing with Justin, obviously. He deserved all those looks. He deserved all those opportunities. I mean, there was times where he was double, triple covered. The ball's going to him, and he's still coming up with the ball. So at the end of the day, like, I can't, I can't say that he shouldn't get those opportunities. And so it was always one of those things for me that I wanted to help him be the best player he could possibly be. And a lot of times that is me going and making plays and, and doing my job to allow him to be able to do his job. And so, um, you know, I think that's why I'm, why I am where I am because, uh, towards my end of my time, that wasn't the case. But, um, but again, I, I love that guy. Um, and, and, uh, have so much respect for the way that he treats the game and that he approaches the game. And, I'm excited to see what he's going to do for a long time. Oh, we're all excited to watch you next year as well. But, yes, Justin Jefferson is electrifying on yeah. the football field. Seemingly cool dude, too. Like, super cool. You know, like, yeah, this is just how it goes. I'm just unbelievable at football. <laughs> yep. Who I am. You know, like, this is just ho-hum. He works his ass off, though, too, huh? Oh, he busts his tail. I, I just uh, – man, there was nothing better than than going to work with him. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I miss him because he's, he's such a great teammate. Um, hit – I always had a smile on his face. Every single day he walked into that locker room. And a lot of times it's because I, I was uh, cracking a joke that, that he really didn't think was funny but still laughed. But uh, That's great uh, teammate. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's There's nothing better than, than going to work with him. And then, and then, like you said, I mean, you show up to practice and, and watch out. You know, that guy was all over the field. He was busting his tail. He never took a rep off. Never asked for a day off or a rep off. Um, and, and just uh, love to compete, which is pretty cool. Hell yeah, it is. Hey, thank you for saying all that. I feel like I just learned a lot. Ty has a question for you, Adam. Yeah, Adam, going back to Bryce, like when we uh, talk to Aaron on here, he'll talk about like the rapport and the chemistry that he had to build with guys like Devontae and Jordy and how long that actually takes where you're on the same page. Obviously, you played with Kirk for a really long time, but how long does it take until you actually feel like you have that chemistry or rapport with a new guy? Now, it might be a little bit easier because he's a rookie and he hasn't played with a bunch of other guys before, but like, do you feel like you're light years ahead right now than where you were when you first started throwing with him? And how much further do you think you guys have to go until you know you really are like kind of on that same wavelength mentally? I usually wouldn't say this to a guy wearing Packers gear. But oh! That was oh! It's in the past. Great question. But, uh, but yeah, no, honestly, there's, there's kind of two sides of it, right? There's, there's the one side of, of you know, you, you have to kind of prove, uh, uh, and I'm sure Aaron talked about this. I remember him talking about it last year when he had a bunch of young receivers. Um, you got to prove as a receiver that you deserve those looks and that you can be reliable and that, that he can kind of trust that you're going to be in the right spot at the right time, right? So that's kind of the process that you go through through OTAs and training camp. Um, and then on the other side of it, you got to also get on the same page as, okay, when I get this coverage and I'm running this route, how, what is my angle, angle going to look like coming out of it? And for him to be able to release the football before you break, he has to really understand what, how you run your routes and how you're going to do those certain things against certain coverages. So um, that's something that takes probably the most time um, because you have to have, you can't just talk about that in the meeting. You can't just show up and say, Hey, during this, versus this coverage, I'm going to do this. Well, it just doesn't work that way. You have to have experience together. Um, and those are the things that have already come up through the first week and a half of training camp that have been really good things that happened that we haven't completed a ball because maybe I thought, or I've ran my route this way and he thought I was running it this way. And after the rep, we come back and say, hey, from now on, I'm going to, I'm going to throw that ball exactly like you did because I'm going to come out at that angle and and that's an easy completion. So there's things that have happened that are like, okay, like we just we just kind of check something off uh, off the list of, of things that we've we've kind of gotten on the same page. I love to hear that. You know, growth, development. It also is a good thing for us to think about while we're watching these practices. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're watching these highlights, and then mm -hmm. some people are watching these lowlights, and we're in the first six, seven days of practice with pads on and brand new offenses for a lot of people. There's going to be some shit to try to figure out. I think I just heard you say. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I remember even going back, you know, to playing with Kirk and like being in like year three, and something shows up, whether it be in a game or a practice, that you're like, we've never actually had that look against that route, and then it shows up, and then you're like, okay, like now we're on the same page. So like, there is little things that happen, you know, two, three years down the road 
that that you know that that you can kind of lock into your bank and say, okay, if that happens again, we are 100% on the same page. So it takes time. It just takes those reps to happen. They're saying his bank is really good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Kirk's. No, Kirk's no. one of them. Kirk and Bryce. Oh. Kirk for oh, sure. Both. We know Kirk. Yeah, yeah we yeah, got a chance yeah. to watch Kirk's brain mm-hmm. Beast. Yeah. do its thing. You know what I mean? He's very intelligent. But they're saying Bryce's brain is like special, special. They're saying. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you see it day in and day out, and I think it goes beyond just knowing the plays. It's it's understanding football, right? It's understanding timing and man zone, and um, you know what the defense is trying to accomplish. I think that's where he's. He's ahead of most rookies, and, and granted, again, there's going to be some highs and lows. We all go through that, right, as, as players. I mean, I'm in year 11, and there's there's lows in practices, right? That's that's just how how this game works. Lost it. But at the end of the day, he's, he's making throws with certain timing that you're like, he is processing the game a little differently than most guys. So um, that's been really cool. It's a nice he – get, oh, he gets – he understands. Mm-hmm. Him throwing that when he did, how he did – makes us realize that he knows, like, oh, this person was going to jump down on this at this particular time. Like, in the playbook, probably supposed to throw at this point, but instead we're going to get there a little bit earlier because of something that's – like that type of stuff, just for people that might not fully comprehend what you mean by that? Yeah, I, had, I actually I actually dropped a ball um, maybe oh. three, four, third, fourth practice of, of, of training camp, Dude, and it was – the ball was on me so fast. Like, I, I broke. As soon as I broke, the ball was like, bam, right there. And it was one of those moments that you're like, oh, wow. Like, he knew be- probably while the ball was being snapped that I was going to be wide open because of the way the safety moved or the way that, you know, something reacted, you know, the the, the linebacker reacted to the running back or, or what have you. So um, that was kind of a moment that you're like, okay, like he's, he's processing that almost too fast uh, to where he knew where that ball was going instantly, which which is obviously a good thing. All right, well, you just need to also – Yeah, look that thing in. Yeah, yeah. Right. Catch the ball. <laughs> Fantasy team. Tom, last question for you here, Adam. Yeah, Adam, uh, you said this is the best you felt in maybe like 10 years. So I saw it actually, a report on the internet, so I've seen if you can confirm or deny it. After watching quarterback, you took Kirk Cousins' his body gurus, Hank and Beatrice, and that is why you – That's the best what your question is. You have – What's your problem? Why are you obsessed with these two yeah. old people that Kirk's that letting in your house? Hank and BB don't deserve that. We don't know if that's their names. Have you ever met these olds that are working on Kirk Cousins that Tone Diggs has been enamored by ever since watching? I, I am sorry that is what he took his time to ask a question about, too. But on a follow-up, have you ever met these olds? I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to if I'm supposed to say this, but uh so I was I, I have met them. They are they are phenomenal people. Great people. Yeah. Yeah. The that, first time Tony. the first time I met them. The first time I met them, I, I was, it was in Kirk's basement, and he wanted me to come come see them. And before they even worked on me, they they started talking about the last game. And hey, I saw you know on this route when you cut, you know I think your hip was a little stiff, and we need to loosen that up so you can get out of that break a little quicker. So they were doing their they were to their credit they were doing their film study. And they were uh, they were dialed in and ready for me before I even showed up. So he's ball. got a good wow. thing going on, yeah. and he he's uh, I mean, knock on wood, I don't think he's missed the game in in, in his career from injury. So um, he's he's got something that that he's figured out that he's doing it doing a good job, and they're they're definitely part of that. Hey, right, hell yeah, great to hear that. So now that maybe this <laughs> asshole yeah. Yeah. Tony. can stop making that the focus that's all he talks about with Kirk that's it. Kirk had a that's great it. showing in that quarterback show great showing from his wardrobe to his family yep. mm-hmm. to his routine firewood everything, everything he did you made a good fire Coop <laughs> you made a good fire hey he, does, hey he does make a heck of a fire I'm not gonna lie bingo and there's nothing better than a fire in Minnesota post game you know maybe mid-October uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's electric, so. couple of those uh, but, local bricks. Hey, so he, he, sh- he actually has swag. Like, he really does. He has, like, these old-school Timberwolves shorts and huh. these throwback jerseys. He's got, like, a whole closet for all, full of all of it. But he still tends to show up to – I don't know if you guys saw the first day of training camp. He shows up in, like, a, oh, yeah. in, like, a short sleeve, button-up flannel. I'm like – I called Kirk. I said, Kirk. You have so much swag. Why would you do that to yourself? Like, show up in like the retro MJ jersey, you know, oh, from yeah. sunglasses. Like, yep. Something, 
something swaggy, that he does have swag. Yeah, well, if you watch quarterback, his wife yep. is yep. the one that pieces together the outfits. I think she does a great job. She does. Me too. She does a great <laughs> job. I think she does a great job. Adam thinks that as well. Mm -hmm. I assume family, friends. And uh, we appreciate you joining us. Good luck with the launch of the Unreal Golf Line, uh, benefiting the Adam Thielen Foundation. All proceeds will go to making kids' lives better. All you got to do is go to unrl.co tomorrow and purchase one of those incredibly sleek, comfortable, and professional golf line or anything else they have going on over there yes sir and you guys should have a, a little swag box for y'all so hopefully you guys like oh. oh unreal's got good stuff right oh they yeah real good. it's unreal they got real good stuff mm -hmm. unreal they're very good they're very talented at what they do they make hoodies right they're the ones that make the sweet hoodies. yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah like that one vikings one Last year, I think, is the one you're thinking of. Sweet stuff. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I assume the golf stuff is going to be electrifying. I can't wait to buy some. You're the man. We appreciate you. Good luck this season. Ladies and gentlemen, the Carolina Panthers wide receiver, Adam Thielen. Yeah! yeah. yeah. All right, let's answer some phone calls on our way out. Um, feels well, like... Hank and Beatrice. <laughs> I mean, had no was idea that, that was coming. Were their names ever said on there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I assume early, but we all did the same thing. We all go... Who, who are the olds? In here? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, because most body gurus, we're talking like Wim Hof, pretty geese. jocked, wearing, yep. wearing geese, yeah, wearing full gi. Yeah, like they care about the body so much. Look at their body; they are a picture of what you are signing up for. Triple A. Yes. And what they, what Kirk's saying is, look at the longevity here. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what he was like. You see how old this guy is, still getting after it. That's what I want my buddy to do Absolutely. in the NFL. He did that. Guys never missed the game. You got a problem with it, Tone? Keep no, bringing it up. No, I was just trying to Keep connect. bringing Hey, you guys got any questions for Adam Thielen? Tone. <laughs> yeah, I do. Thank you. You know, uh, you know John and Beatrice? <laughs> I was yeah. just trying to connect two stories. Okay, he He's never felt better, and I just met these two gurus in this documentary. I needed to see if that was the case. That was an interesting – I didn't expect that from old Kirk Cousins, but I do appreciate it. If it works, it works. Who cares? Get three you didn't expect better. his body work people to look the way they did? No, call me – I mean, I guess – that's there. I'm judging. I'm judgy wudgy. In Minnesota, yeah. wow. it, seems, it seems to fit Kirk pretty well. Yeah, but I'm a little judgy wudgy. Uh, mm -hmm. Judgy Jaguar. <laughs> I need to not be as judgy. Oh, that's oh, a new one. Yeah. Need less judgy Jaguars. Yeah, no yeah. judgy yeah. Jaguars in here. How many no. points is a judgy Jaguar? Not enough. Well, they're everywhere. So probably. Hey, is, is Martinez lot. in trouble, Blake? Yeah, so Blake Martinez, oh, former linebacker for the Green Bay Packers and New York Giants, yep. well, allegedly caught up in a bit of a scam selling fake Gary Vmons. Yeah. Is that what's going on? Uh, yeah, pretty oh. much. He, Pokemons, right, or something? Yeah, yeah, they're oh. Pokemon. He's lucky they're not fake Gary Vmons because if he took those to the black market, he'd have had 10 bullets in his head. His family probably wouldn't be there. <laughs> Why? Because they're so valuable? Yeah. Gary V, if you try and counterfeit a Gary Vmon, Oh, yeah. Ooh. Trouble. Same with Ooh. Pokemon, it sounds like. Yeah. Because yeah. he's catching some fraud charges, yeah. right? Just hang yeah. yourself yeah, on the sure. door. Not yeah. like criminal charges, is it? Just oh, they're like yeah. taking him down for a flat fraud. I don't know. I think if you have a fraud over a certain amount, it becomes like a criminal thing. They said it was like $11.5 million. That's, That's a big charge. What? what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's all fraud? All of it's like, like three weeks ago, there were stories so. about how oh, NFL linebacker quits to make a ton of money doing Yeah, we were being told we should market him because of how good of an entrepreneur he is. Yeah, they said he made like $20 million in his first year, and I think he had like 20 million employees and i don't wow. know about uh like where they sell this or whatever like someone else like bill might know more about this but uh yeah this like app that uh people primarily use to sell like pokemon cards and other collector stuff they basically just said hey your persona not grata here get your fucking ass out, out of here let's look at dove who's a legend in the nfl x world yep. one of the four former nfl linebacker blake martinez is reportedly burn permanently banned from reselling pokemon cards. so it isn't gary Vimon. okay on um, whatnot over scamming collectors according to dexter toe is that what that's called bill statement from dexter toe what are they? They're the authority? It's like a gaming culture. Okay, Dexter Toe is a gaming culture reporter. He's always dove. Statement for the, of 
gaming yeah. and Gamer, cards yeah, and right, stuff. Right. Statement from Whatnot. After a comprehensive investigation into Blake's Breaks, great name, operations, we have decided to permanently remove the seller from a platform, including the individual employees involved in the misconduct. Martinez retired from the NFL in 2022 to open up a Pokemon selling card company and has made $11.5 million in revenue in less than a year per The Athletic. So he was the best in the world, I see him at the card collecting business. I know Zito sold a card for like three grand or something a couple months ago, mm -hmm. right, Z? Oh, yeah. What was it? Charizard. Oh, yeah, Charizard. Was it real? Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, how long, how long did you have that thing? Uh, I'm going to say around 2003. Okay, so he had that what? Charizard, which is high quality since 2003, 20 years. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was what, 3,000, right? Yeah, it was like 5,000 million altogether. But yeah. Okay, th so let's do 11 and how a much half did you get million it for? divided by 5,000. Okay, so that would be 2,300 Charizards in one year to make $11.5 million. Charizard's the most expensive one, right? Yeah. There's actually, there's one that's way more expensive, but Charizard's the one that's most, like, well, like, everyone wants. That's 2,300 transactions, though, at a pretty good one. Unless you had a couple of the big ones. What are the big ones, like 50,000? Uh, I'm... You're looking at like a million dollars. Yeah, there was a. Uh, oh, so he had numerous yeah. million dollar ones yeah. plus Charizards in there. Yeah, like I, I had a, I had them. a bad graded one, but like he has like they're graded by one through ten, and like if you have like are they 10, cards? Yeah, they're physical yeah. cards. They're yeah. physical yeah. cards, like in like a little case, and some of them, to Z's point, like are graded really high, so they're like multiple, like a baseball, like a, like a sports card. What's yeah. that baseball one, ZD, baby? So when I sold my Charizard, I just bought a cheap one. And it's basically like it's graded out here. Foxy, grab that thing. Oh, don't bend it, Fox. Jeez. Whoa. Yeah, so the thing Jeez, on top. There's no light. Yeah, I can't see it, actually. It's, it's worse now than it was in Zito's hand. <laughs> the thing on top has like a graded <laughs> system. <laughs> you see Post Malone? Post Malone just bought a uh, like Lord of the Rings card for $2.8 million. Okay, so one card. So Blake Martinez so sold that one, sold the other biggest one, sold yep. the other biggest yep. one, sold the other biggest one wow. for 11 and a half. 11. Thank you, Zito. So eleven and a half million dollars in one year is a lot of shit, right? Yeah. That, so yeah. that probably is what trigger. Yeah. People are like eleven. How do you? This is like when you guys take it one step too far. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're exaggerating something, and we're all kind of like, is that true? Is that not true? Mm. And then you take it one step too far. I think Blake's breaks potentially just took it to yeah. You know, eleven and a half million dollars. You keep that thing at about six, seven. They're right. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah former NFL agree, guy. But... He's able to do that. Eleven and a half million dollars feels like. A lot of money yeah. off of cards that are like the Charizard when one sells for $1 million, It's huge. So if he was doing that one per month, he was selling a million-dollar thing per month. Like, that's that seems like a yeah a tough thing to accomplish. That's massive that's when you break card. it down. That's a good-looking Charizard. This thing is, uh, I don't know. Not how a good grade. What, what grade. It's a four. What grade's on it? So number four, EX5, 524097714. So that number four is one to ten. You get one that's 10. Oh, it's a bum-ass Charizard. Yeah, it's a very cheap who, one. So the one I had them, was though? a 7. Some self – Blake actually was the one yeah. grading them. Yeah. That's yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah. He was saying – Couldn't he say – if he had 20 employees, couldn't he claim, hey, I don't I don't know what they're – I didn't know they were doing this. Well, that's what's interesting. Yeah, but, I, yeah. I don't know if that's how it works if with companies. Whole, if his whole business no, it's, gets it's not, but <laughs> trying to say what, what, what he what, – how he can handle it. Yeah, I guess he could. That Maybe. could be why I didn't know they were doing. But they said they they're permanently taken from it. That, that's a lot to say he is permanently banned from our platform or whatever. Yeah, and whatnot. That's where everybody does the thing. I see Matt Overton goes over on whatnot and sells some of his cards. He has some cards over there. Really, Vmon or? I know. I think he does have a Gary Vmon or two. Why smart? I don't know how. Z, do how do we get a Vmon? Yeah, do you have any? I do not have any Vmons. I could get some if you want. We need a few Gary yeah, Vmons. Yeah, I'll yeah. do right now. Yeah, you go. You go to yes. eBay. I mean, you'll find a couple cards only cost like you know, two or three grand, and then that kind. That of is what started. he's doing, right? He's creating the next Pokemon. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good luck. I appreciate that. Pokemon's worth like how many billion? Oh my goodness! It's not a bad idea. I just dug in a little bit more, Martinez. One of the cards he sold was for uh, around six hundred thousand. So that's one of the cards. And then he was also selling packs, and he, I guess he was selling like a high tier pack, but actually sending the people like a low tier pack. So what you thought scumbag. you were getting A, and you were getting like Z. <laughs> how much is the high tier pack worth? Doesn't say. Yeah. I can't find that yet. Six hundred thousand. How much do you buy it for? Like a high tier pack? I don't know. Well, I think uh, Logan Paul, like when this stuff really started to get super popular again, he yeah. bought like a first edition box for like it was like, like two million yeah. bucks or something. He wore it around yeah. his neck. Yeah, he wore he one got... of those deals around his neck. Yeah, no, he got a card from that box. So, okay. so yeah, he... so those boxes go for like five hundred thousand or like six hundred thousand. There was that show on Netflix, that auction show that uh, Peyton was behind. 
I can't remember what it was called, but that guy offered Logan 300000 just to open him a pack. Just because, like, because every time you open those, there's no good cards in it. It makes the other ones way more money, if that mm. makes sense, because there's only there's not many left. Yeah. Got it. Different pack. They're but, still making them, right? No. Not like those first no. edition ones, now. So Logan, right. though, right, his wasn't. Or it was. He had some deal, I remember that, where he got scammed on something. something. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if it was Pokemon or something else. I don't remember either, but yeah. something was not what we were originally reading. Right. But I thought it might have been those packs. Me too. I think they were fake. Three million on, yeah. He got Martinez? Bingo. That's what I'm starting to... Yeah, but for three million dollars. Yeah, something like that. You're right. Yeah. It was something. I'm starting to wonder, like, did he buy from Blake's Breaks? He might have. Because it was, yeah, it was three separate boxes and there's thousands of cards in each box, but yeah, it was two to three million There's dollars. people that spend a large portion of their lives in these collectibles. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And I respect it and I appreciate it. Whatever your hustle is. Hey, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to make your living, do whatever you got to do. But I, it's so volatile. Yeah, I don't crazy. know how you live in there. Logan Paul was scammed on three and a half million of fake Pokemon cards. Yeah. I thought the YouTuber opened a box to find G.I. Yeah. Joe trading cards instead. Talk about an American hero. What an absolute fleecing yeah. of Logan oh. Paul. That's a damn shame. So that's allowed, though? Can he go after that guy? Whoever sold probably, it's probably like a fake alias and everything. G.I. Joe cards are pretty cool, though. Yes, yeah. they are. Buy with crypto and you never know, huh? Dude. Bingo. I said that's what he gets for bringing brass knuckles in the fucking ring. Yeah. Hey, Amen, bro. Karma. Crypto still? Did he win? Yeah. Or he lose? Yeah, he got win, but I don't know how that ref. Eddie was the ref. I know that ref. He's a good guy. Is he? He's a good seem, ref. It didn't seem like it. I don't know what the hell he was doing. It was clear yeah. and obvious. We all seen it. Clear yeah. as day. Playing grab it. Put brass knuckles on. Big right to ricochet. Of course. The guy was, Did Kid Rock hit anybody? No, he just, he just kicked off the show. Yeah, man. He cut an unbelievable I promo. So awesome. It's pretty good. I was. I felt nice. really good about yeah, that. That was a great run. We should keep doing that. that was well, I don't know if you should keep doing it because it's going to yeah. kill your voice. Pass out. Yeah. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I was. Zach Brown over there. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, did you hear people were asking him if he was uh, like super fan? Yeah. That's why he's dressed that way. Wait, it was the show last night? Yeah. Yeah. How was it? It was awesome. good. The third time. Yeah, third, I mean, those guys are year in a row. They're unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah. They're really good. I don't like him coming on Sunday to Indy. We sell that place out for him every single year. It's yeah. like my first year not going in a long time. Well, it's like. Matchbox was scheduled on Saturday, so. Okay. Yeah. Matchbox 20 was at Lucas Oil or at the no. arena? Yeah. No, the amphitheater. The amphitheater. They could Where did Zach Brown play? Same, Same place. place. Oh, I thought he played at the basketball arena. No, so th this place has like 8,000, 9,000. Okay. And probably Great much venue. cheaper than the mm -hmm. basketball arena, if yes. I had to guess. Acoustics, very good there as well. Yeah, yeah it's a great, nice. it's a great, he sells it out though every time he comes. Everybody sells out. Every yeah. time What's it come. called again? Yeah. It's something Ruoff. amphitheater. I don't know if it's Ruoff or it's Deer. Ru it's Ruoff now, I think. It was original. I found that out on. Since I've been here. Indiana, 2009, I get drafted. It's changed its name five times. Yeah. Four times. So it's like the, all the good old school amphitheaters with all the, the seating and then the grass behind yep. it? Yep. Yeah. Bingo. It's awesome. Those, that would have been love those venues. pretty sweet, though, to see Matchbox 20 play for 60,000 people at Lucas Oil. That what is Matchbox? Cool. What is the Matchbox 20 song? Oh, yeah. I know. Let's see oh, they have so many hits. That's one of them, yeah. What was that? And I said, baby. There it is. Damn. It's 3 a.m. Oh, I'm a little Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, Matchbox 20 is good. They were very good. Anything else? Anything else? I yeah. wish the real world would just stop yeah. happening to me. Rob yeah. Thomas had smooth with fucking Santana. Did he play it? Oh. No, Santana? He did, he did not. He didn't play it? Well, no, I don't know. No, so what are we doing? We're just saying songs now? Well, no, I'm <laughs> saying that he was the lead singer. He had smooth. All right. He didn't play that, though. Saturday. No, I don't know if you have to have Santana there to do it or not. You should. I've seen him do it live. He did not have Santana there. Wow. And he brought the house down. Oh, what a yeah. treat. They were shit. God damn, what a weekend of music. Yeah. Yeah, holy shit. I didn't know Matchbox 20. I had bangers like oh yeah oh yeah Zach Brown I get them and Goo Goo Dolls that. mixed up I, mean, oh. I love Goo Goo Iris come on boy. yeah come on they played halftime at one of the Thanksgiving games in Detroit we saw him walking down the tunnel I was pumped I recognized the dude right away Bro, how about you Green Bay guys getting what Creed Nickelback yeah yeah Me never in Green Bay Goo Goo Dolls. Other, places. other places usually yeah but it's because Green Bay Packers are in town Let's put on a whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Let's get Scott Stapp out here. And that's yeah. the question. Is Jordan Love going to be able to handle that? When the Green Bay Packers come to town, it's like the Yankees. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I think so. Packers sell out every stadium they go to. Mm -hmm. See the Google dolls walking down the locker room hallway? What is what's Jordan going to do? Is he going to be able to handle that? Yeah, it's going to be tough. going to start gripping the ball a little tighter? Yeah. The cream his pants. <laughs> Those are the things you can't really talk about or <laughs> no. think about or train for. Well, they do play on Thanksgiving, too. 
Oh, yeah, Lions yeah. Packers. That's true. Oh Whoa. shit! Lions oh, yeah. have Packers number two. Probably oh, Lizzo. Yeah. Someone else like that will be there. I don't know if Lizzo and her cheeks are gonna be out there. And bananas. Probably be Big Sean. Yeah, it will be Big Sean. Him and Sean? Kid Rock. Big Bring Sean's Kid back. back. Who? Remember they banned Kid Rock's music at Ford Field? That's why that well, whole thing being at Ford Field did? Yeah, was Bob, pretty interesting. Well, Bob Ritchie in Detroit had some feelings about Kid Rock for a bit. Yep. Yep. Kid Rock, you know, said some things that Bob Ritchie in Detroit didn't necessarily <laughs> agree with. Exactly. Yeah, then we the people went triple platinum. Just yeah. real quick, though. <laughs> um, he, he wrote a penis rocket then. Yep. Well, it was a middle finger, but certainly did look like a dong. Um, 59,000. 194 people at SummerSlam this weekend. That's a lot. Woo. Packed out. Best live gate ever oh. for SummerSlam. 60,000 people in there. They were loud. For SummerSlam. Too. Loud. They were Active audience. So sweet. So blue collar cities, normally mm -hmm. the crowds. They go. Yeah. Hey, we pay money for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like as opposed to there's some towns that just kind of sit back and let the show happen. And then there's some cities that, excuse me, we're going to be a part of this. I yeah. had a lot of friends that went and they all thought The Rock was coming out. I think everybody, that was kind of the rumor. Was right? that yeah. a rumor? That's what I was going to ask. I think it was a rumor, yeah. And then The Rock talked to Kevin Hart on that show where he said, damn, to uh, <laughs> yeah. his little talk show thing. Mm -hmm. to Don Cheadle. The Rock's on there, yeah, to Don Cheadle. The Rock was on there talking about WrestleMania being in Philadelphia next year, and Kevin Hart did an entire angle about, yeah, I'm the one that made that happen. I'm the one that <laughs> bought Philadelphia, and The Rock said, you're Nick Khan? Did Nick Khan do it? He's, yeah, me and Nick, we made it happen. Like That's kind of how Kevin Hart did. But now that The Rock is talking about WrestleMania in Philadelphia, uh -huh. look for an entire year now worth of uh -huh. The Rock's returning at WrestleMania in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So anytime The Rock returns, hip, yep, will, yeah. the oh, place yeah. will go absolutely bananas. When's the last time he actually had a match? Cena? 2015. Yeah, Mania? yeah 2015, really? He's come back and done little things, though, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh, that looked Ooh. good. Yeah. And now he's he's back at a proper... Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's gone through different phases of... He's doing one-legged split squats. I see he's trying to work through those. He looks good. He's an animal. Yes. Beast. He's absolute. For, he's one 50 years old, right? Yeah. This says his last quote-unquote real match yeah. was against Cena at WrestleMania in 2013. 13. 10 years. Jeez. He picked up... Uh, that UFC guy that did the fight with seven bucks who was sleeping in the gym. Yep. You know, he hugged that guy. And as he was hugging him, he felt, you know, you saw a real mana there. Yeah. But his fucking calves <laughs> were fully, mm -hmm. his quads and his arms in the hug, the side profile. I'm like, God damn, this dude's got 3% body fat on him. Yeah. He's 50 years old right now. And then he'll be fishing shirtless and he picks that thing up. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, what's up? How he is. Yeah. His remarkable. legs are more important. Like, when you see his legs, they are so big and so shredded. That's what freaks me out. About, like His whole physique is crazy. It's like, bro, I appreciate you doing leg day until you're 55 years old. But also, where are we headed? Yes. Yeah. You know? What's the next step here? Yeah. What is the evolution? He's going to yeah. live to 250 years old, probably. There's a chance. If anybody's going to do it, it's going to be The Rock. That's right. Yeah, I can't wait to hear the promos he's cutting for whatever company he owns in 2150. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's just going to be cutting promos. For you, Dwayne. There it is. Fuck boom. Kids. All right. Let's, let's take go. a couple fun calls and go ahead and ride on out of here. Big arm day this morning, too. I'm happy to see that ball go in the hole. That was, yeah. Big arm day this morning. AJ, I'm trying to get real jocked. You know what I mean? You look good. You look good, man. Don't you feel good? I do. I feel real good. Real good. I've been stretching, too, this whole thing. I've been, I've been really. Oh, nice. Yeah. So when, um, when the wife and I put the baby down in the nursery, you know, she's really good at the rock and soothing her, but I go down, team support, here we go, I'm here. So I'm just sitting down on a carpeting floor in the dark with white noise on in the background. Yep. Nice. Just kind of not much I can do except for, like, do you need anything? No. Okay, I'll just sit here. So I've started doing push-ups, sit-ups, stretching in there. It's like a full thing. So, awesome. like, literally... Do high knees, high knees back and forth, wake her up? Yeah, no noise. No uh, noise yeah, allowed. So, so, that'd be awesome. Watch, like, see, like, in the dark room, seeing you just try to be quiet doing push-ups and stuff. That's dude, like, I am, yeah. Because it's carpeting, you know? So, like, it's real... I could be real quiet on soft. there. Soft. You know, every once in a while, I'll do, like, a... Ugh, and I just... Put her, Sam, Sam, put her on my back. I need some extra added weight. I'm getting too jacked. <laughs> I'll just... I'll just feel Sam's eyes. <laughs> just like she was real close to going to bed and then you had the grunt right there i'm like 34 straight yeah. bang it out that's pretty good i'm pretty proud of it yeah but i understand what you're saying <laughs> so 
Baby has literally made me a better person, which I appreciate. Hell yeah. I really yes. appreciate. Let's nice. take some phone calls and get the hell out of here. Let's go to Dakota in Missouri. Dakota, what's going on? Whoa. Interesting. Yeah. What's up, fellas? Whoa. How are we doing? Keep it moving. Hell yeah. Yeah. I got a two-parter for you. Great. Um, I'm going to be uh, in uh, in Indianapolis <laughs> week four for Rams Colts. Uh are there any places like to to eat down there? Any cool shit no, to do? No, unfortunately. No, there is. There is actually. There's this area. Uh, it's called like uh, the garage. Mass the garage Ave. area. Uh, Mass Ave. Yeah. yeah is but it's the end of Mass Ave. Uh, the yep. Coke bottling district. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Bottle works. Yeah. Bottle works. My wife and I went down there uh, yesterday for a little day date. Her mom watched the baby for like an hour and a half, two hours. We went down there. Stores. Food, what? great hotel. There's this virtual reality thing that we couldn't get into. I don't know. It's you just go in there and just kill people, I guess. Oh, that's the VR sandbox looks that awesome. place is awesome. The VR sandbox thing, yeah. yeah. Place is oh, legit. okay. It looks There's one here. I drive by one. Is it cool? I literally, I tried my best to get in there. The workers just it looks like laser tag to me. Is no, it's you? it's uh, you're doing virtual reality. You're uh, murder. You're zombies. I think. Oh, we need to go do that then. I'm yes, do it. it is. It seemed to be awesome, but. Just for whatever reason, couldn't get through to the person that was working right in front of me that, like, yeah, just whatever's available soonest mm -hmm. for however much you need. Well, you got to go to the website to look at all the... Oh, Jesus. So it was a full thing. I'd, I, If I had more patience, we'd probably do it. But Sam was not about it either. Sam's like, we're not doing it. We just tried our best to basically give this person all of our money to do this thing. It wouldn't happen. But it looked awesome. Dirty, have you done it? Yeah, I did that shit before. It was fun as fuck. Awesome, yeah, right? It, was awesome. it looked. We did awesome. the robot one. You like, you go up and down. They got the. You really like, really in there with like everybody else, and you can like feel the energy and shit. But you can also run an entire room. I found out. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> I, just, I just want to just want to do that one. Yeah. Here we go. Just let's do that one. But we weren't able for whatever reason. We weren't able to get in there. We will for sure. That's in that area, Dakota. It's there's a lot of boutique stores. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's good. You should try to stay in the Bottle Works uh, part of town. I do believe. Yeah, yeah, definitely stick to Mass Ave. You never know what's going on downtown during the season because I mean. There was a Gen Con this weekend. I mentioned to you that if you tried to go downtown, it'd be a nightmare. And actually, Nick said that some guy from Gen Con stole $300,000 worth of Gen Con. Just walked what? right out with it like it was a movie. <laughs> yeah. They had his picture on the news, super blurry. He he must have seen the cameras at the building and were like, that's crop. Yeah. <laughs> that camera's crop. crop. That camera's shooting in 420p. That camera's shooting in 420p. Just took a thing, walked out, $300,000 worth of shit. Out of Gen Con. See ya. Hey, does anybody know what is this guy? What's Gen Con? It's uh, it's like the, yeah. it's one of the largest in the world. Yeah, like mm -hmm. board games and that kind of stuff. Collectibles, these things. Gary V Mons, Pokemon. Oh, video games. Gaming cards. Yep. They, that's what they stole. They stole gaming cards. Three hundred thousand dollars worth of gaming cards, or whatever. Jeez. So keep an eye out. Yeah. I'm gonna sure to lock my fucking car. I guess. <sighs> there uh, he is. My, my second question was, uh, what the... That's smart, like, Dakota. Yeah, so yep. the, line, the line is currently at a, at a pick'em, so mm. I was wanting to, wanting to see what you guys kind of thought on, you know, the, uh, you know, how it being a wash currently. I mean, I, I think it'll be kind of the kind of the Rams way, but hey, that's just me. All oh, right, yeah, Dakota, don't get robbed here. Shut up, know. Dirty. <laughs> Shut up, Dirty. It's in the uh -huh. Colts house. Coming to Indianapolis. It is. A pick'em with the Rams? Yikes. They won a Super Bowl two years ago. I know. I don't know who should be more embarrassed, actually. Dirty, it feels like your team's getting made fun of more That's than mine. That's a prime mine. time game, right? I think That's exactly we'll prime time. We'll be back. Dirty, what I think. What the Patriots do lately? Who's who? Oh, what have they? Yeah, exactly. The who? The, the who? Oh, no. The who? It's fun to hear Gertie back there. I thought he was sleeping for most of the show. No! Good, to hear, good to hear from him. Dirty's working. Jeez. It's fun. Put that playoff bracket picture up that Dirty made this morning, actually, because this is something, and the Rams are in it, and as are the Patriots <laughs> and the Colts. So pretty much every team that's being represented in here, it's there's like six teams, on average six teams who make the playoffs, don't make it the next year or something yep. like that. So here's what it was last year with the Buffalo Bills obviously through the top. And if you look at the teams that missed the playoffs, like Steelers felt like you guys had a lot of buzz last year. Yep. Missed the playoffs. Patriots didn't even make the fucking playoffs last year. Oh. Isn't that crazy to think about? Colts not in there. Green Bay not in there. The Lions who are getting super oh. duper hyped. Didn't even make the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think about that. Feels like there's a lot of movement on the horizon. Normally six. Feels like it's probably going to be seven to eight in this particular season. And that's the parody of the NFL. Yeah, especially when you look at one of those teams on the AFC side. Like, 
you could probably make it the argument that the Jets are the most prepared to go to the Super Bowl, and they weren't even close to the playoffs. They were last in their division. So, I mean, not only just going to the playoffs. You're picking Jets over Chiefs right now? Sounded like it. Uh, I'm picking Jets over Bills. And the Bills were the two seed. And yeah, but you're going to naturally do that, right? Because of what the Bills fans did for the last few years in your face. More, more so just because of the Leslie <laughs> Frazier stuff and the stuff on Diggs stuff and the stuff that's happened in I Buffalo love. hasn't really happened in previous off seasons. And then you look at what's happening in the Jets building with Aaron Rodgers, who, as we've looked at in the past, when he is in a spiteful mood, he wins MVPs and they're the number one. No, I saw him throw see. a pick to Sauce Gardner. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you guys see that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. How about that ball, though, but they're – Slow motion. Mm -hmm. Rope. That thing is just like hovering. Yeah. Because basically no look. It's a fucking well, yeah, I mean, no look and sidearm. I mean, like, a little torque. Like boom! the torque you can put on the ball is crazy. It's the fundamental. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. He, he does a lot of like stuff that most other guys can't do. Like he'll fall yeah. back a lot on his throws. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you, you got to step into that to really get the power or whatever. And he's like, all right. Watch me hit his drive. Yeah. And, and just, you know? Mm -hmm. Sauce Gardner, though, picking him off. Didn't Sauce say he wouldn't pick him off in practice whenever he was recruiting him? He yeah, did. He did. Wow. That was well, a lot. It's a little turmoil. Should be. Could That's be. Liar. We'll find out tomorrow night. <laughs> Can't believe Aaron threw a pick, by the way. Oh, no. Uh -oh. oh, no. Honeymoon is over. The honeymoon is over. I wonder if Hard Knocks is going to pick up him experiencing that interception Probably. there from Sauce Gardner. <laughs> wow. Hopefully, Aaron chased him down and made the tackle. Like he did way back in the day where he had that big shoulder tackle. Oh, yeah. the Saints. Oh, yeah. He's killed a few guys. Hell, yeah. Andrew Luck used to do the same thing. On the field? I always used to believe that you throw a pick, you got to you gotta make the Andrew's, tackle. He was bigger than everybody that picked him off, too. He was a maniac, bro. He was beelining towards the person. Like, you know how quarterbacks can sit back? Like, punters and kickers sit back? <laughs> He's like, fuck. Got to go make a tackle. Yeah. <laughs> And it was like, you know how normally after a pick, some defensive lineman or something would used to come clean up the quarterback and the wide receiver yep. that was targeted mm -hmm. and the quarterback because those two are going to know it was an interception before everybody else. That was always clean yeah, up the block quarterback. The in, block the intended receiver always, first thing you do. And if you can get a shot on the quarterback. Kill the quarterback, yeah. That's no longer, you can't do that defenseless no, right. or whatever. No but at, back when Andrew was playing, was still very much allowed – I didn't see a lot of people trying to kill Andrew. No. That, that, that didn't seem to be. Uh, no. No, especially, no. If he had a, especially if he had like 10, 15 yards running. Nope. I'm going to I'm gonna find somebody else I think that's not looking. He was a D lineman, bro. Yeah. That clip of him at that Stanford where the, the running back fumbles in the USC safety picks it up. And then, yeah, Luck drills him. And then he fumbles it and Stanford gets the ball back. Yeah. He was. Absurd. Just football. You know what I mean? A perfect form tackle. That was his thing. Like. He felt like he was disrespecting football if he didn't play every play until death, pretty much. And then if he didn't make the tackle, he felt like he was disrespecting his teammates after making a mistake. It's like Andrew Luck was almost too too perfect of a human. Yeah, <laughs> loved too, yeah. football like, too much. Too much, too good of a guy. He needs to be. He needs to be more selfish. You're right, and yeah, not get hurt. Just like too good of a. That's not football. If I don't, so I'm supposed to throw a pick. Everybody sees me throw a pick, and then just not Walk make to the sideline. Okay. Awesome. No chance. Good it is him. awesome, isn't it? It is awesome. Yes. What do you mean? I mean, his teammates obviously have to absolutely. They love that. You, everyone loves that stuff. We did love it. A lot of us loved it. Now, I wasn't as close with them as others, but we also <laughs> were like, hey, we need you to survive. We need you, yeah, need you, we need you out for there. the whole season. Bro, you throw the pick. It's cool, bro. Somebody else takes it back. It's we get the ball back quicker. Yeah. You know what I mean? You so, go score. You know, it's one of those things. But the same thing could be said about Carson Wentz. You know, and I think that was certainly an experience that his Colts fans had after Andrew Luck retired. He's up for the Hall of Fame next year. I hope he goes in. Would be awesome. Would love to hear the chatter. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Would love to hear the chatter. I, I don't have a vote, but I'll put, I'd will put. like to put Andrew Luck in there, and I wish he would have been able to continue to play. What a perfect football player mentality mindset. But there was times where it was like he, he got himself, you know, into some stuff because of how tough he was. So whenever Colts fans saw Carson Wentz, it was a lot of like, here, here we go. Here we go. Now this guy's not as strong and jacked as Andrew Luck, mm -mm. not as tall as Andrew Luck, can't run as fast as Andrew Luck, but certainly has the same exact mindset of mm -hmm. no play is over until the play's over. If something needs to be done, I'm gonna do it. And inevitably, in the end, with us, the Washington Commanders, and the Philadelphia Eagles, it all kind of ended the same way with the fan base going like. Hey, we love Carson. He mm -hmm. is so incredibly tough. But I don't know if he's a quarterback for us. Nope. It's just too too stressful. 
of a ride. You know, it's too much of this. And it's a lot of, ah, and then he'll do something amazing. It's like, whoo, that was awesome. And then, yeah. ah, and then, whoo, we're back in there. I couldn't experience it. I don't know how his parents have. I have no yeah. idea how they've existed. But I, I saw some people after Carson posted his training photo saying, like, it was unbelievable what the Pat McAfee show and Colts fans did to you. It's like, I feel like we complimented him. Yeah. I feel like we yeah. all agreed that this yeah. dude is like, too tough for his own damn good. He sprained both of his ankles on one play and tried to get back on the field. Yeah. The guy could barely move. <laughs> so him working out with the Eagles helmet and the commander's jersey what? and the Indianapolis Colts shorts was a nice little trip down memory lane for old Carson Wentz. And normally at this time, I'd be in one of these buildings preparing to climb the mountaintop of old Lombardi. And now people on the internet are saying, this guy looks like a fucking Sunday parlay <laughs> at about plus 15,000 with those particular teams yep. looking to get a dub. What are your thoughts on Carson slinging it back there and reminding people that he can still play football and is still available? Yeah, I mean, the fact that he is still available, I, I just wonder where his next place might be. And it, like, yeah, I understand like the, I guess the, the, I don't know if there's humor involved in this post or whatever, but do you want to remind people that these three teams let you go? Well, that's some people on the internet said, problem. well, you're actually showcasing the exact problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. Well, this is kind of the exact problem, but I don't view it that way. I view it as, hey, this guy's been in three NFL programs. Mm -hmm. He's mature. Mm -hmm. He's healthy. Yeah. He's ready to go. If you need a backup, he's ready to do it. Is that what you guys got out of this photo? I mean, I, out of that photo? Yeah, I, I got a lot of different things. I, I won't share all of them, but Whoa. it does feel like if he were going to play this year, like if the Bucks started 0-4 and, and Baker won the starting job and he still started 0-4, would that be grounds for Tampa just to say, fuck it, let's bring mm -hmm. in Wentz? So Tampa Bay is in the middle, it's being reported, in the middle of a very good quarterback battle between Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask. Remember, Kyle Trask is a guy they drafted, so anytime they draft somebody, they are going to want to see that person succeed because, once again, in-house, we built them, we created them. Now, when Baker was signed off the Los Angeles Rams, formerly of the Carolina Panthers, and the Cleveland Browns, we all assumed he'd be the starter. But it seems like he is the starter for the first preseason game. Second preseason game, though, Kyle Trask mm -hmm. is going to get it going. They're in a full competition down there. Excited to see how it works out, AJ. Yeah, and so the, it it'll be interesting to watch the Bucks play because these are meaningful reps for Baker and Trask in game two. Like we know, hey, every throw truly matters when they're when it's a real battle. Now we know a lot of the team situations in practice. The coaches make a lot of decisions off of that and see how they handle it. But these preseason games actually matter for people like this. Yeah, this is a real thing going on. You know, you drop a ball for one quarterback, catch one for the other. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you're like, I'm so sorry. I, I like you more him. Mm -hmm. I certainly made him look a lot better than you. You're probably not on our team anymore. Sorry. Sorry about it. <laughs> it's interesting. You got two quarterbacks. You got no quarterbacks. Yeah, so they, well, it, same similar thing happened last year. Geno Smith and um, what's his name? Drew Locke. Drew Locke. Drew Locke were, yeah, they Drew were doing Locke. this, but then like Drew Locke got hurt or got sick or something like that, so he didn't end up starting the second game, and Geno did, and he just looked good, and then Geno just never gave up the sit the quarterback job again. Could happen with Baker. Good. Maybe. Maybe Baker has a Geno year. Probably not, but. What if Kyle Trask just comes into his own? Yeah. His absolute guy, right? Wow. He sat behind Tom? Yeah. yeah. Would, would they sign Baker, you think, if they thought Trask was? I don't know. They're having him compete, right? Yeah. It's just like with, I mean, I guess Washington and Howell, like they brought in Jacoby Brissett, and even though they knew they were going with Howell, allegedly. How's good, I heard. Yeah, right. And now we're here. All the reports are that he's yeah. playing well. Yeah, off season two, Rivera was like, "Yeah, Sam's our starter." And I think Taylor Heineke said, "This guy's good." Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. Taylor yeah. Heineke yeah. said, "This guy's good. People need to give him a shot. He needs to get some reps in here." And once again, drafted by the Commanders, so they're going to want to see him do well. Commanders had a bunch of fans at training camp. Chicago, uh, Green Bay Packers had a bunch of fans at training camp. Chicago Bears had no fans mm. at their training camp. No. Well, why? No, no fans at all. Lollapalooza was literally 40 feet away. And I know DJ mm. Diesel, Shaq was in the middle of performing. Of course. And yep. there's, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I, I mean, that's a lot. Flea. Are they in the middle of the afternoon when uh, family practice is happening? Or what oh, time? yeah. It was around See, like 7, It sounds like a lot of people were down in the city right next to practice, and they chose not to go. Can we pull up that tweet, please? Yep, here we go. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Bears Family Fest versus Packers Family Night. And obviously the Packers... Sorry that sometimes big cities get cool concerts. Well, the thing about it, though, would be like if the cool concert was happening Once. on a big city with a good team's NFL day with excitement and hope, I think the concert would potentially reschedule. 
You know, wouldn't schedule for a training camp day. Yeah. You know, if we're going to have our city's biggest concert, Lollapalooza, which is huge in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Huge. Huge in Chicago. Massive Nation in Chicago. Wide. Huge deal. I was in Chicago a few weeks ago. They were preparing for Lollapalooza, talking about how awesome it is. But Lollapalooza ain't scared of shit when it comes to Chicago Bears. No. Not one bit. No. Should be a little bit at some point. An NFL team should scare, you know, concerts and other people out of town. But in Chicago, they couldn't even get 15 people to sh say no to Lollapalooza and go over to the Bears' practice. I'd say in the Bears' defense, that looks like a shitty day in Chicago. Very cloudy, overcast, rainy. Windy yeah. off that lake. Exactly. So And look at the great. perfect night in Green Bay. Yeah, Green Bay looks like Lollapalooza. Yeah, it does. It looks awesome. Have yeah. you seen Lollapalooza footage at all? No, not this year. Oh, Shaq was in front of, I don't know, 400,000 people, it yeah. seemed like. Oh, was he like the DMX. It, obviously. Yeah, I think he made a... Free throw? <sighs> Not a free throw. It would have been from him to somebody in the crowd oh, okay. holding up the thing. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, and I think B dropped afterwards. Mm -hmm. DJ Diesel's really crushing it. Oh, yeah. He goes. So, Bears fans care about the Bears, we're saying, Z? Oh, yeah. Training camp has been absolutely packed. Just because they closed all the streets <laughs> going into the stadium, that is a big problem to get there. Okay, so Lollapalooza had downtown shut down. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Have you Have you ever been? In Chicago during Lollapalooza? I've not. No, you go. You just go straight to the suburbs. Okay, because you go around because they shut down downtown like it's a NASCAR race. You take a metro right out of there and you say, "I'll be back on Tuesday." What? You didn't want to go to Lollapalooza no. every time you're in Chicago? Why? It was just a bunch of ecstasy and like 15 year olds. So that would take away from training camp practice. Yeah. So you just kind of no, because you can't get there. You literally can't get there. Oh, okay, so you're thinking every... family night was poorly planned right. here by the Bears? Yes, 100. percent and that's why we're, we're leaving that stadium. Big Ten commissioner. Wow. <laughs> You're exactly right. Planning, planning everything yeah. wrong. Right? That's not good. But when we're, when we're at 1920 football drive, that thing is packed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we shouldn't judge the Bears fans by this. Not yet. Okay. No, the not But the Bears organization, bad. we should judge. I will tell you, though, fucking Fields was throwing dimes the whole time, though. <laughs> Nobody saw it. <laughs> I, saw, I saw it. No, I nobody saw it. Saw it. I saw it. I, I don't think anybody saw no. it. No, the big it was better than was Jordan Love known. fucking overthrowing everybody. Oh! oh! There's a lot of fans there. He's juiced up. Yeah, what are you going to do? Oh, he can't play in front of people? Well, he's just getting it out of the way. He's juiced Figure up. Figure it out. All right, let's get the hell out of here. We answered some phone calls. We talked about all the daily stuff. Did yeah. we miss yep. anything? Um, we kind of hit damn near everything. Yeah. We you, talked. You, you, said, you said Penguins got Carlson. Yeah. We won Stanley Cup. Yep, yep. We won the Stanley Cup. I didn't say they got Carlson, though. I was Rockers. kind of more, much more Rockers. vague. Do we do worse? Thank you. We won the Stanley Cup. You this mentioned worse, but. Who? Yeah. Worse, yep. Yeah, yeah. we kind of yeah. talked about it. Yeah. I don't really know yeah, if there's more that needs to be said. No. That's a generational thing, mental health. Mm -hmm. It feels good. like not everybody in every generation, but yeah, seems like takes about mental health. The ones that are kind of very loud are like, oh, yeah, we expect that from the generation that growing up they were told. Literally nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. real. Feels relatively new still. Yeah. How about that Justin yeah. Thomas chip? Heartbreaker. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Listen, he has sucked at golf this year. Mm -hmm. So, boy. like, we don't feel bad for him. But boy, <laughs> oh boy, to have to chip in on 18 of the last tournament to make the playoffs and extend your season and be in the top 70 of your profession. Justin Thomas is one of the most famous golfers out there. Oh, yeah. He's fighting to make top 70, and he hits this miraculous draw around a tree out of some shrubs to put himself in a position to go ahead and extend his season. Would have had to been a great shot. Yeah. Would have had to been a, yep. a fantastic chipping. If it didn't have the stakes on the line that it did for him to extend his season, still would have been a top 10 play if he would have chipped in on 18. Anything would have happened. Instead, hits the stick, bounce out, oh. no inches. Guys out of the playoffs. Mm. Season's over. See ya. Yeah. Heartbreaker. That's he said he, he didn't know exactly. Then he, when he learned, like, yeah, one shot, pretty much that you would have. Probably oh. won't make the Ryder Cup either now, right? No. Probably not. Can't can't put him on a team, That's they'll right. say. Shouldn't be. Yeah. That's golf, baby. Sorry. Sorry. He could, he could be, be a coach's pick, but he didn't want that, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, you're on a team. You're on a team. Yeah. I mean, I guess he'd take it. Yeah. I mean, what, uh, who, Zach Johnson's the. The captain this year. Yep. The glasses on that guy. The um, uh, <laughs> He couldn't make top 70 on that tour. And I told 
This guy, I'm going to make top 50 on the uh, Champions Road. <laughs> two different tours. JT, JT will be on the Champions Tour by then, too. He might be if they keep kicking him out of the playoffs. Yeah, Jeez, yeah, let the guy be. win a little so he can retire. No kidding. Guy's trying to build. I think he's going to bounce back stronger. Than that. I think next season, Justin Thomas is going to go on a tear. Yeah. yeah. I honestly yeah. believe that. Should I think he's going to go on an absolute tear. He will. He's playing really good golf. He was 13 under through this tournament. Mm -hmm. Remember, he wasn't making any putts. Nothing. Nope. There was nothing falling. He was hitting very amateur golf shots during big time tournaments. Yeah, missing cuts. Yeah. And I was like, damn, Justin Thomas is well, yeah, falling he'd, apart. He'd shoot like he'd shoot like a 69 the next day in 83. Yeah, so he's playing. That's golf. Yeah. And he had two well, rounds yeah. of 80. Yeah. All right, let's get the hell out of here. It's been a good show. Always great work today. Great work. Big thanks to Pete Thamel, Adam Thielen for joining us. Obviously, A.J. Hawk, all the boys. Great work in the back. Dirty. Dirty. Yes. Colts beat the Rams by 24. <laughs> Just want to let you know, probably 24. We might. I don't know what week it is. You guys said five? Four. Four? Four. 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 Anthony Richardson's already going to have the NFL figured out by then. Yep. So, probably. No worries He's at all. Plus 900 to win Rookie of the Year, I believe. Easy Ooh. money. Lock it in. Yep. Yeah, lock it in. Already did. All reports are I'd take that bet. All reports out of camp are like, when you see this guy live, he's so big, which 6'4", 255. Yeah. yeah. yeah Imagine when, they, when it's live. And he's never going to be live during practice. Imagine when he gets in the games and he's Yeesh. actually live. Like, oh, okay, this guy has a whole new element. Bro, he's got real wiggle, too. Yeah. Like, I think that's... Oh, I've watched him, I have watched him dunk. Before. The crazy 360 windmill dunks. I mean, that's yep. pretty impressive. Yeah. And this is the offense for him. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Better than the offense he had in college for him. For sure. Situation, it feels like, is the best. Maybe Bryce Young, but it feels like it is one of the best in the league. All right. We'll have more about that tomorrow. And also, uh, John Gruden is both at an NFL training camp and wants to burn the NFL down. So, that's an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Goodbye.